Yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the gym. Thank you so much for being here. I am joined by my good friend, J.W. Crewall. How you doing, J.W.? I'm good. I, I feel like we could get away from just using good friend. Surely there's... My pal. Other terminology that we could use to describe my another. buddy guy. Yeah, my bud. I hate bud. Actually, <laughs> it makes me feel. I I prefer good friend. All right. Okay. All right. Bud is like I get I get like really offended by it. You know, when you go to the store and they're like, "All right, bud, there you go." I'm like, "What am I? Twelve? I I live for like the the older ladies at the gas station who call you babe and hun. Well, that's like, really nice. That's yeah, that <laughs> makes you feel warm. Yeah. Fuzzy inside, but the bud just like does. rubs me a little. You know, because I'm not from the South. I never lived in the South. Yeah. But like when you get a little bit of that Southern hospitality up, up North, it feels good. Well, they had. <laughs> I feel like the hun and the babe and that all that is, I feel like it's very Southern. Is that like, am I just being a Yank? Is that not, is that not I mean, you're real? From Maryland, that's not really. No, Maryland's not the South. It's not the South. No, no, no. It fought for the North and the, you know, and the, it was divided. Yeah. <laughs> it was, it, it was, Maryland's not the South. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Maryland's, Maryland is not the South. Ah, it's not the South. South, South. would argue. South to you from Ohio, some, maybe. Some would argue. I mean, just on, you know, the types of laborers back in the day. Yeah, it was, it was, listen, it was a 50-50. It was like, you know, when they said the Civil War is like brothers fighting against brothers? Yeah. They're talking about Maryland, okay. all right? Okay. <laughs> they're, talk, they're talking about Maryland was divided, all right, but they fought for the North, all right? At least many did in Maryland. <laughs> yes. Maryland, Maryland's not the South. Okay. Well, that's, 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 I'm talking that's, about, the South, talking yeah, about the real South. The real right? South. The, real, the true the South. The real South. Right. Yes. Right. Uh-huh. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maryland. Maryland. Not Maryland's the South, not the true South. It's not the South, bro. It's kind of fake South. Yeah. Like a little South. Like kind of partially South. It's, 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 it's a little bit of both. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little bit of both. I guess it's not really claimed by the North either, huh? <laughs> <laughs> But yeah. yes. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, more <laughs> more south than Canada. I guess that's true. That is that is facts. That is yeah, true. That is facts. But anyways, my good friend J.W. Crewell, what would you prefer me? I mean, good. I, it's better than Bud. My good pal. Yeah, pal. My good buddy guy. Confidant. My. <laughs> My guy, my 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 guy, yeah, yeah, here's, my dude. I'm here with my dude, yes, yeah. uh, my homie, yeah, my my brother, uh huh, yes. So we're playing temporal forces. This is going to be our last big tabletop session before uh, the set. What the set probably comes out on TCG Live next Thursday. Many so are saying that's probably yeah. what uh, you know what we got going on. Uh, which it inevitably means that I'll just be grinding out games on TCG Live and all of these nice fancy productions will kind of go by the wayside until the next big set release. You know, maybe I'll sprinkle in some Gym Leader Challenge tabletop content between now and then. Maybe maybe I'll get Young William back on for mm. some retro tabletop content, stuff we can't do on TCG Live between now and the next set. But our standard... Uh, tabletop content. This is going to be the last major standard tabletop stream, and I couldn't think of a better co-host to have than my good friend JW. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, my good pal, buddy here. guy glad JW. Yeah, my exactly. good, my dude, Com comrade, <laughs> my, my comrade. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So uh, I'm going to the, uh, you know, I'm going to the. European International Championships, so got some testing going on for that. Jesse actually heard that you were coming into town and was like, well, let's all get together and do the a hive little... mind. I know. Yes. Um, and he seemed very uh, very excited about that. Uh, you're not going to EUIC. You've already got your invite. You don't really care. But... I, no, I, I I wish I was going. <laughs> I mean, you know, just given how the season has gone for me, I wish I was going. Oh, heck yeah, and, he'd probably uh, win the thing. Well, <laughs> well I, I was like, and could I go, you know, I was like, before before the season started i'm like okay here's all the tournaments like it would be really great to be able to go to the ic's because those are for the investment the best return yes and then i realized the the fatal flaw with euic is that it falls on my daughter's second birthday so 
that's a no-go. Ah, uh, yes. Harper's yes. second birthday. Harper's second yeah, birthday. you'd be a real deadbeat if you went to you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to say, you know, yeah, look, at, yeah, yeah, look yeah. at my dude yeah. with his priorities yeah, yeah. in exactly. order. Oh, That's good right. for you. That's, right. That's called being a dad. That That's is good, good for you. Yep. Good for you. Yep. So, yes, very, uh, well, I'm very excited for you. You made some good choices there. Great. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> she, she won't remember it. <laughs> That's a good point. That is true, but it's it's more like think about her mom and think about all the other people that are coming into town to celebrate with us. It's, yeah. it's more like you, you know, it's like for appearances, really, for her. No, it's right? not for appearances. <laughs> it's because it's for her, but it's really for everyone else, right? Because oh you're right, god. she won't remember it. Oh my god. <laughs> Well, I'm just saying, like, she's two. She's not going to remember She'll it. She'll remember it in there somewhere. No, yeah. she won't remember uh, it. Yeah, she I won't could take it. a picture with her, you know, on Wednesday when I get back, and, and I could say it's her birthday, and then she'd be like, I show it to her in 10 years, and she'd be like, oh, yeah, I remember you were there for my second birthday. Like, that looked so fun. Like, it doesn't, and she wouldn't know. Dude. Well, it sounds like you got your priorities in order to be <laughs> This is, this is great. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Well, this you did. Is, you did say you wanted wanted a little more casual of a tabletop stream today. Yes. Yes. So. Well, right. Because I think I've got all my, you know, all my productions for YouTube are kind of lined up at this point. I've got everything that I want to do. So the point of today's testing is really to get into the nitty gritty, feel, uh, feel out what are the, uh, you know, what are the best decks you know, for the post-rotation format, how do things stack up against each other? I've got a lot of the top, you know, players here. Gautic Fire just still built from the last stream, you know, might not be a top contender, sure. but still sure. still a cool, fun deck. Yep. But I've got a lot of the other top contenders uh, represented here. Jesse said he's going to have the Arceus deck built, and, uh, and he's going to have, like... Stall paradox lost box and he's going to have stall built so i don't have those built but i've got like everything else and really the the one thing that's like very much missing is the uh is is the snorlax stall deck i just mm -hmm. don't i don't have that constructed right now and and you know what as far as doing a tabletop production yeah you know the snorlax stall matchup it is kind of interesting but uh you know that's that's probably something that we're going to be figuring out later tonight right yeah yeah totally. you know, yeah on... we're gonna be we're gonna be grinding stall tonight for sure yeah we're gonna be grinding out some of that and i've <laughs> and i actually want to bring up something i that i've heard some talk about um what do you think about the the gengar from paldean fates you know is a as a tech for snorlax i've been thinking about it and as i was looking through all these different decks i was like it's a two card tech it's well, not a lot. We were playing like one switch in Chen Power, like one switch in the Charizard deck. Yeah, so you just swap. Your, yeah, yeah, yeah. You just swap it. Yeah. You just swap it. Yeah, uh, you just swap it out and then find one other card. Right. I think it makes a lot of sense in Charizard for sure. Uh, and then Chen Pao also has, you know, certainly some uses there too. That's what I'm looking at Charizard <clears throat> and I'm like, you already play the Rare Candies. This list that I have here already has like a switch in it. You could just take out the switch, yeah, and then you just need one more spot, and boom, you turn an auto yeah. loss into like an auto win. I know. I think Gengar is like a pretty good tech. And, um, and not to mention, uh, Gastly has free retreat. Does it? There's a Gastly with free retreat. Yeah. Oh, a forty hit yeah. point Gastly. Shoot, forty hit points, but sure. I I take the free retreat. I'd take the free retreat over the uh, 10 extra hit points and one retreat. Right. Yeah. So, like... Just not even a bad starter. Snorlax got the Devo TM, but you got more rare candies. How many rare candies do you need, right. like, you know, in a matchup? And I guess, like, like hypothetically, and just kind of, you know, breaking it down, and I think, like, kind of thinking through the... Uh, um, thinking through the, the matchups, right? You're like, all right, you know, Snorlax stall... They're trying to like uh, airy for two candies, Devo. Your, I mean, the, then I guess we gotta play the, gotta gotta play the haunter. <laughs> it's actually a three card tech. It's actually a three. Then I guess then I guess we gotta play the haunter, huh? Yeah, I guess we do. We've solved it. Yeah, we just just need the haunter in there. <laughs> 
<laughs> and then we're chilling. But uh, no, I don't think a stage two tech is bad. I actually think that I think Snorlax stall is like very serious. Yes, it is. It and is. I think that like having a little tech for it is not a bad idea. Uh, I really don't. I mean, like I, people are making fun of techs as if but like, look, you've already got techs. You know, people play techs. It happens all the time. You know, you've got a two card tech right here. And it's bad when you prize one sometimes. I mean, that's just part of it, right? Yep. Uh, but by and large, these cards are helping you out. Uh, you know, they're helping you out in situations. And, and I think that Snorlax stall, anybody who is like legitimately played against, uh, who has played against Snorlax stall in this post rotation format, I think will laugh less when we talk, <clears throat> when we start talking about. Bro, it's scary. Teching against it. Bro, right. It's uh-huh. scary. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so you will, you will laugh less once you play. <laughs> <laughs> Once you all get on TCG Live and you start getting absolutely bludgeoned by these Snorlax stall decks, then you will you yeah. will come groveling for your for your Gengar from <laughs> from Paldean Fates. So yes, yes, yes. You will come groveling. Uh huh. Yes, you will. You will. Uh, because I think it's that strong of a deck. That's quite good. Now, what are your kind of initial thoughts before we get going? What are you, is there anything you're interested in kind of like uh, figuring out more of today? Yeah, well, I, I'd like to play Giratina against a few decks. I, I feel from, from my testing so far, the triumvirate of decks right now is Stahl, Giratina, and Chen Pao. And those all kind of like, those to me feel like the best of their kind. Stahl is just a format warping deck. And I think, sure, not a ton of players are going to play it. You maybe look at, you know, 5% of players maybe playing it. But I think it's in that upper echelon of decks um, for this post-rotation format. So that's a format-defining deck that a lot of decks will need to have an answer to. I think Giratina maintains its position as being just uh, relatively 50-50 across the board, has some favorable matchups, has a good matchup into stall. And then I think about Chen Pao as being the deck that, uh, of the attacking decks, the two prize attacking decks can beat pretty much any other two prize attacking deck. So it's the premier two prize attacking deck. So those to me kind of make up that core of what I expect the post rotation format to be. Again, open to being wrong there, but I do see Stahl as being quite good. Certainly Giratina as being that good answer to Stahl while having good answers uh, to much of the rest of the format. And then Chen Pao for my testing has been insanely strong. So, uh, you know, I'd like to get some more reps in with, uh, with Giratina. You want to play Tina versus Chen Pao? We sure can. I, I see. I fun. think that this is going to be tough, though. I think Chen Pao is going to run Tina off the board. It should. I think it kind of should. Yeah. So then, well, I think you kind of get into the situation where you're like, "All right," um, or we could do. And you, you, you I think don't, Lugia is trash. You think Lugia is trash? I think Lugia is very bad. Yeah, I think Lugia is quite bad. I think Lugia is real. I think Lugia is quite quite bad. <laughs> Let's run Lugia versus okay. Tina. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, right. right. I think I do think Chen Pao should kind of should have its way with with Tina. Yeah. I think like the, uh, I think the Golden Go and Chen Pao. I think their their weakest matchups are the stall matchup, right? right. And and Charizard. I mean, really, just like all of those decks are just like. Uh, automatically losing to right. to stall right. and so that's why it's like okay well y- you know those decks otherwise i mean especially a deck like uh especially a deck like like chen pao i mean is very good against a lot of the field mm-hmm. but will auto lose to Storlax. totally right so like are you going to um you know are you going to consider that when building your chen pao deck and i've tried i was trying a little bit you know, just some more organic kind of soft techs against Stahl uh, in Chen Pao. I was trying one Switch and one Silene. Uh, Silene's kind of cool because you can put Prime Catcher or Switch back on and top of your deck. Draw into it, poke, right? Poke stop. Poke stop or Bibarel or, you know, whatever. Greninja. Yeah. Yep, Greninja into it. And it basically gives you, you know, just another resource. And uh, the Silene, I say, is like a soft tech against Stahl because. You can use it to get back a retrieval right. in any other matchup, right? So it's still like a more flexible card uh, than a card like Gengar from, sure. you know, yeah. you know, from 
uh, Paldean fates, totally. right? So that, uh, you know, Gengar is really only going to be useful for the stall matchup. But if you get paired against a Snorlax stall and you get your Gengar out... Then you're cooking, man. <laughs> well, there was another, there was another tech... <laughs> Uh, that players are playing in Japan of the Kyogre. I don't, I don't know if you've tried this. That does uh, the uh, snipe and it pulls three energy back to the hand. Jesse and I had actually tried that uh, the other day. It doesn't really work that well against stall. Like no. it, it helps, but it's not. You know, there's no counter to airy against. You know, airy or two superior energy retrievals, yes. right? Or airy or two rare candy before you get a Bax Caliber out. Like there's just no right. counter to airy, and that's that's the real problem card for me that takes stall from its current position in the current format of being good. You know, certainly being uh, being very strong, but then just taking it over the top with airy in the next format. Yeah, yeah, and airy it it feels so feels so violated, bro. It's degenerate, dude. <laughs> That's such a degenerate card, dude. I don't know what they were thinking. I, I have so... no idea what they were thinking when they printed that card. That card is like insane. If my opponent plays Airy and discards two key resources from my hand. I'm like, that's one of the strongest cards they've ever printed. I think. Who who allowed this? <laughs> yeah, whoa, 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 whoa. That's my hand. <laughs> like compared yeah. to Grabber, Grabber is like relatively well. You know, such like a weak effect, but those all this together is creating the, the other. The other gross thing about Aerie, you know, you mentioned the violation of the hand is like, yeah, you're going to reveal your hand. Your opponent's going to like pick through it and like touch all your cards and slap them right to the discard pile. And it's going to feel so. When I was playing so against bad. Zeely, it Zeely was playing. It actually felt gross. Yeah, <laughs> it felt gross. And he's he's a friend of mine and right. like a very close friend. But I felt I was getting angry at him. For putting his grubby fingers all over my deck and like, well, because even when they play Misfortune Sisters, I know, I know, you don't I reveal know. the top five. I know they look. They at do. I know. I they know. take the top five of your deck I and know. they're like, and they're looking like all private. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa what are you, what are you, what are you doing? You know, like, you know, and hey then they are big guy. And then he's like, I guess I'll discard these, <laughs> you know. And then and I'm like, whoa, you know, you mean I don't reveal? Like, no. He's like, I reveal the top five, right? That's true. Zilli's now That's played. True. He's played Snorlax Stall at a couple of regionals now, so like, yeah, yeah, it feels feels terrible. That's really gross. Yes, yes, yes. Quite nice. I know people already touch your cards during cuts and shuffles and looking through the discard. Yes, but it's different when they're discarding your cards. Yeah, yeah, when they're doing something, it's evil. dirtier. <laughs> <laughs> when they're doing something very evil to you. Yes, it's, yes. Di it's dirtier. Yes. Their fingers are naturally dirtier when they're discarding your cards. Yes. <laughs> if they're cutting my deck, that's fine. Yes, yes, yes. Intent yes. is crooked. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But yes, when they are discarding my cards, they're probably doing all sorts. They're fouling them up all sorts of ways. Yes. That's right. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm going to pick my nose before I hear <laughs> Imagine. And they probably Imagine, do. Imagine, And dude. they probably do. Do you yeah. call a judge? What do you say to the judge if that happens? Yes. Uh huh. Like, um, I'm sorry, my opponent picked his nose before. Half of you guys don't even wash your hands after you get out of the bathroom at tournaments, dude. Like, I don't want to hear like picking your nose should be the least of your concerns, brother. Man, it's so gross. It's, wash your hands. I think there could be a documentary made about the Pokemon bathrooms at a given regional. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> a documentary. <laughs> yeah, bro. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, this is this is player A. He peed all over the floor and then continued Seriously, to the sink. Dude? And didn't wash his hands <laughs> and then proceeded to the event hall. Oh. What do you have to say for yourself? <laughs> <laughs> that you're you're giving him a lot of grace for going to the sink. <laughs> Went to and the not sink, just immediately <laughs> walk. <laughs> yeah, like even giving giving the sink a look. <laughs> Let's take a look. It's like, ah, there's one person in line for the sink. <laughs> I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't even hit the sanitizer on the way out either. Someone says, as a Knox villain, that's just us. <laughs> I will not be visiting Tennessee ever again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I wonder if they ever consider where they put regionals based on the cleanliness of the people in the city. Yeah, because Knoxville has to be probably. How well, do you guys? There, yeah. Right. How do you guys? Any other? Any other Tennesseans in the chat want to defend yourself against the guy who's the one guy <laughs> the in <Knox> chat? <laughs> one guy in chat who <laughs> who said that that's just how we do it in Knoxville, baby. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
Soda uh, King says as a European, that's just how our entire <laughs> oh, how our entire uh, oh my gosh. No, that's just the US. He's saying as a European. Oh, as a European, that's, that's just the US. That's, that's the United just, States. Oh, that's just US. I was saying I thought you were saying as a European, that's just us. Oh, how all of Europe does it. Oh, I was gonna say. Okay. I cool. mean they got some weird stuff going on over there too, I'm sure. <laughs> No, oh, that's just the U.S. Oh no! I did. There was. I was. I, you know what really made me upset yesterday? I was at the park with my daughter. Okay. And uh, and I'm I'm very non-confrontational by nature. Oh really? <laughs> <laughs> I am. I am. Oh, uh huh. Okay. And uh, carry on. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm an Enneagram nine. And so I was watching uh, – one of Harper's favorite hobbies is to watch the dogs oh. at the park <laughs> and just, like, watch them go by. And there's this one park that's downtown in German Village in Columbus that there's just, you know, hundreds of dogs on any given day that are walking so around. She's everybody, a great time. Oh, she's loving it. Yeah. There's this one woman. She just lets her dog just, like, poop near the tree. Yep. And then just doesn't even clean it up. That's messed up. That was so – and I, w- I was, like, almost, like – Excuse me, ma'am. Yeah. I think your dog pooped by the tree. <laughs> but, but you I, didn't say I anything. I didn't say anything. I oh, probably you... should have. <laughs> there are children that play here, but I, I didn't say anything. <laughs> Straight to jail. Well, have you seen the... Uh... Oh, gosh. I was showing it off the other day on stream, but then I had to stop because there was some language. But uh, what, the shopping cart people? Oh, dude, those are so funny. Hilarious. Like, like <laughs> slapping the sticker on their... <laughs> On their car. Excuse me, sir. You forgot to put your shopping cart back. <laughs> yeah, the cart narks. I mean, yeah, that's, that's right. That's right. It's the entitlement of these people. Honestly, it's like I it know. would take them. It would take them less time to just go put it back like they're supposed to. Do. I know. It was I this know. morning. I was I was getting off the highway, and some guy in his pickup truck ran a red light so he could go to the McDonald's a little bit faster. <laughs> Literally, it was like he had stopped at the red light, kind of looked, saw nobody was there. Sped through the sped through the stoplight. It was the craziest thing. I almost said, uh, you know, behind him in the McDonald's drive-through. I was almost like, "Excuse me, sir, you <laughs> did you know that you went through a red light?" But I didn't because I again, I'm an Enneagram nine, so uh, yeah. just not in my yeah, nature. You know, you know, JW famously non-confrontational. That's right. All right, let's get into this. We have got Lugia versus. Giratina, I'll call tails. Good goodness! All right, I'm I'm taking that. I'm going okay. first. That was the world's worst roll. <laughs> I, I didn't want it to dent the table. No, that's fine. Here, heads or tails, JW. You're really gonna? Oh, yeah, hold uh-huh. on. I have to. I have to. Undo. No, you don't. This well, is casual. It's... I told you. Okay. Well, because you're not supposed to set up until you roll. Heads, please. It is tails. I'll go first. <clears throat> Ball don't lie. Yep. Yeah, I think I think Lugia is actually like quite good. Bro draws one good hand, so no, Lugia is no. insane. I was testing with Zeely the other night. No, no. I was I was testing with Zeely the other night and he was he was going buck wild with this. <clears throat> uh, I mean, I'm open to being wrong. I just I've tested with uh with Lugia probably twenty games with it and it just hasn't really ever panned out for me. Do you know how bad Lugia has felt for the last I mean, Lugia has felt bad since last rotation. Yeah, but it had a very successful so, little, <laughs> little. Okay, you know, so so you're saying Renaissance there. Lugia was bad last format. So no, no, some... no. It felt bad. It's different <laughs> from being bad. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. No. No. Lugia felt bad. Yes. Uh huh. All right, I won't take my mulligan since this is like a we're gonna call this like this is this is testing. Right. All right. So right. I'm not gonna take my mulligans. We're, we're gonna, gonna play log, it as it lies. We're gonna log our results in yeah. counterplay.gg. There we go. Best of luck, sir. Yes, you as well. Draw on my card. Let's take a look at this opening hand. We've got Mincino, Serena, we've got a Chinchino. That's and... the hand that you were excited about? No, I didn't this say I'm excited. It? I'm just saying oh. the deck's broken. I was being <laughs> You know, I'm just. I'm this just, was the hand. I'm just being truthful, bro. I'm okay. Just, I'm just right. saying exactly I'm, what it is. I'm yeah, ready. it's, it's I'm a broken ready. deck. All right. Yeah. I'm yeah. Ready. You're you're done, dude. Okay. Okay. I'm going double turbo to the Lugia V. 
bench my Mincino, and we'll pass it over to you. <laughs> hey, all right, I'll draw for turn. I do have a nest ball, so I, I am wondering <clears throat> if I would like to go get a Giratina. All right, Mr. Three Jets. <laughs> Bro, I mean, this is fine. Like, I can jet up a uh, Giratina and go for it, right? Mr. So, three Jets McGee over here. So I here. might do that. So I'll flower select and definitely don't need the mana fee. Where are we putting our Lost Zone cards these days? Yeah, Where there, are. and then we can keep a little die. Okay, and, die and then let's go Nest Ball. Search through the deck and find any basic Pokemon of my choosing. I will thumb a comfy to the front. Take that. Yeah, I mean, this is good, dude. I'm getting a couple of cards in the loss zone. If I could find a chorus, then I'd be I'd be happy. Play switch cart. Flower select. Mm-hmm. I'll take the Giratina V star to hand. Let's go Giratina V. I don't think I get punished, especially since you attached a double turbo. Like, again, I know your hand because I can see it on the stream, but I think I would make this play. So, we'll abyss seeking. I think especially with the double turbo. Yeah, especially yeah. with the double turbo. Yeah. Well, that's problematic. I have... <laughs> that's just, I, hate when I, I hate when I get good cards. Oh, since, especially since think, it's a 50-50 split, yeah. <laughs> I think it's the Cram and the Super Rod. So I'll take those to hand and put the Mirage Gate and the Nest Ball. Go to four. There, yeah. and your turn. All right, we top decked a Research, which is great. I'm just going to let this hand rip because uh, God knows I'm not trying to play Serena. So we'll evolve into Chinchino, and I think I'm just saying, like, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to draw the absolute stones off this. So I'll attach the gift energy to Chinchino, Ultra Ball away, Serena, and Mist energy. And off the Ultra Ball, I'll get Archeops so that I can research it away. And then we just want to research. Hopefully I can find one more Ultra Ball to get a second chops in the discard pile. But even if I don't, I don't know though. If I could just knock this thing out, then Oh, uh, you could Oh, I can't cuz it's only I can only accelerate 2, so I would do 21. Yeah. Dang. Well, no, you out. get two two arc caps. If I can get two arc caps, but I can't knock it out if I only get one. Is what I'm saying. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. That would be that would be good. Yes, that would be quite good. Okay. Play research. Let's see. 7. No shot. No shot, please. No Ultra Ball? No. Let's all go. Right, right, Let's right. go. Okay, okay, okay. The boy who lived. <laughs> <laughs> or I could decide to just go with one chops, swing into you with Snorlax. Well, you could put a Jet Energy on here and do 140. Um, I, I don't already, love that part. Oh, the you already attached the gift. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's true, that's true. Um, I don't like hate just evolving into... And just swinging. And just swinging here. I think that that's like kind of fine. Evolve into Lugia V-Star, all summoning star. My one Archeops into play. Bench Snorlax, especially since, like, I mean, yeah, I guess by capturing a run, I get Serena too. next turn, but I think, like... Well, you... It's interesting, because you could capture an aroma this turn, right? Let's at least... Because, like, cause like, here, like, draw three is fine. If you get a basic, you're good. You're at four you're in probably, the You probably just draw three here. Like, you try to, you flip, try to get a basic, another Lugia. I and then draw fine. three. Like, you discard your, I don't know, Iono, so you save your Serena. But you're at four. You could go to seven, bought my only guy, and then I'm... Well, that's what I'm saying. Check the capture. It. All right, we'll one, check it. We'll right? check it. We'll check it. But then if I flip a heads, you're saying I should read the wind, and that's... No, no, no. I'm, I'm, that's not what I'm saying. Oh, uh, okay. I'm saying you should read the wind if you flip tails. Okay. All right, we'll go capture. Her. I think, right? Because you just need tails. You just sure. need two Archeops. Well, I'm thinking, especially if you get, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because two hit KOing this one's fine, but then like I will want to one hit KO another Garatina V star down yeah. the line. Yeah, I think that's fine. All right, we'll get another. And then Lugia. you just need you just need cards. I'll be patient. 
flip that flip that over, dude. Thanks, JW. You taking care of me here. I appreciate that. Sure, I think that's fine. One See, top. like this seems like a better board to me. Yeah, right. Because you're two. Even if I take a knockout here, then I can come respond. up with this. That's fine. You have two Archaeops down. I think we kind of want to keep the. If you take that knockout, though, I'll get rid of this jet. Read the wind, discard the jet, and draw three. Draw for turn. Very interesting. Yes, I did draw a prime catcher, and I do have the Cramorant in hand, so I could like preemptively take that knockout on the Cinchino, and that would be the only way that you could one-shot a V-Star. So I'm looking at that as being pretty strong play. I'll Jet Energy the Comfy and use Flower Selecting. And I get an Artisan and a Basic Energy. Um, I would rather have the Energy, so I will put the Artisan. It's more so that I don't want to give you the Artisan. Let's go Comfy. And... Oh. We'll take... A Greninja and put a Nest Ball here. I do want a second Giratina V. That's that's certainly true. So six. Looking for that Colrus. I'll use concealed cards off the Radiant Greninja. Nothing, huh? Let's evolve the Giratina V star. I think taking a prize is pretty valuable. It is at the expense of a Prime Catcher, but this is kind of scary because this is the only thing that can one-shot a, a Tina, right? Definitely. So I'm, I'm basically guaranteeing that this Tina is going to survive one more turn, yeah. which should hopefully I'll be able to get to seven. I should be able to mount some pressure after that. So I will use my Prime Catcher and bring up the Cinchino and take a knockout. Okay. I've got seven cards in hand, so the Gift Energy doesn't proc. And that's a little bit of a tough loss, but I will be able to get my second Archaeops in the discard pile this turn, so that's good. Promote Snorlax and draw. Great ball off the top is nice. We'll play it and see what we find. I can take the Archaeops there, and then this is one of those funny situations where the Serena is going to be very helpful and getting that into the discard pile. Let's see. It's been a while since I've played Serena. Discard up to three, and then draw until I have five. So it's possible to play Serena just for a discard effect. That's what I was wondering. Like, I believe so. You can technically, if you've had, if you have like a nine or ten card hand, you could play Serena and just discard three and not draw. Bro, I don't know these rulings. You play this game like eight hours a day, dude. You should yeah, know. Yeah, but what this. was the last time I played Serena? Last format. Yeah, a year ago, <laughs> brother. A year ago. It's been a while. It's been a while. I needed a little refreshing. A little no, I think, refreshing. I, think, I think that's true, right? Yes, yeah. yes, yes. I need a little refresher. Okay. I'm going to evolve into Lugia, and then I do want to get myself a another... The discard is the cost. Mincino. The discard is the cost. Discard right. up to three cards from your hand. If you do, draw cards until you have five. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, you can. I just had to make sure. Yeah. And then I don't want to get rid of too many energy. I'm already down a few, so I want to be a little bit careful. Definitely going to take this knockout. I think that I'm okay, like, honestly, like, not even drawing off the Serena. Yeah, I think your is pretty good. I'll yep. discard the Archaeops and draw zero. That's my support of a turn. Sick. <laughs> then I'll play Master Ball. <laughs> and. Now that would be broken. Master Ball for Minchino. Sure. Wait, and hold on, hold on. What? Wait, 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 wait. You could have drawn one, right? Am I crazy? No, I had this in my hand. Yeah, so why wouldn't you Master, master ball, ball? Oh, you're so then, right. And then Serena for. Sure, sure, sure. All right, I'll Master Ball for the Minchino. All right, thanks, JW. You keep you're welcome, me honest you're welcome. today, bro. No, no, this is I'm this tripping. is what this is what this stream is for. Yes, yes, yes. I'm I'm massively <laughs> tripping right now, and I will Serena optimally for. Well, I should attach too. Wow, I'm really in here. Okay. <laughs> sure. 
I'll you can do here. so many things, dude. All right, and now I'm going to screen it for two. Holy, that's yeah, insane. Dude, now bro. we're in here. Okay, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> oh, that's so good. <laughs> well, yeah, I shouldn't bench that, though. That's all right, so here good. we go. Okay, finally. All right, I'm going <clears> to... <throat> I'm going to clean my act up, all right? I got to stop letting JW make a fool out of me, so. Free okay, coaching, cool. Here coaching. we go. Summoning star. We'll get our two chops into play. That would have been fun if you had played the, the other Minchino. I don't think I would have let you take that back. No, 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 no. <laughs> and now I'll use Primal Turbo. <laughs> Rightfully so. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah exactly. Exactly. Okay. Primal Turbo 1 here. I. And then I'll Primal Turbo again. And... Put V Guard and Mist. <laughs> We're on this loop. Yeah. Oh, V Guard is kind of nasty. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Because that means I can't 280 it for knockout. Yikes. Okay. That's not good. I'll McSnore. I'll take my price. All right, my first Colrus. And I need to decide if I'd like to play it because I do have. Uh oh. Stay woke, Snorlax. <clears throat> uh oh. How many cards in your hand? I've got six. Six, huh? Okay. So, uh, part of me is very interested in taking a knockout on the Mincino. Um, there's a couple ways I could do it. I could power up Radiant Greninja and do something like a, you know, 90-90, soften this up so that I don't need a, you know, to use my V-Star to take that knockout. That seems interesting. Because, again, the only thing that I'm concerned about is this Sinchino one-shotting my Giratinas. At this point, the board is, it, it's good. It's developed as, as much as it can be, but this is the X factor for you. So I need to figure that out. So I have Boss. I can get... Uh, do the comfy. I could take a knockout with Giratina, but that feels like the worst. I, I have a super rod, so I'd like to keep maybe a nest ball. I could go gust on the Minchino. Uh, so I think with that in mind, I'd prefer to play the boss as opposed to the Colrus. So I will comfy first. Normally I would say play the Colrus first, but in this instance, I think it makes a little bit more sense to go comfy first. So I'll flower select. And... Uh, I get a Tina and a gate. <laughs> that would be that would be two gate in the loss zone. So I'd have to really make good use of my remaining gates if I took the Tina, and so I think I will. So there's that. I will use Radiant Greninja to concealed cards. Another boss. Let's go there. This is kind of fun. I have a board that I could play. We're tied on prizes, huh? So I could go gust on the Lugia. No, I have to, I, like that's the problem is I have to go gust on the Minchino and knock it out with Tina. And that's like really stupid. <laughs> but it's like the play that I have. You could take out Archeops too. Uh, yeah, with a Tina, but then you can one-shot me. Well, I guess you no, could. Ah, oh, that's a good point. Yeah, that's a good point. I could do that as well. Oh, well, that's that's interesting. That's interesting. Okay, okay. I see that as a play. Um, let's attach our... That's uh, an emergency board. Yeah, I was going to say our, our escape board at home. Mm -hmm. And I think, yes, that play is kind of made for me. So... I will use a Mirage Gate now because I don't want to draw into energy. And I'll take a basic Psychic and a basic Grass off of the gate and then just take a look at what we have going on in the deck. I do still have the Sableye. Not very many ways to go grab it, but I do have it. So I'll take... The Psychic 
and the grass. Attach those to Tina. Let's retreat comb fee into another comb fee and use flower selecting. And the Buddy Poffin is a card that I can play. So I actually feel like comb fee can go to the discard pile. I'll play the Buddy Poffin. It's the Lost Zone. Uh, yeah, yeah, of course, of course, the Lost Zone. Uh, so I'll play the Buddy Poffin, get that out of the deck. And then, so I have eight. All right. So let's go Jet Energy onto my Giratina V-Star. Bring that active. I'll play Boss's Orders on your Archeops. Okay. And then I will take a knockout with uh, with Lost Impact. Cringe, bro. Okay, so you're up to 10. Got it. And I only have one chops in play. Gosh, I'm I'm so glad I didn't summoning star for one chop. <laughs> <laughs> that could have been disaster. Could have been bad. Yep. Yeah, that could have been really been, ugly. Could have been bad. I could do this funny play where I like retreat Lugia, the double turbo off it, boss oh up gosh. your Tina V. I'm like thinking about that. That is wasteful on energy. Um, and like from my perspective and maybe I'm wrong on this, it, yeah. it feels like this needs to, again, like get powered up. I'm right? working on it. Well, yeah, right. That's my saying. last one. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no, no. I understand. But yes. Right? But like, so, the... so instead of yeah. retreating and like maybe going for that, I, I don't no, know. We're maybe forcing, there's... we're forcing an odd prize again yeah. mm -hmm. and we're going to mm -hmm. keep making you march through these single prizes. I'm going to try and collapse this one away. Yeah. I think that's the better play for me. So yeah. that's what I'm going yeah. for. I'll draw. And the goal is going to be to bench this other single prizer, evolve up into a Chinchino, yep. and we're just going to force these single prizers. Down my throat. Yeah. Well, you know, kind of like that. Yeah. And then Iono, baby. There we go. Looking for one of those collapse stadiums. Uh, no luck there, but that's okay. Maybe I should have Primal Turbo first, but eh, that's fine. Here we go, Primal Turbo. Imagine playing Colrus. Yeah, you, I would love you to, couldn't imagine it. Love to have that right about now. Yep. Okay. What a Primal Turbo. Uh, primal Turbo, a Double Turbo, and a Gift onto the Chinchino. Sure. And Thumping Snore. 180. 160. 160. Yes, the Double Turbo. Right. Draw for turn. Did I attach for turn? I did not. Attach there. Go ahead. Aye. All right. Um... That doesn't do anything. I'll concealed cards. Draw two. Well. Oh, and evolve here. I'm trolling. <laughs> I, I'm a, my mind must be elsewhere today. Yeah, yeah. You can take your turn now. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. Uh, yeah. Yikes. That, I'm I'm just like I'm floundering a little bit. This is not uh, this is not going according to plan. I'm just not hitting, you know, what I need to hit. This is going to be a problem, for sure, because I can't V-star it. Um, I'll play the heavy ball just to get out of the, out of the hand. I definitely do not need that card. I'll bench Sableye to have maybe an option for next turn. Could do like a 90 90 thing. Oh man, I have to attach the active. This is not good, Andrew. This is not good. And I'll take the knockout. Okay. 
with uh, Lost Impact. You proc my gift. I draw four. That's great. Okay. That thing is almost done. This guy can't get one hit KO'd, so that's fine. We can send up the... Send up the Lugia V-Star and draw. Nice top deck there of Ultra Ball. That is exactly what I wanted. Ultra Ball, discard Lugia V and Luminion, I think. Yeah. And I'm going to get Snorlax. Hmm. I guess. Yeah, that's fine. And then I can retreat into Snorlax, take the knockout with Snorlax, never give you another two prizer, leave him <clears throat> on the bench. My energy left in the deck is thrice. All right. It's not much. <laughs> So I am getting to the point where I have to be very careful. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, I mean, there there might be opportunity to, like, stall something, too. But then I've got two in my hand. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll collapse. Sure. To get rid of this Lugia. And then if I take two here, you come up with a single prizer. I knock that out. I boss Tina for game. You got to collapse. I do have the collapsed. Yes. I don't know. I, I don't, don't know, know either. We'll see. Here's my strat. What if I just do enough damage with one prizers? What if I try to play your game? Huh? I don't know. <laughs> that might not work. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Yeah, maybe I'm like rethinking that. I now. think you might be trolling. Well, this seems really good. Right? I have the cram left. I'm trying to map out my last few prizes. Okay, let me just let me just rewind a little bit. Let me just think about it. Let me just think about it. Who discards first? You do, I think. No, I do. I probably do. Your opponent discards first, right? Each player, yeah, yeah, yeah. They discard. Player who played this card discards first. All right. Okay. I had never read that far <laughs> into the card. Okay. So I, I think I, I'm playing the collapse trying to get rid of my Lugia. Yes. Well, that was your that was your plan the whole time. That was the plan. Yep. So now I'm thinking like I have I have one gate left, and this seems more of a liability than a benefit. Because I can't even respond knockout this Lugia because you have the mist energy on it. Right. So I, this could be wrong, but I'm I'm gonna try it just for the for All the right. testing. And how many cards are in your hand? I have a total of four. Okay. And you did not play a supporter last turn. I sure didn't. I've played one supporter this game. Yeah, I know. Yeah, you really have been kind of dry on that front. Yep. Okay. And if you do that, there's no way you can respond to this Snorlax. Yeah, I can't. I can't knock out the Snorlax. In one that's hit. True. That's true. Okay. So I'll attach Therapeutic and use Primal Turbo. And then Retreat. Into Snorlax. Yep. And I think I'm content to just chill. I don't even want to Iona you. You didn't play a supporter. God knows there's got to be some Culruses in like here. And I've already got the boss in my hand in case you pen you bench something. So I kind of just want to hold on to this hand. So I'll, I'll, I mean, I really have everything I need. I mean, at this point, you know, you're playing off the board. So I'll thumping snore. Yikes. Promote the comfy draw. <clears throat> my last gate that is good but i need more i need more flower select i will take 
My two prizes. Dang, I'm really. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Super Odd is good. Super Odd is quite good. I need I need okay. like multiple people to hold my hand today while I play. <laughs> I think. Yeah, <laughs> it's one of those days. One of those days. <laughs> oh man. Thanks, Chad. I'm gonna need some real assistance. It's cool. We'll beat the three-time regional champ. Don't you worry about it. We're we're in this <laughs> together. <laughs> This is, this is not good, Andrew. Not good. Not good at all. All right. Let's retreat. <clears throat> Flower select. My life for a chorus. Thank goodness. All right. Chorus's experiment. All right. <clears throat> Couple obvious lost zone targets. I think the home, I mean, the Buddy Poffin for sure goes. And then the Roxanne seems like it could be a decent draw card. I actually, funny enough, I see a path to victory with the four seal stone. So my discards here, my lost zones are going to be Comfy and Buddy Poffin. Okay, um, so now I need to Sableye, and I need to put energy. So these, like, these are basically protected from Sableye, right? Uh huh. And <laughs> are they protected from Greninja? No, they are not. Okay, so okay, so they're, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're fine. We're fine. Um, so then. Okay, I attach return so I can go. I mean, it's it, the route is here. It's actually here, surprisingly enough. Let's go super odd. It just it's going to take a little finagling, okay? I love some finagling. Yep, it's going to be cram. I I need that. I need the basic water that and is the a basic psychic. But, yeah, psychic. Cool. Well, the oh, basic right, psychic and the basic all water. Right. Sick. And I'll take those and I'll play my last gate. <clears throat> to get a couple of cards out of the deck. So let's go Mirage Gate. And... Did I... Oh, you only play two water in this list? No, it's Oh, three. you play three. Oh, okay. Let me, um, let me make a different... Let me make a different play outside of uh, this water. Sorry. Sure. I'm going to put the grass back in. Cool. I, I had uh, two in the in the lost zone already. Yeah. So I was... Funny enough, there is there's four grass and only three psychic. It's because the iron yep. leaves. Iron leaves. Yep. Okay. So I'll attach one here and one here. Um Yeah, very, very curious. Very, very curious. Okay. So my strategy maybe is not that good anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to attach a turn. Uh -huh. I'll play a switch cart. Um, so it's going to be six here on the Mancino for sure. And then the rest on the Archeops. And then... And for your end phase? That's, yeah, that's, that's <laughs> it. Yep. Right. Yep. Draw. Yes, if we're learning anything, it's that you can play really terribly and that Lugia might carry, <laughs> which is perfect for a guy like me. That's so true. All right. <laughs> guy needs all the help he can get. So true. All right. I've only got three prizes left to JW's two, but... I'm trying to see if I can't make these final two prizes difficult for JW to take. Unfortunately, you know, if he could Greninja, that would make things a lot sketchier. But yep, yep, yeah, uh, I was yep. really hoping for that one for yep, sure. Yep, yep, yep. But uh, you know, with the Mincino having the mist, the mist energy is kind of nuts. Energy is insane for yep. sure. <clears throat> so these are really my final three guys. Uh, I think we're just trying to trying to go here. I'll.
I only have a couple energy left in the deck. I could put a gift energy onto the Archaeops just so that if it does get knocked out, like I kind of have that. Right. Um, extra draw, which which will be nice. So I think I'll attach the gift from hand. I've taken a couple energy off my prizes, so I'm not in as dire of a spot as I was previously. Right. Now that JW actually has played a supporter, I'm feeling more confident to use this Iono. So. <laughs> no! Yeah, no. I'm going to Iono. Yeah. Ah! All right. You're good. Yeah. Well, not too Capture shabby. Garuma. Hands. <laughs> Hands. <laughs> Take Lugia. Excuse, <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> Heads. I got two boss in the deck, and the thing is, I only have three energy left. So yes, I didn't primal turbo there, but that's because I'm like, I, I have three energy in the deck. I'm not trying to like. Maybe I do need to equip those somewhere though. Equip? What are we? Is this magic? Maybe I do need. I need to, to tap the. I need to tap the energy. Maybe I, need I to do tap my need mana. to. Maybe I do need to put those somewhere though. You take the mana from the graveyard. Well, I think if you bench a Tina V, this thing could knock it out with one more energy attachment because that would be it. Yes. So I don't really need to worry about that. I think I just want everybody to be one energy attachment away from like doing what it needs to do. So I think I'll Primal Turbo just for one to my Lugia V-Star. All right. That makes sense. <clears throat> I have a win condition. Trust. Okay. Trust. And then, uh, yeah, we're going to dumping snore for knockout. Oh, my gosh. Um. Flower select. Um. Oh, jeez. Okay. Super rod. I'm gonna super rod back. The Sableye and two psychics. And then for supporter, I will play my Roxanne. Roxanne, you don't have to turn on the red light. Thank you for that. Cut if you'd like. I'm good, man. <laughs> Oh, three, four, five. Oh, 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 yeah, we're in, we're in, we're in, we're in, we're in. Okay. Should have cut. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, okay, we're in, we're in. Concealed cards. We're in, guys. We're in. Oh, oh, we're in, dude. We're in, bro. I've got it. I've got it. All right. No, Nest don't. ball. Yeah, dude, I'm going to win, bro. I'm going to win. I trust, trust, trust. Nest ball. Trust, trust. Unless I, I don't know. Maybe you have, maybe you have something that you're gonna you're gonna pull out here that I don't know about. But let's go here. If only I had a mist to put on my Archaeops, <laughs> but I don't. So sad. I will retreat my comb fee. I will. I mean, I have, I have it. I have it. I'll do twelve. There, yeah. right? I, there's no, I can't put the damage anywhere else, right? Yeah. So, <clears throat> draw. Yeah. And then, unfortunately, I cannot disrupt the hands. Let's ultra ball, right? And then all he has to do is leaves for game. Oh, this is so sad. Ultra ball oh, you for. Think, you think I was thinking about leaves? Archaeops? No chance. I was thinking about leaves. And 
Thumping Snore for knockouts. I will draw for turn. I will play down Cramorant. For supporter, I will play Boss's Orders. Oh, let's go! And then... That was a pitiful game. <laughs> just, just disgusting. Just, I feel so. I feel so gross. <laughs> uh, judge, he spit on my cards. All right, I can do better than that. I'll go first game two. You got it. Yeah, I think that uh, yeah, Tina st still showed his chops, its ability to uh, to mount comebacks. That was great. I mean, the uh, you found the perfect route, being able to hand disrupt. Knock mm. out mm -hmm. the Archeops. Mm -hmm. right. uh, doesn't proc the gift energy there. Right. So no hand disruption on my part. No ability to... And, like, yeah, I used the Collapse to get rid of my threat, but then simultaneously got rid of your uh, liability as right. well. Right. And with, like, the 60 hit point Chinchinos on the bench, that did end up making it, uh, you know, a route possible for Sableye. So I think that I've got a better grasp on this matchup than I did going into game yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I got the got the rust out a little bit. So <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's true. All right, we're that's true. Yeah, we're running this one back for sure. You gotta do it. Easy game two. Easy you game two. Yep. I'm going first, getting yep. the turn two double chops. Blamo. Sure. Did you go first? In that game? Yeah. I did, but I didn't get chops out till turn three. That's right. Which was gross. Let's see. So you were playing. Oh, you're putting it into your app? Yeah, bro. He's putting it into his app. Here, do you want to do a hand cam? Sure. Show us. Show us, JW. All right. This is my uh, this is my application. Uh, if there's any hiring managers out there, this is written in React uh, and Java with a MySQL <laughs> database. Yep. Very cool. So uh, this is called Counterplay.gg. This is a data aggregation and simulation tool. And what you can do is import everybody's deck that they played. So, for instance, Andrew was player one. He played Lugia Archeops. I was player two. I played uh, Giratina V-Star. And I won, of course. So I'll put that in there. <laughs> and then I'll submit my matchup. And, uh, okay, it looks like maybe there's a back-end error. Oh, no, no, I just need to refresh. Anyway, so I'll submit my matchup. It'll go into the, uh, to the database, and then I can look at uh, various, um, uh, various uh, let's see, I need to refresh my, refresh my app, uh, various, uh, uh, you know, views that, uh, you know, I can simulate the tournament based on the percentages that I give it. Uh, let's go here i'm gonna log out because i want to log in with a new session okay so let's do this player one player two you are playing the lugia i was playing the giratina i won all right there we go all right so then Come in here, there's a simulator. So I wrote this simulator. Uh, this is kind of a fun aspect of the app. Uh, so you can put in the percentages. You can see that there should already be for my Lugia. Lugia Archeops has a 0% matchup into the 0% win rate right there into Giratina V-Star based on our testing of this one game and right that's, now. Yes, yes, and that's that's about to change. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. And then you can okay. simulate tournaments uh, in, in that little application. So that's counterplay.gg. And People uh, are asking if it. they can add their own decks into the app. Yeah, it's gonna. that's coming soon. That's something that I am writing right now. Uh, it's pretty much done, uh, at least adding decks. So now I need to be able to you know edit and delete, of course. But uh, that feature is coming, I'd say, by the end of the month. All right, I take back every positive thing I said about this deck, bro. Yeah, bro. I'm taking it back. Yeah, yeah man. It's this deck, it, you just drove, there's 17 energy in here. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, it's horrible. What'd I say? What'd I say? What'd I say? There's 17 energy in here, man. What'd I say, <laughs> brother? What'd I say? <laughs> Did you want first? Yeah, I'm going first. <laughs> yeah. All right, here we go. Good luck. All right, yep. You as well, dude. Draw. You as well. Okay, I'm going to... 
bench Mancino. Attach. Jet energy to Lugia and pass. <laughs> All right. Let's call horses experiment. Two, three. That's really nice. That is very nice. Now, I don't know what I have prized, but I do generally feel pretty good about loss zoning a Hisuian heavy ball early. And I really like to keep the super odd. I'll keep the jet energy and we'll get rid of a psychic since you said that there were four of those in this list. There are three. Oh, there are three. Okay. And there are four well, grass. I'll be, I'll be a little careful then with that. Um, let's see. So I'll flower select. Put a gate into the lost zone. We'll play a nest ball. Let's go nest ball for the comfy. Play that down. And I would like to get a cramorant knockout if I can, or a cramorant attack if I can, but that's not of primary importance to me uh, this, uh, this turn. So I get the comfy down. I will play, do I want to commit a jet energy to it? I suppose, I mean, what's the probability that you take a knockout? Let's go flower selecting. Easy choice. And I will bench a Giratina and pass turn. Draw. <clears throat> Capturing Roma. That was a tails. Dang, hate to see it. <clears throat> That's actually sick. See, everything has a way of working out because we're going to Luminion, Luminous Sign. For the brunette? For <clears throat> Professor's Research. Oh. There's no more brunettes. Oh, yes, there is no more brunettes. There is That's no right. more brunettes. That's right, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. That's just like a knee jerk. Yeah. No, we're so back, though. We're so back. Lugia's broken again. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Why not Serena? Because I need to hit the thing. Yeah, he's got. I need. Gotta, I gotta hit the guy, bro. I gotta hit the guy. I gotta hit the guy. I mean, you could draw three. Yeah. No. No. no I gotta. You, you I gotta, have to hit the guy, hit guys. Yeah, I have just... to hit the guy. The Lugia. He's not here. <laughs> yes. Yes. I'm Hello. gonna research. Yes. Yes. All right. Here we go. We're going for research. But you gotta Final attach. Answer. You gotta attach. And I'm gonna attach. So we're getting rid of two. Two yeah, energy. That's not fine. three. That's. Fine. It is fine. That's it fine. is fine. It's a good judgment call. Now, guys. Yeah. Now everybody's gonna gonna question every play I make because I started off rusty today. All right. <laughs> but yes, no, Serena's a valid play, but like I'm not going to draw three or whatever to try and hit the Lugia V-Star. Like I must mm -hmm. hit the Lugia V-Star. Mm -hmm. Getting this early attack will be very important. I'm going Jet, and we're going to discard the Therapeutic and the Double Turbo. Sure. Um, so that I can have the 220 threat on your Tina V-Star. Yep. And then let's just let her rip. It's a really good play. Here we go. Pain. Just <laughs> absolute, absolute pain. Goodness gracious. All right, we're not back. I I take everything back. Where's the guy, bro? Where's the guy? Oh, hey, you, my got, you got shock for next turn. You could retreat. I, and you know, you've got four in the law zone. It is definitely possible for you to ramp to seven. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Nikes. All right. Yeah. But it's, I mean, I, I don't know if you can afford to leave this active. I don't think I can. I think you just got to retreat. Um, but, like, what do you retreat into? The Mancino? That feels really sus. The, the Luminion is horrible, too. You just have no good option. But you have to retreat. I have to retreat. I think, yeah, we understand. Yeah. You forgot to declump, Andrew. That's, <laughs> I should have weaved. Yes, yes. Um. No, I think research there is the correct play, 100%. You're digging as far as you can for the... You just want to attack this turn. Yep. <clears throat> Start the trade. You know. But that's the that's the Lugia roulette, baby. That's just what it is. Because um, I could have just serenaded in three more energy, and then what am I doing? Right. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Yeah. I, I think... Yeah, research was correct. I think we're going here. For sure. Uh, go ahead. 
All right. Draw for turn. Ooh, not too shabby. Um, so I have a nest ball in hand. That's pretty good. I have the chorus in hand. That's pretty good. I will play the chorus first. Uh, well, I could get a boss. That's very unlikely. I think taking a knockout on the active is much more reasonable of a play. So what I will do, well, I could, I could nest ball for the Cramorant and just do 110 to the active and put a one prizer active and, you know, not worry too much about ramping up for the Giratina play because I don't have it. You know, I don't have the gate. But I guess what I, I maybe should do is chorus first, and then that way I can decide uh, a little bit better what I want to grab off the nest ball. So artisan, Roxanne, Roxanne, grass. Yeah, these are not great, but we'll take the Roxanne, the grass, and the cram. Okay. Flower selecting. Is that seven now? It is. Okay. Mm hmm So cram. I just want to make sure I'm seeing enough of my deck. Because this hand is not is not particularly strong for the next turn. So I almost like part of me wants to Giratina now. You do have two Archaeops in the discard pile. You have that Lugia on the bench. That just doesn't seem like the right play. So I will... Oh, but I can't do that. Okay. I'll play Jet Energy on this Comfy and Flower Select. Don't do it to me like this. That would help so much. That would help so much. Oh, dude, your <laughs> the psychic situation is that about to get so dire, much. bro. That would help so much. <laughs> You're already dead, one. <laughs> <laughs> Why would it have to be psychic and ninja, dude? Why? I mean, the Greninja would be so good. <laughs> Why? You get there with one psychic, right? <laughs> No, because huh? if I attack with it, I, I can't. You, can, you I can't. just literally I can't. can't. I don't you think literally I can. can't. I don't yeah. think I can't. Because uh -huh. Sableye is so important to the strategy. Yeah, you literally can't. Um, yeah. yeah, okay. Uh, that That's a feels bad, but uh, had to be done. Let's go Nest Ball. Could have Nest Balled it. I mean, but I want to get a second Tina. Beat, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that's just a little risk, got punished. Yeah. yeah. Minor risk. I mean, the odds of it being Ninja Psychic are pretty bad. I think this is just the. Uh... <clears throat> I'll retreat into the cram and hack to spit on you. Yeah. This is just the top 16 list from the Fukuoka uh, Champions League, which played three psychic. So, yeah, if I hit, it's... if I hit, you know, yeah. not the psychic and not the Radiant yeah. Greninja, two, you know, very valuable limited resources, I'm fine. Yeah, it's the so. it's just it's the top sixteen list. Yep. Yep. No worries. Drop. Um. All right. So we got Cramorant. and now I mean Jacques just guarantees it. That's it. So that's yep. probably just what we ought to do. Uh, Aluminium can get cleaned up, but I mean, I at this point I'm not in a spot to be taking risks with Iono. I think we just have to Jacques. Yep. That was Jacques for Lugia. And the Cinchino. And the Cinchino. Yes, sir. Evolve into Lugia. Evolve into Cinchino. And let's Summoning Star. Get those into play. Mm -hmm. I would really like a... Uh, I, would, I would really like, like a Snorlax this turn. Um, but I don't have that. So instead, it looks like we'll probably just have to go up with Lugia, which is fine. Uh, we'll have to sink some Primal Turbos into that. 
yeah, I, I think leading Lugia here is is good. Uh, my V guard is in my hand though. Um, <clears throat> so I could attach V guard. I could primal turbo. Do double turbo. Double turbo and, and mist. And then Primal Turbo one here in Retreat. It Pretty feels hard. better to jet the Lugia. I'm already down a significant amount of energy. And I'm down... Yeah. It feels better to jet, but uh, with the V-Guard and the jet both in my hand, and there's only one V-Guard in the deck, uh, it's something that I have to consider. It's Primal Turbo. Do you ever miss powerful energy? Yeah. Wouldn't that be fun? That'd be great. Let's see, if I force you to lost impact me. Dude, I'm cooked, bro. I'm just telling you right now. That's I got sick. No shot. Yeah. I got no shot this game. I think I'm down a significant amount of energies already, so I don't yeah. really want to. I'm cooked, dude. I thought I was going to win this game for sure. <laughs> I like, like there's potentially that like misplay early. I got rid of a psychic, right? Well, maybe I could have kept it. I could have prioritized that psychic, but I'm like, ah, oh, it's not going to matter. The Greninja actually opens up so many plays, but the fact that I got Greninja yep. and psychic makes this hand horrible. I already played Jacques this turn, guys, so I can't, I can't Iono, or I would. Right, yeah. Um, then we're going to Jet. Jet? Jet. <laughs> okay. We're going to Jet. And then I'll primal turbo again. Sure. And just put one gift onto Chinchino. Bop. Okay. Tempest dive. Knockout. Okay. So I have to try to lost impact. With this hand. Uh-oh. Draw. Uh-oh. 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 Uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> uh -oh. Look at all that energy, bro. Uh-oh. 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 <laughs> actually, this this works. This actually works. Okay. This is this is okay. We can we can get there. We can get there. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm serious. We're fine. We're fine. Right. Nest ball. We're fine. We're fine, dude. We're fine. Trust. Trust. I do just need to double count that I have nine energy in, or nine uh, nine cards in the loss. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, I do. Thank goodness that that counter is correct. And then I will retreat the Comfy into my benched Comfy, and I will use flower selecting. And I will take this card, and I will put this card in the Naughty Boy pile. And then I will attach for turn. I think. And then I will switch cart for turn. And then I will lost mine. <laughs> so bad. Uh, let's go lost mine. It's going to be six there. And then I have a, I mean, this is an interesting thought, right? It's like I could put three here to guarantee that I could uh, knock out through the V-Guard energy. Um, I could put three on both Archeops. I could, you know, put... I think this is the weakest place to put damage. So I, I think the Lugia is something I need to be able to knock out next turn. So preemptively, I'm going to put three there, and then I'll put three on an Archeops to force... Sure. Uh, you know, p a potential knockout in the future with Sableye. Yep. So All I'll right, take two. take two. Draw. Great oh, call. missed. Did they say missed? Missed. Yep. Oh, you're so right. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, you had me. Yep. All right. Yep, great yep, ball. Yep. Sorry, that just looked like another just random special. Yep. Thank you, guys. Take Inchino. Thinking, okay. I would like to get Snorlax going. 
funny enough, I can attach this there now. <laughs> sure. Yeah. yeah, that's fine. Why not? Right? Yeah, why not? Because right? you probably will retreat, honestly. Exactly. Attach V-Guard to Lugia, and now it's very difficult to knock out, which is cool. And then I think I'm okay with one Primal Turbo and Primal Turbo... A mist mm -hmm. and a double turbo here. I like don't want to. It, it feels weird investing too much into the Chinchino since it can just get knocked out, and then it's like, okay, well now I'm burned, right? Right. So I'm trying to figure out like what's the correct amounts to invest into it to like protect from you using Sableye to knock right. out an Archaeops and right. then it being out of range to ramp to... It's it's strange. It just gets, gets, gets hairy. Yeah. And then I'll Iono. That's wise. Okay, five and four. Oh, baby. Capturing Aroma. Heads. It's fine. I got Master Ball, dude. <laughs> Got Master Ball. Yeah, I bet you do. I'll play my Ace spec. Master Ball. Woo! And then we're going to go get the Snorlax that I want so much. Okay. And then I'll use my second Primal Turbo. Hi. I am down. Do you have? Do you, I mean, you have, you have three double turbos accounted for, so I don't know how many you play. Do uh, you play four? Uh, yeah, there's four. Oh, okay. We'll put a gift on the Snorlax. Hi. Tempest Dive. Dude, this is annoying. I'll draw for turn. What's the best play? I, I like have to two shot this. It's so stupid. I think I could try to Sableye again. That could be a play that I have. Um, to just like take an Archaeops. Um, because then, but that doesn't really advance the game state that much. Like I'm gonna have to go through this. But the fact that it has the V guard on it is really annoying. I could retreat into a Giratina and smack into this, but it, again, I'd have to like find a gust to bring that up, and then you'd hit me with that. So it does feel like I want to put another one prizer active, which is the Sableye, which is in the discard pile. I have a decent hand to be able to go grab it again. I'll Colrus. Uh, okay, yeah, that's, I mean, that's it. So I'll put these two to the Lost Zone. You're over ten. Puts me at twelve. And funny enough, I may V star for <laughs> a nest ball. <laughs> Let's go flower selecting. Um, attach the tool. Retreat. Flower selecting. that there um i use i use my super rod and then we're gonna alchemy star <laughs> I, this is fun now this is something i've seen some tina list playing the top 16 list from the fukuoka champions uh league uh, did play the four seal stone which is interesting tina i mean you don't Always, I guess, have the opportunity to lost impact or want to. I mean, in this situation, maybe it's better to forego lost impact just to have the opportunity to get whatever card you want out of the deck, right? So the other thing I'm thinking about, I mean, I could cram the active, but that just doesn't feel right. I could. Well, yeah, I already played my supporter. 
I'm like lost impact. I mean, I know, I you know, know what I mean. I know, I know. Yeah, yeah. Lot not lost impact. Uh, whatever. Tina V stars V star power. <clears throat> so I'll take this star requiem secret card. Yeah. I just yeah I don't know I don't know if this is any good. I think this game is lost. Not being able to take a two prizer down. Trying like really hard to go in with one prizers. This Lugia is just a problem. <clears throat> just a huge problem. Um, Sableye. Attach. If I had Greninja, that could be cool. But I don't. Uh, switch card. Because Tina can play. I'll do 12 there. Tina can play a one prize game. Like, it's possible. But, yep. uh, yeah. It's... It's not great when you can't trade two for two. Right. Let's go. Hmm. Considering using this boss's orders that I just top decked now to take out a V, but I would have to do that with Chinchino. However... It's still, like, kind of fine. But then I leave Sableye, and then you just... Then I'm out. Yeah, then, then I feel like that opens more win cons than anything. Well, not really, I guess. Not a ton. I mean, if you, get, if you get that powered up this turn, then what do you care? Yeah, right. Or if you have an en even an energy attachment, so that... But then I guess, like, the win con for you becomes, like, go with a Tina V-Star at the end of the game that I cannot knock out. Right, mm -hmm. which just feels kind of bad. So I think I'd rather just kind of stay the course, take out the sable light. You just rotted. You had to V star to get it back out. I mean, like, yep. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Just just stay the course. I think. I'm gonna go double turbo here and primal turbo. Sure. I'll primal turbo. Mm -hmm. <sighs> primal turbo one on the Chinchino. So you're doing how much right now? 260? 260, yeah. Cool. Tempest die for the knockout. Sure. Buddy Poffin for nothing, but I do want to try to find a uh, Roxanne. That would be the best card, I think, for me to draw at this point in the game. Let me just check. Okay, actually, that's interesting. I could... All right, I'm going to go back into the deck here. So Buddy Poffin fails. <clears throat> I'll play Mirage Gate. I'll attach a couple energy here. I will flower select. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There they are. Retreat. And 280. Oof. Ouchie. Not 280. Well, it's going to be two, 250. When I'm it's all doing it 280, up. and you are receiving 250. Sure. All right. 250 damage because of the V-Guard energy. Be nice to have a Temple of Sinnoh. Huh. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think you need it. <laughs> and I you think might. You need it. Right. And you might. I think you need it. Okay. At this point, I can clear the Tina, which is very good. Uh, chat was was on me for not attaching that missed energy to Archeops last turn, and I think yeah, that's probably fair. That's yep, pretty yeah, good. it's probably good. Yep. Yep. I'll Primal Turbo. Yep. And then Primal Turbo, one energy onto 
my Chinchino. And retreat my Lugia V-Star into my glorious Chinchino. With its five energy cards attached. And this still with the three energy here. And now this is insane. With the mist energies, nothing on my board can be damaged by Sableye. Yep. Because Snorlax has the unfazed fat. Yeah. I mean, just crazy, right? And special roll for 300 damage. What is it? One, two, three, four, five, 330. Draw for turn. I did. Wait. Yes, I did draw for turn. Flower select for turn. Why? <laughs> I mean, it, I like I I have to take a knockout, right? Yeah. So Cramorant here, that's that's horrible. That's really so bad. Um, I'll I'll jet flower select. Okay. Um. I'm gonna um I'll retreat. Why the crap oh, over rocks? Wait, in? did I hold on, I retreated off the comb feet. because uh, I need to knock this out. How do I do it? I, I don't already have retreated. Gate. I already retreated. Yeah. yeah. All um right. I already retreated. It's yeah. all good. Okay. I, I just needed to take the knockout with the cram. Yeah. Uh but I need more resources. Cause I my thought would be to do that and then I prime catcher your Lugia yeah. if you don't take a knockout on the Giratina. There's there was a route there, but I just like messed up with the retreat. Uh update your app. Yep, I will. <laughs> I will. <laughs> I will. Yeah, up to, update. Oh, I the app. jetted. I jetted. I didn't retreat. Oh, update I did the it. app. No, I'm please so update, bad. Please update. Update the app. I'm yeah. so bad. I should have asked chat. Please I had update. A route. Please I had update a route. the app. I had a route. Uh, yeah. I had a route. Just make sure that you update the app. Oh yeah. no, we put all that time into that game. Yeah, just yeah, yeah. Just make sure. Oh, just I make had sure a the route. app gets updated. I had a route. You're so right. Look Would you like to go first or second? <laughs> um, <laughs> I had boss in hand. Oh, did you? Unless you rock sand, I, well, I but had to win. You had to rock sand. What do you win with? Snorlax on anything. Oh, you had one prize. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh huh. Yeah. All right. Would you like to go first or second? Uh, first, please. That's gonna be so disrespectful at a regional playing against JW and telling him to update his app <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> I do say, okay, oh, anybody who man. plays against JW at an upcoming event, uh, make sure that if you beat him, tell him that I'm you're going to put gonna... the data in his app. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh huh. Oh, I got to make sure that I add this gotta make to sure. the, yep, yeah, yep. yeah. Make add sure this to my counterplay. Counterplay.gg. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yes. That's funny. You can also follow it on Twitter if you want to make some uh, suggestions. Sorry, X. At counterplay PKMN. So if you have any. Uh, suggestions you want to you know you need an archetype to submit at this point there is only kind of uh you know submissions by me the the grand overlord but at some point again next feature that's going to be rolling out is going to be individual user submissions and then i got to figure out sharing so that's kind of the order sharing uh profiles Ooh, so, cool have to figure that out Yes, and uh, for those of you that looked for the latest episode of Tag Team, maybe this morning, and didn't see it, uh, JW and I are actually going to record it in person directly after this stream. I mean, we could just do it on the stream. We could do it live. That could be. That could be fun. Could be fun. We'll consider it. <laughs> yes, but we're going to be recording here. <clears throat> maybe out of GLC mode? There already is. Yes. So. Yo, let's freaking go. There's already GLC. It's it's very baby GLC. It's yeah. very baby GLC, so it only has the types. That's fine. Um and obviously there's, you know, a thousand archetypes, you know, sub archetypes, but uh yeah. this was this will make it so that um, you know, I knew I had to code this because 
eventually, right, when you have like multi formats like we're in right now, yeah. you have like your current format, which you could still want to test yeah. for, and then you have the future format, which you also want to test Makes for. Makes sense. So um, GLC is little baby, baby with just the types right now. And eventually I'll, I'll, you know, get to, you know, when you could do your own submissions, then, you know, of course you can, you can flesh that out. But, uh, but yeah. Yeah, doing tag team live could be sick because we get instant feedback too. That's true. And we could just and and it, it opens more doors for discussion. That's true. That was a good point. With people posing questions and stuff. Uh, Best of luck, sir. Yes. Yeah, so, would you like to go first or second? I I did say first. Okay, good. I wasn't listening. <laughs> <sighs> Dude, you're about to lose this best of three. I might. I just might. That's right. The unlikely hero. One temple would change everything, bro. One temple, and and it would, which is like why we do the testing, right? I mean, yep. I do think that Tina would like to. No, but you play Jets. Yeah, but you you don't. I mean, obviously, you don't play the temple until you need it, right? And then but you have like a vacuum, and you have an artisan, maybe like you play the Jets, and you need you need to be able to counter. Controls temples. You don't want to play your own. Right? Okay, enhanced hammer then. Oh, shoot. Yeah, we're definitely losing this one. Let's go, baby. Uh -oh. Let's go, baby. Uh -oh. Tina is Tina-ing. I'll draw. Tina is Tina-ing. Uh-oh. Show it to me, JW. Show I it to have, me. I do have. I do. I mean, it's, it's, it's workable. It's workable. <laughs> Nobody lose hope yet. I need like a... Poffin off of the comfy here, I think would be really helpful. Or like a, uh, maybe not a Poffin. Yeah, this Manaphy is just going to suck. Hey, hey, Karumba. Okay. Attach treat. Flower selecting. <laughs> <laughs> that's how i feel playing tina when i played there were like entire streams i dedicated to tina <laughs> on live and it was like every choice was like a <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well jeez man you yeah, know i pass yep I pass. drop oh yeah baby oh i mean look at this it was bound to happen eventually okay it was bound we keep we keep barking up this tree eventually it was gonna <laughs> Bear fruit. Let's go. So, I think, and we got two routes we can go with this. We either just Luminion for Jacques, Ultra Ball away. That's the two. That's pretty, and you just could say, even, do you have an and energy? Call yeah. for, oh, and then call. oh, for sure. Well, that's like what dude. I'm thinking yeah, I'm doing. That's kind yeah, of insane, yeah, yeah, that's sure, nuts, yeah. right? Then we do have the Luminion in play if I do go for that. But you just collapse it away. I would, you could. If the Jacques is prized, this feels terrible. Well, can't you? Oh, yeah, I was going to say, can't you? Look? Just feels bad, right? Well, you no, could no. call for family first and then see if you have the Jacques, and then next turn you could. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think you're just. Yeah, I, no I, parachute, there's baby. No, there's no chance. There's no, no parachute. Chance. We're flying. There it is. It's yeah. right there. Well, we haven't right? seen it yet. It's right there. There it is. No, it's. it's right there. It Hold is. on. Right there. Hold on. We're going to find him. There He's in here. It's right there. There it is. <laughs> That's the top part. It was literally, <laughs> literally, li and I was looking through the whole deck. It was literally the last card. Literally the last card. I was okay. hoping for the, cl the clickbaitable moment. No, I'm going to save the great ball in my hand to try and uh, dig for, well, I guess maybe I could ultra ball for Lugia V-Star this turn. Yeah, I could have great balled first, but yeah, here we are. Well, now you're shock. thinning your deck, and now you, you're more likely to see a Pokemon. Thinning my deck of what? Of Pokemon? one Jock. So yeah. you can great ball. Jock. Oh. I thought you were going to great ball. Jock. 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 Oh, should I? I don't know. It, the, liter weren't you literally just talking about that? I should. Yeah, yeah. You're so <laughs> right. This is actually the correct. This is actually the correct order of op op operations. Yes. God, great ball sequencing, bro. Yep. Yeah, there's a lot to think about with Lugia. <laughs> It's so true. <laughs> and you don't have to do any of it right, and you're still going to get similar results. All right, great ball. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
take that. Let me take the V star and then V star. Yeah. You could get yeah. And yeah, then we jock. Yeah, this is tough. And then we go get <laughs> this is tough. The Archaeops. Ultra Ball, discard two Archaeops. And here I've already got a Lugia. I mean you can again call for family potential. I can. Yeah. Or you could jet you could you could get two can't you get two Lugia down? Yeah. Yeah, so you could ultra I'm ball, ultra ball and, and then you could jet Lugia. and then you could discard a card and draw and three. read. Yeah. I mean if you want. Yeah, maybe you don't even want two Lugia down. I don't even know that I want two Lugia yeah. down because I already want yeah. to collapse this thing away. Yeah, so I think you just you get another I'm chilling. I think I need a Storlax or something. Yeah, yeah. Or you could get another Cinchino. I think an Ultra Ball. Cinchino might be better. Because you got to evolve it, right? Yeah, yeah. So if this does get knocked out and you draw into a Cinchino. I like that. Yeah. Evolve that. Snorlax can always come out. Yeah. Then Ultra Ball for the Minchino. Bench the Lugia. You know, yeah, this you could way. Yeah, Gift, maybe. This you, way we kind of have all this. And then you don't actually call for anything. No, but you yeah. you could if yeah. you, like, because my best play would be Cram into the active. So, yeah, play the play the Gift. You draw. Well, I don't want to draw all these energy, bro. Draw four? What do you mean? Draw four energy? Well, attach the gift there. I that's guess. What I'm yeah, that's fine. All right. We'll attach gift there. And it's just going to be a pass. The Ravens just got Derrick Henry. Ooh. Very cool. He's washed, dude. He's washed. Baltimore has no shot. At what? At winning the Super Bowl. That's just simply they not have no true. Heart. They have no heart? Yeah. They have got lots of hearts. They have no heart. You know nothing about Baltimore, JW. <laughs> Keep the Raven's name out your mouth. <laughs> yeah, look at Ray. Know. Ray Lewis was Hart, bro. How many? How Roquan many? Smith is Hart. You know nothing about the Ravens. <laughs> I think I know everything I need to know. Of course. Yeah, now my mind is just... My mind's just wrong, you know? I'm just backwards now. I'm just... I'm in a, in a I'm in a bad way, Andrew. I'm in a bad way. I'll take these three. Lawson. The gate and the boss. I just don't even know what to do with myself anymore. Two. Um Nest Ball. I like need the need the Cram. Oh shoot! Hold on, hold on. No, no, no. Sorry, let me take that back. Because I could, I didn't, I didn't flower select yet, so I could nest ball for the uh, the cram potentially. Okay, let's go flower select. Play that down. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I can't wait to tell you to put it in the app. Oh, man. Nest ball. I could, I could, I could go for another. I don't even know what helps. I don't even know what helps. I could go Tina and then I could go Tina. That's a possibility. But don't really have anything beyond that. Um, I could go cram and just try to play the one prize game. That doesn't seem good, but I, th I think that's the only play that I have. So, yikes. Yikes, my guy. I don't know. This game's lost. This game's lost. Um, Jet? Okay. Okay. Yes. And off of Gift Energy, I will draw four cards. Ooh, those are nice four cards. I like to see that. It's fantastic. Oh my goodness, just so many blessings in this hand. 
Paltrow. Oh my goodness. Doesn't get any better than this, folks. <sighs> All summoning star. Get my two Archeops into play. Bench my Snorlax. Jet it into the active spots. Primal Turbo. We're going to attach Therapeutic and Gift to it. <clears throat> Man, this is wonderful. And then I'm going <clears> to... <throat> capturing Aroma. It's a Tails. Get a Lugia V. Ultra Ball, discard Lugia V and Lugia V Star. For Chinchino. Primal Turbo number two. The twinkle in Andrew's eyes as oh, he plays yeah. all his cards down. Oh, yeah. And we're going to get Mist Energy. Bro there. thinks I'm going to get to 10. <laughs> <laughs> Next turn. <laughs> I could, I could do it. I, I got, I got, I got, I got a, I got a play. I think there's, there's options. <clears throat> and I'll research. There are no options. Dumping store. It's no shame in scooping, JW. <laughs> Iono. There we go. <laughs> okay. It's pretty good, Iono. Flower select. Um, I don't, I don't know. I'll take, uh, I don't, I don't know. I really don't know. Um, let's go here. Let's go here. All concealed. Draw two. Um, I'll treat, and I will pass. Draw. I will boss Tina V. Draw. I will boss. And I will attach. I will, jet. I will, I will put my Zinchino in the active. I will jet my Lugia V-Star into the active spot. Oh, he's so mad. Can't you tell? Yes. And then I'm going to Primal Turbo. And I'm going to get V-Guard and Mist Energy, and then I'll Primal Turbo again, and I'll get Gift Energy. Oh, yeah. He's so mad. Yeah, time to update the app for sure. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. And, uh, yeah, yeah. I'll, uh, I'll Tempest Dive. It's oh, you updated it? All right, you're conceding? Yep. All right, fold it up. Let's yeah. go. Oh, man, I wish I didn't scoop the middle game. Let's go, baby. That was definitely a go, blowout. Let's go. Yes. <laughs> that was a blowout for sure. Yeah, I, I'm telling you, that when this deck, tough. if you just, some decks, you take it to a regional championship, and you're like, well, if I just get the matchups I need. Mm -hmm. It could be a good day. Lugia is like that, but it has nothing to do with the matchups. <laughs> yeah. If, if I just get the hands I need. If I just spin get. Spin the wheel enough. If I just get those, them good hands all day. That I'm going to be a regional champion. Yeah. And you know what? There's a certain amount of peace that comes with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it is... Uh, Every game you, you sit down... You seen? Have you ever seen Dune? You've seen Dune too. No, I haven't. Have you seen the second one? No, I haven't seen the first one. Oh, okay. Well, Lugia feels a lot like, yeah, like fulfill your destiny. You know, I see, I see many paths where I, you know... I, I started a jihad that kills 61 billion people. Uh, 
you know, well, that's that's actually what ends up happening. But um, dang, spoilers! I don't know. Well, it does, it, you, you, it's not actually a plot point in the movie. But uh, you know, the golden path, walk the golden path. That was the golden path right there. Every other path is like a lot of destruction and humanity's failure, <laughs> and then the golden path is the double arc yops, turn one, ultra ball, Lugia down, uh, you know, yes. Machino down, boss on my only Tina. Got it. So if I just walk the golden path with Lugia, I'm gonna be great. I know you'll fulfill your destiny. Then I'll fulfill my destiny. That feels so good. All right, what matchup are you interested in next? I think we got that one under wraps. I just I don't think Lugia is real. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't think it's real. You can keep man. saying that. That's fine. Um, I mean, I'm I'm always down to play some uh, some Chen. We got Chen Pao. We got now. You think I think Turbo... Chen Pao is the best two prize attacking deck. And Turbo Hands is like is fraudulent. Right? I I believe so. Yeah, like the Turbo Hands deck. Jesse told me I had to have this built for testing tonight. Why? I don't think it's that good. Um, I've tested the matchup. Chen Pao into that has has been pretty good. Um, Turbo Hands like really does capitalize on decks like Lugia. Um, you know, maybe set up decks like Charizard. So I think it does have a place, but overall, it's it's just it's very exploitable deck. Yeah. I think for for our testing day, I was trying out Silene in Chen Pao. I don't think that's necessarily like a, a normal thing. Um but I think one boss's orders in, in Chen Pao is probably fine. So we can uh we can put the boss's orders in the Chen Pao deck so it's kind of a normal ish card. Mm -hmm. uh, I think with the Chen Pao deck you really do want to have uh ghost options, especially with the mm -hmm. uh the iron hands in the deck, mm -hmm. being able to you know, counter catcher, or prime catcher, or boss, or whatever with the hands is definitely a game winning play with that deck. What do you think? You think boss belongs in Chen Pao? What do you eh, think? It's okay. I haven't been playing it. I've been playing uh, counter catcher, but uh, I think you, yeah, you could play boss. The, the tough thing is it's really hard to justify playing cards that you can discard off of the Pokestop. Poke stop. I agree. You want to just be Pokestopping pretty much every turn that you can because really the card that you want most of all is going to be your. Superior energy retrievals. So mm -hmm. you need to get to those. You need to be poke stopping. You can discard a lot of resources along the way. If you discard a boss, um, you know, that could potentially be problematic. All right. Let's try future box against Chen Pao. How sure. about that? Sure. All right. Sure. We'll do turbo hands. I'm gonna give turbo hands one more try. Okay. I'm give it one more try. But um before we give it a try. I'm going to take a quick break. After this break, we'll be back with Turbo Hands versus Chen Pao EX Bax Caliber. Thank you all so much for being here. Make sure to check out FullGripGames.com. Pre-orders for Temporal Forces, sealed product, and singles are available now. We'll be right back after this.
All right. Thank you so much for the patience. We are back. I'm ready for some gaming. I've got Turbo Iron Hands. And last time I've played this deck, and the couple times I have played this deck, I have not been impressed with it. So I'm willing to give it one more try. Yep. And uh, really, it, it just seems so kind of like you're projecting exactly what you're trying to do. If your opponent messes with it even a little bit, you know, the entire strategy goes off the rails. But, you know, maybe there's I just mean, something I'm not I, seeing. I mean, it's it's first to go 2-2-2. Two, 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 yeah. Right? And I think you, you can do that. I just think it's a little easier for the POW player to to do 2-2-2. Two, two, two. Right. So. Yes, probably so. Probably so. We've got uh, two of the heavy batons in here, and uh, this particular list is running two psychic energy so that you can attack with Maridon. I yeah. mean, you could just you could do a lot of damage with the with the Maridon, and I think that that feels correct. Some Turbo Hands lists that I've seen are playing one of Iron Boulder just so that I think it's for the Arceus matchup, but I don't really know. Something like that. Um, this isn't playing the Iron Boulder, though. Uh, I think that that seems like a Iron meta Boulder specific. Iron Boulder doesn't seem great, does it? I, there's a, quite a few lists that are playing it. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I guess you could because yeah. you get the boosted damage, right? So yes, right. So you could be doing what 280 if you have all four out, and then you get the clap back of the 80 damage if they hit into you. So. Something like that. Yes. Yeah, okay. so I guess. I don't know, right. Maybe you put That's everything out. Right? You can one hit KO Arceus. Yeah. 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 Hmm. So right, because if you have if you have four boosts. Yeah, I mean, you can one hit KO and Arceus, and that you really only need three out in a booster capsule. Now or that, right? Three in a, right. In a capsule. So yeah. you need four out of your five buffs. Yep. And you can one hit KO Arceus and get the clap back. What they take? How much damage is it? It's in eighty. Return? It's eight damage counters if they eight, swing into you. I think. Right, and then I if think, you have, and then if you have four buffs for a hands, dude, you take a three. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. So we'll uh we shall see. We shall see. All right. Would you like heads or tails? Tails. Sire? Partner. I'll begin. Ricky asks, what kind of hat am I wearing? This is from the World Championships in London in 2022. Yes, where JW finished in the top 64. <laughs> I know. It's like it's like my best world's finish, man. Except until this year. This year? It's your year, man. Yeah, dude. One of our group is coming home with a medal. Um, or a trophy, I should say. Yeah. That'd that's, be sick. That's, be that's sick. for sure happening. It's been tough. I mean... Out of our group, the only finishes we have right now are I got two, I got a top 16 and a top 32. Riley's got a top, top 32, 32, and that's I it. No, and that's it. Yeah. That is it. But those have not been very equitable tournaments. Huh? This will be the most equitable world championships with no no day two auto. Oh, yes, yes, yes. yes. Right. Sure. All right. Draw for turn. Yes. Ooh. Don't mind if I do. Shiver chill. Oh, Shiver chill. Nice. I will search through my deck. I'm going to thumb a couple of cards to the front because I know I'm going to take those there after this uh, the Shivery Chill resolves. But I will take a couple of water and then I will go back into the deck with a Buddy Poffin. Since there is no escape rope in the format, you would need a boss to knock out the fridge backs. And I have a I have a Bibberol in hand, so it, it does make me feel pretty safe to go for the Bidoof and the Fridge backs. So I'll take those. Shuffle up. Attach return.
and pass to you, my guy. Alrighty then. I've got an Arvin nest ball. And this is my beef with this deck. It just feels like you don't quite have enough. There's not like enough draw power. There's no squawk ability. It's but I, I guess. Alright, we're gonna just we're gonna play it as it lies and see what happens. I guess I can I can bundle up one of those guys on the bench and knock it out guaranteed. And that's you know? That's not nothing. <clears throat> Start with Nest Ball. And we want to get Maridon. We're going to Arvin. We're probably going to Arvin for, I guess, a future booster energy capsule is like the tool. We could get a Heavy Baton. And a Techno Radar is the item. That's probably just what it has to be. And then we can Iron Bundle up one of those guys. It's going to be the Bidoof, which is pretty cool. And take a knockout, so... Uh, I think it is literally only future Pokemon in this deck. Neato. So let's nest ball for Miraidon. I got to get this iron bundle onto the bench, which is fine. I've got a future booster energy capsule in hand. And then let's Arvin. With Arvin, I'll get future booster and techno radar. Okay. <clears throat> then Techno Radar and discard the Lightning Energy. To get Iron Hands. Hmm. And Iron Crown. Sure. Retreats. Psychic Energy to Maridon. Bundle me. Hyper Blower. <laughs> I hardly know her. <laughs> <laughs> and then... Oh, sheesh. Peak Acceleration. I'm going to go two on to Iron Hands, take a prize. I, uh, I did not check to see if my, if my Counter Catcher was in deck versus my Prime Catcher. So we're going to take a leap of faith here. I'll promote the Fridgy. That's pretty nice. Let's go with an Irida. And I will grab the Max Caliber. And okay, I do have the Prime Catcher, so <clears throat> I did also have the Counter Catcher. Maybe it maybe it is just better to yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna take these two. I'll have to manually attach to the Fridgy. Um, I'm gonna go back into the deck here in just a second. Um, let's go attach for uh, for from hand. This is a slight and then I'll Shivery Chill. This is a slight uh, misplay, just not knowing what I had access to in my deck. But going with the Frigibax active meant that either Prime Catcher or Counter Catcher being in the deck could get me the knockout. Because what I want to do is take out the Iron Hands right now. I'm going to shuffle. I'm going to go back in here. Let's Rare Candy into the Max Caliber. Um, you play... You had the same result regardless because you could have... No, uh, no, but I wasted an energy, basically. Uh, but you could have... If you promoted him, you could have Prime Catchered and then retreated the... This guy, right? If you just promote him. Well, but I... Uh, the Counter Catcher is limited to only being behind on prizes, which I don't expect to uh, be behind heading heading forward. Got I'll, it. I'll super cold. So I just wasted one energy, but hopefully okay. it doesn't matter. Um... And then you have uh, you have um, generators in here, right? Yeah. Yep. So I will nest ball. I have to decide what I want to grab. Um, I could I could get another Frigibax and basically set myself up for the next turn. I still have the Vibral in hand, so I could like it's it's a little bit of a greedy play to maybe go for the Bidoof, but it's probably better overall. 
Um, now, how many cards in your hand? I've got four. Four? Yeah, okay. I think, I think it is Bidoof. Because you would have to go, you have to get an Iron Hands, power it up, have a way to retreat, and have a way to gust. So, with that... Gotta say, I like the bundle. The bundle's cool. Bundle is cool. Yeah. Play Countercatcher on the Iron Hands. This stinks. And then I'll discard four for the KO. Sure. All right. Take your two prizes and draw. I'm going to use one of my three counter catchers on your back's caliber. Oh, no shot, dude. Actually, and then I'm going to back. I'm going to counter catch you. <laughs> oh, no. You. I'm just kidding. I'm actually bringing up the back. Yeah, yeah I'm going to bring up the back's caliber. All right. And then. Oh, no. Future booster, energy capsule, and research. Oh, I'm cooked. What if I get cooked here? If I find my ace spec, <laughs> you pretty much are. Oh, no. Two, three, <laughs> four, five, oh, six, no. seven. Oh, there's certainly a shot. Uh-oh. Yeah, dude, you're getting punished. Uh-oh. Yep. No. This is a one-way no. ticket to Punish Island. No. Yes. No. All right, I'm going to use my Techno Radar, and I'm going to get... Let's see, is my yeah, my Apex prize? That's fine. It doesn't matter. All I need to do is hit two energies off of two generators, and I'm in. No chance he does it. I could definitely do it. No chance he does it. Okay. I'm going to radar for two hands. <clears throat> Four cards, bro. Come on. Come out. The one time I've I've ever wanted generators to miss. Come on. Generator. There's one. Oh. <laughs> Come on, baby. Come on, all right, there's our first one, there's our first one. I'm in danger. <clears throat> That's so cringe. That's horrible. No. Oh. No! <laughs> this feels so bad. Update the app. <laughs> Dang it. Powheads. Fraudulent deck. Powheads unite. Yeah. And it looks like I'm going to have to do peak acceleration. Jeez. Let's see for what I'm doing. 40, 60, 80. Um, yeah, peak acceleration for 80 damage. There's so many energy in here. He's so goaded. This deck. <laughs> this deck, bro. This deck. Uh, yes, indeed. This deck, indeed. <laughs> no shot, dude. No shot you're going to attach to the active, bro. Just Holy. go over here. I'll draw. <laughs> yeah, you're cooked for sure. Let's do Irida. And I I don't know. I, I could be greedy again and just grab because I know I'll need a Chen Pao. It's it's probably just best to get the Frigibacks. There's way more ways to get Frigibacks than Chen Pao, but I still have Ultra Balls. I still have plenty of Nest Balls. So I will do that, and I'll take the Prime Catcher. You got the energy to knock out my Iron Hands right now? Yeah. Right now in hand, you got show me the superior, bro. Why would I do that when I could sequence? Just show it to me so I can scoop. Oh, okay. I thought you were going to cut this up into a... No, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen enough. 
Uh, we're testing today. We're uh, testing today. Okay, yes, this right. is casual. Sorry, I just got to <coughs> gotta take out the phone real quick. Yeah, update the app. All right, yep, go ahead. Yep, go ahead. Gotta, gotta yeah. update the app real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. All right. I'll go first. I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going first. Okay. This duck, dude. I don't know how people do it. I don't know how people do it either. I went first, I guess, right? Like Turbo Hand, Turbo Maridon with like Peony mm -hmm. felt better at getting Iron Hands going than this. It feels yeah, so it bad to like Maridon and then get your guy knocked out. It's like, I was working on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's, that's where I kind of say like with this matchup, it's a little easier for me to take those two prize knockouts yeah. slightly, and then I can do it a little bit quicker, ironically, because you are forced to, you know, attack with the Maridon. I think I have to, to assume. To so, like, there I did Arvin. I Arvin for a future booster I didn't need on turn one. Um, you think you go for a generator? I know. I think I go for the, the – I have to put the heavy baton on it mm -hmm. just, like, just to protect from that, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, mm -hmm. I think that that's uh, – that's what I'm. That's what I'm gonna try here in this sure. next game. Just to, like make sure that I'm trying to protect my <clears throat> my energy investments as much as I can. Right. Are you gonna go first? Uh, I think like going first seems right. Right. I mean, against a deck that I know isn't attacking until turn two, why wouldn't you go first? Right. You could just get it. It's literally just an extra energy attachment. Right. There's no battle VIP pass anymore. Extra boss potential. Why in the world would you not go first? It's literally think, you get yeah, plus one energy think... attachment. I think it's it's yeah. going first or second is a little different than last format. I guess like especially since since Chen Pao is going to choose to go I would go first every time. Yeah, he's going to this matchup, I think. The turn one the turn one attack is just semantic. It doesn't matter. Turn one attack doesn't matter as getting the first attack matters. Oh, well, we right. don't have we don't have VIP anymore. So that's like a really big yeah. like uh deterrent to going first because you often have less opportunity to find it. Yeah. Uh, so that's why this format there was a lot of debate going first or second, but I think in the future format, yeah, you just want to go first. Get an extra energy attachment, get another chance to set up your board, potentially I think so. have like a gust play on my only fridge backs or something like that. I think like so. That. Maybe yeah. like TM Evo Zard chooses to go second. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Sure. But yeah, all right, I'll go first. Yeah, but all your guys are basic holler. That's the difference. It's yeah, like, it's if, like I'm not evolving. If they were evolving, like... maybe there's an argument. I, I do think Charizard still would want to go second, but there's more of, of a debate right now. So, ready then. Well, let's go. Bust the Luxire. Draw. This deck is a potato. Uh, I can bench hands. I can Techno Raider. See, what's, what's the point of choosing to go second if your hand just looks like this? Uh, <laughs> Techno Raider. <laughs> Get rid of this. <laughs> All right. I've got my uh, my ace back is in the deck. Uh -huh. And I think I want to Techno Radar just for... Probably the bundle and the Maridon seems fine. Let's bring your energies to work day. Beautiful. For Andrew. Beautiful. Okay. This is fine. Maridon. Generator. Whoopee. All right. One energy over there. Lightning energy. Pass. This this guy. Let's do it. This this guy. This bro. sack. What a sack, dude. He's so lucky. 
He's so lucky, He's so bro. Lucky. He's so lucky. I can't believe it. The triple nest. Yep. I'm not going to apologize for it either. Tell you, tell you what. I'll take two energy off the shivery chill. Double Frigimax early is just to prevent a gust knockout. He's got two energy on the Iron Hand, so that's one tool, one energy, and one boss away uh, from taking a knockout here. Just feels a little bit better. Hopefully I can draw in with my uh, Greninja or with the uh, Pokestop that I have in my hand. Hopefully I can draw into a Buddy Poffin. So I will use Greninja Concealed Cards for two. And you know what? There's that. And let's stop. I'll just, I'll, I'll use it. Hit the stop. Classic Chin Pao stop. Got the, this is looking kind of scary though. 160, you can do 220, right? Uh, with like two more of these. Yeah. Yikers. That's not good. Not good for our hero. So I almost wonder if I maybe preemptively get out another Chin Pao. And that way, I wouldn't have to worry about retreating. But maybe I don't care. So, I'll attach for turn. We'll just see how this... I do have a Chin Pao in the, in the discard. Oh, that's interesting. Could Iono, I guess, or something. I'll just attach for turn to the Greninja and pass. Draw. <clears throat> Got a whole lot of Nada going on over here. Yeah. Whole lot of it. Do you concede? I'm going to stop. So sick. I'm so glad I did that. <laughs> <laughs> this deck is atrocious, dude. Oh, my gosh. All right. I mean, you're doing 180. That can't be worth it. No, it's definitely not. <laughs> I'm going to bundle... Uh, yeah, I mean, I give you a fridgy. Okay. I think, yeah, sure. Peak acceleration sure. for the knockout. Sure. sure. Um, all right. Now this is interesting because I do have hands. So what you want to do in this situation is if I go hands and I can just go hands, pow, pow, win. So we'll see if I can we'll see if I can concoct that strategy. Um, I will shivery chill. I almost wonder if I should have pushed the Greninja. Forced you to hand, so it's interesting. It's interesting. Very it feels curious. so bad without you know, without some way to turn your nest balls or like no yeah, squawk ability, no, no mew. You know, it just, it feels really bad. But all the lists that I've been seeing out of Japan are just like these, yeah, a bunch of Arvins, some researches. Yep. You know, four hands, four iron crown. That's it. Sometimes you don't got to do a whole lot. You know, that, I mean, it's right. just been very simple lists, right. you know. So I'm trying it, and I just keep wondering, is there something that I'm missing? Like, is there something I'm missing? But every time I play it, it just looks like this. That's cool. That'll do. That'll do, pig. Well, that won't do. That won't quite do. Um, let's go. Have the Irida, but I need like one more item. Let's go poke a stop. That's actually pretty good. Yep. I, 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 lovely. Love to see it. Okay. So. Are you knocking out my iron hands? Yeah, probably. All right, go ahead. You going to allow me to do that? Ultra Ball? It's not looking great. <laughs> Ooh. Just please. Um, let's go here. Put me out of my misery. I'm going to go back into the deck. Let's do that. Let's do Irida. We'll take the... Ultra Ball. Okay. Let's do Irida for the Max Caliber and the Rare Candy. We're going to go back in. 
I will do a prime catcher on your iron hands. Sure. Just want to do a check of the discard. So I only have four. Okay. I only need four. Yes, I only need four. All right. Ultra ball. Um, I'll fail. We're going to super odd. Put back in hands. <clears throat> the reason I may want hands next turn is if you bring up the Maridon, then I don't have to worry about getting a gust. I'm curious that so. you think there's going to be a next turn. I know. I know. <laughs> I've started shuffling up my next okay. deck. <laughs> <laughs> I'll draw four with the bib. I'm going to let you finish this turn, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, retreat. Yep. Here. Let's go ahead and take four back with the uh, retrieval. And I'll attach those with super cold. And we'll take knockout. Yep. Yep. Ugly. I don't know, man. Chin Pao is like... I, I think Chin Pao is kind All right, of cool. Well, I don't know why... Let's run it then. Charizard. I don't know keep why it, Pao keep it has, going. Keep it going. has failed in Japan. But. Keep it going. I got I got Zard. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, I haven't had a good experience with the Turbo Hands deck yet. I've had better experiences with like the, the more diverse cast of attackers. At least it, it feels like you've got... You know, more solid stuff going on with sure. those kinds of decks. These the the Turbo Hands decks feel like they're kind of they're all in on the one thing, and when it doesn't work out, it just feels so bad. Yeah. And the fact that Hands is just so hungry for energy. I mean, uh, yeah, four, I, know. I know. Four. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Yeah. If only it had like a game breaking effect for as much energy as you put into it. Well. You could just as easily take two prizes by knocking out. I know, a, I know, just uh, a two prize. Yeah, a two prizer <laughs> with only maybe three energy on right. your guy. You know, um, so it's like yeah. you're you're paying a very high cost. You are. I don't know. I mean, it doesn't. It feels like something that could be good. It feels in that. Um, it feels like there's metas where it would be very good, and then yeah. there are metas where it'd be very bad. And I think in the er, in the beginning of the format, the meta's a little too spread. It feels like it just couldn't really make a make a big impact mm -hmm. you know in a wide field like we have now it feels like so i mean from my kind of it, it's it's underwhelming you know from an you know especially from a content angle but like <laughs> <laughs> but from a player angle too going into the new set post rotation and it's like okay the best decks are charizard and you've got chen pao <laughs> and you've got snorlax control and maybe you've got like Goldengo and Lugia in there. And Giratina. And Giratina. Basically. No yeah. new cards. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> no new no new cards. Yeah. No uh, new you, cards. Got the, you got the A specs. Everybody gets an A spec. Yes. So No, I don't consider I don't consider Ancient Box to be a top deck. I think it's too Yes. So you got is this uh Charizard Pidgeot? It's Charizard Beeb. Oh, Bibarel. Yeah. Okay, I'm just I'm updating uh, the counterplay.gg app right now, uh, which you yes, guys yes, can yes. Uh, take a look at. It's a web-based app built in uh, React and Java, um, and it's it's open for anyone to use. Just go over to counterplay.gg, and you can start your own adventure, the data aggregation and simulation tool for the Pokemon trading card game. If we get a Snorlax mirror, Jesse's got Snorlax built, and he's going to be joining me tonight with JW for some some testing. So, what about Zeely? Zeely, I texted him. He didn't text me back. That usually means he's not. <laughs> he just ghosted you. Yes. Well, I guess you can't ghost if he never showed up. <laughs> <laughs> But usually, if he doesn't, if he doesn't text me back, it means no. Yeah. Uh, Voided says, "Can you aggregate all the data for yourself?" Yes, but that is the issue with websites like Limitless and, uh, or that. Sorry, that's not an issue. I mean, that's a feature, but that is a that is the problem that I was trying to solve with decks like or with uh, sites like Limitless or um, Trainer Hill is that. 
you have to trust other people's testing results, which, okay, I mean, you, you can, maybe you do trust their testing results, but uh, this is supposed to be personal, so. Yes, what is your testing showing? What is your testing showing? Because I often find that I don't agree all the time with what I see on, on the total aggregation websites. So, Okay. Heads or tails? Heads, please. It is tails. Tails. Tails and over fails. Are we saying Char Charizard Beeb versus Chen Pao? I think we're still choosing to go. I think you can go, go first, probably. That's I think so, player. right? I think so. Yeah, in this matchup? Yeah, we're going to go first. I think All right. So. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, bink rot, yes, there is, uh, but it would probably be, I mean, I would plan for that for next format, not for current format. Yep. Okay. Best of luck, sir. Draw. Okay, let's take a look at this hand. We've actually got a pretty reasonable start with Artisan, Ultra Ball, Squovitz, Arvin, and an energy. I mean, we're doing okay. Nice. Seems fine. Manaphy in the active spot. All right. Start with Artisan. Prime Catcher and Evo TM are in the deck. It's good to see. Manaphy is important. <coughs> What's Artisan for Charmander? And then Squovit's nice, Arvin's nice, but honestly, I could probably just Iona this next turn, keep everything else. Iona going to give me a lot more cards. I don't have to play this Ultra Ball, but it would be nice to get a Bidoof down. I do play two Rods, so I can always put the Squovit back in and preserve the Arvin so I can go Arvin Iono. Mm hmm which I think is also good. So mm -hmm. Totally. Yeah. I'll Ultra Ball away the Squovit and the boss. And we're going to get the Doofer. Let me check and see what my uh, prize card situation is real quick with the Charizards. We've got one Charmeleon, two Zards, Radiant Zard, a Beaverell, two Charmeleon, two Zards. Looks like I prized a Zard EX, which is fine. Okay. And so next turn, I'll probably just Arvin. Hope that JW doesn't get the turn two. Canceling Cologne, Prime Catcher. <coughs> but I guess I not even need the Prime Catcher. The if Man of E stays in the active yeah. spot. Go ahead. Draw for turn. I will shiver chip. Take a little piece of pie through what we got here. Okay, Frigibax, that's good. I know I'll get one off the Artisan. I know I'll get a Frigibax off the Artisan, and then I'm just looking at what else I could grab. I mean, of course, there is... I'll take the two energy off of the Shivery Chill, and then go back in, grab a Frigibax off the Artisan. Now I have... In hand, Pokestop, which I love. I have Ultra Ball as well, which I also really, uh, really enjoy. So I will Ultra Ball away a couple of cards. The Greninja just feels like, first of all, a card that I don't want to discard off of the Pokestop, and secondly, a card that I want for draw, and thirdly, a card that could potentially be uh, quite the potent attacker. So getting it down to the bench... Um, you know, it seems like something I'd want to prioritize, even at the expense of uh, second Frigibax. So 
So Ultra Ball, I will use Radiant Greninja to conceal the cards. Draw two. Very interesting. Let's go Pokestop, and I will use it. Ooh! This this guy. This guy over here. <laughs> right. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, that's pretty good. Gee. All right. Do I do I do the double Bibberol play? I mean, I could. This definitely seems like a matchup that I could do the double Bibberol play. I know that off the first Buddy Poffin, I will get one Frigibax and one Bidoof. I have one Bibberol in deck. But if I fill my bench, that actually leaves me a little bit exposed. Oh, I do have two Bibberol. Hmm. It leaves me a little bit exposed, because what I could do is if you leave this Manaphy up, I have a couple lines of play. I could try to get the Greninja and the Canceling Clone, which I have. I could try to get the Iron Hands with the basic Lightning Energy, um, which is certainly you know, possible with, with the hand that I have as well. Um, so yeah, that's curious. And I have the Irida also. So what I could do... Just trying to think about, you know, subsequent turns. I think I'd save the Irida, because all I would grab would be the Rare Candy Baxcalibur, but you could always Iono me. I would expect an Iono. So I will hold that to hand, keep my cards close to my vest, close to my chest, <laughs> and let's attach return here, and... Pass. Draw. Yeah. <laughs> it's just intimidating, you know. Uh, I've got... It's Arvin or Iono. I think you kind of have to Arvin, say, buddy, buddy, get out more guys, um, and then just go evolve some of them up. And then if you do the Gnarly Gnar with Greninja, I'm Ionoing to four. Maybe I counter catch or something. We'll go from there. All right. So we just, we got to do it. We're going to play Arvin. And we're going to get the Buddy Buddy and the TM Evolution. Because I have to get out two more Charmanders. Sure. Period. Got so. to do it. Buddy Buddy. At least then I'm like safe from it. Safe. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Safe as we Quote can. unquote. Yeah. Quote unquote safe. Yeah. Uh, Charmander and Charmander. And then we're going to go TM Evo to the active, Fire Energy to the active, and Evolution. And we're going to target um, a Charmander and the Beaverell. At least Beaverell can't be. You know, well, the Beaverell can't be hit. attacked with the ability. But then you just knock out two Charmeleons. That feels terrible. I don't have yeah, any of the 100. Yeah, I think. I don't have any of the 100 hit okay. point guys in okay, here. Gotcha, so gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. I'm saying, like. Sure. Yeah. We're just going to go. Yeah, because I'm definitely going to try to. Not and if I put two of these into play, oh, yeah, we're super destroyed. Draw for turn. Oh, okay. Now I have... This is interesting. I got the electric energy off of the off the top deck. And that's an interesting play because I could just take a knockout on the uh, on the mana fee. I don't know. With an iron We hands. do need the 100 hit point millions in here. Maybe that's a gross I think, oversight. I think that's true. I, I Yeah. Let's go evolve the Bibberol. We will Shivery Chill. Yes, and the list that I copied has one 100 hit point Charmeleon, so I should have one in here. I just... That's fine. Yeah, it's That's fine. error on my part. That's fine. Yeah, I mean, e either way, like I would take two yeah. Charmander and yeah, we could yeah. even play it like that if we want to, just to simulate, but uh, certainly with the 90 HP Charmeleon, that would be the best target for yeah. me. And we could pretend that this is 100 hit point. I mean, we, we could yeah. if we, you know, again, if, if you're if you're listening to to the stream, then you'll, you'll know that. Um, so I'd like to hit off of the conceal. I want to conceal cards before I Irida with the idea being um, that I can um with the idea being that I can use, like I can draw into the one of the pieces, either the rare candy or the cologne. So I'll go ahead and conceal cards. 
Rare Candy found, which is perfect. Irida. And we'll get back Excalibur, and we'll get Canceling Cologne. Let me just take a peek here. I do have... Okay, yeah, and that's what I was worried about. I don't have a second Bax Caliber, so I really didn't want to poke stop if I could avoid it before uh, playing the Irida. Let's go there. Um, rare candy. All right, do pretend that this is a 100 hit point Charmeleon. I'm going to have one delivered here momentarily. Attaboy. Yes. You won't have to pretend for long, chat. I'll attach return. Super cold. Attach here. I've got the other 90 hit point one. Yeah, Let's go retreat. So Let's go superior energy retrieval. Heather, my goat. We have a huge stack of so Thank you. Let's go. Let's go. In. You saw nothing. I'll attach one to the active. I'll attach one to the pow. One to the friggy. Uh, one to the bibberal. Just trying to make it so that I don't have any good targets for Andrew to knock out on the next turn. Um, and then I'll draw three off the Bibberal. Yowza. Poke stop. <laughs> He's cooking. I'll play a Buddy Buddy Poffin. And this almost feels like I could. I could go after another. Bibberal. So we'll do that. I mean, yeah, there, you, can, you can't ask for much more. So um, knockout, and I'll take out to Charmander after having played the Canceling Cologne to negate the mana fee. Yikes. I'll draw. It is, uh, yeah, it's Iono. Let's mm -hmm. go. Yep, yep. Yeah. Uh, just ugly, 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 ugly. I mean, look at this board. This is nuts, right? I mean, just Crazy. absolute devastation. I get yep. six. And I think after whiffing this Charizard, I will scoop. So let's see. Hisuian Heavy Ball. Fail it. That is no surprises. Ugly. Oh, yes. Just absolute... Disaster. Fire energy. Well, nest ball for radiant Charizard. Buddy, buddy, Poffin for Charmander. And Bidoof. Come on, let's go. One time. Come on, deck. Provide once, please. Okay. <laughs> Fire energy to Charizard. Okay. Industrious incisors. Cool. You needed that. Infernal rain. Needed that. Yeesh. Oh, this is so ugly. He didn't check the energy. No, I mean, I have two. Oh, okay. I can attack. Oh. I just wish I had a third so I could go, but I drew into one. Yep. So, like, I yep. wish I could go one, yep. two, and yep. then one here. Yep. Of course. Uh, but I can't. Right. So that makes it ugly. Yeah, that it does. <laughs> it's fine. We'll catch up with the rare candy later. I think I have to kind of go Radiant Charizard. I think you do. Try and force an odd prize, right? Yep. 
If I just bring, I mean, you've got three energy right here. If I bring up Charizard EX and hit this, oh, my goodness. Yeah, you're cooked. I'm absolutely cooked. I'm annihilated. Yes. Yeah. I mean, this is interesting. Yeah, this is this is very interesting. So I'm going to try to force the odd prize. Sure. And then Combustion Blast for Knockout. Um, I have to hope. Yeah, I mean, this is like all your energy. So now I'm thinking, well, this is four energy. You'd have to get a rare candy Charizard. I almost wonder, why don't I, how many cards in your hand? Like six or something? A good question in the chat. Is it correct to try and force an odd prize this turn or next turn? I think this turn, because then if it fails and he goes Gus Knockout, then I have another have turn another. to force. Right, well, and know? that's what I'm thinking. is like, maybe I just take this out. You see what I'm and saying? And then I go to yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm trying to I'm trying to think. If I take this knockout here, then I go to one. I'll I'll Irida. And then I'm gonna try to make myself as Iono proof as I can. Um let's do these two. I'll play the Chen Pao. Let's go Super Rod. Put three energy back. And I'll use Shivery Chill. Put two of those into my hand. So the idea here is I'm, I'm basically committing to knocking out the active, which I don't mind because, like Andrew said, if I gusted, um, I would actually lose energy, and then he puts himself in a decent spot to, like, maybe take uh you know take knockouts uh, in subsequent turns so we'll do that this is super cold um i can draw one off the bibberal so i'll do that it's an ultra ball very nice so i will hmm here it is guaranteed iono feels like the worst card i'll ultra ball for another bibberal I will use Bibberol, draw three. Um, vessel. Take two. And then, yeah, at this point, it's just loading the field with energy. Uh, super cold, and I'll poke a stop. Take these. Um, knockout. Yeah. Feels inevitable with your insane board right now, but we'll see what we can do. Throw up uh, Charizard EX. Draw. Pri uh, Poffin. And we fail it. I have prize two candy. Technically, I think this energy here should not be on the back's caliber, but that's that's a minor misplay. That uh, I'll just have to accept if if it loses me the game. Because if I if I have five energy attached anywhere else, even if you knock out the back's caliber, I could just respond with a chin pow. Right. So that's a that's an error. Attached to Charizard. Um, attached to Charmander. Prime Catcher, your back's caliber. Yep. Yep. Incisors <clears throat> for two. Ultra Ball away to Fire Energy. Oh boy. My other beaver rail is gone. The only way, okay, so I would have to hit. If I don't hit Rare Candy Rod off this Pokestop, <laughs> then I will scoop. Yeah. yeah. 
I mean, you, you you have a decent shot. I mean, it's crazy. To, you, there is a line for you to win. There is. Uh, yeah. Because I would have two Frigibacks in the in the uh, discard pile. So, like, if you could go Gus Gust on subsequent turns, because if you, you knock out with the Charizard, I'd have to right. blow up all my energy. And again, this, like, this one energy attachment probably doesn't matter, but it certainly could. Yeah, there's the Cypher guy. The Cypher is in this deck. It's mm -hmm. just I, I haven't really, you know. JW is stunting on me this game. All right, stop. We prized two candies there. It was going to be tough regardless, but I'll go first this game. Is this game three? Because I've won two, right? No, that was against the hands deck. This is game one against the Zard deck. Oh, you're right. Yep. You're right. Sorry, I can go back and look at my logs. Yep. Oh, we got this one. That was that was slower setup. You got the turn two, you know, canceling cologne, double knockout, and I wasn't even able to respond to that. That feels horrendous. That, right? that was pretty cool. Oh, I mean, that's right. <laughs> cool, sure. <laughs> that was pretty sick. For yeah, sure. that was yeah. that was horrendous. I actually do like the the Bieberel version. I think it's I think it's cool. Ha you are capable of having like a very uh, no nonsense board at the end of the game. I mean, like the yep. power of not having a 280 hit point Pokemon in play is like pretty substantial. Yep. Uh, forcing your opponent to go through two to three Charizard EXs with 300 and uh, and 30 HP is like is pretty nuts. You want first or second? Uh, we'll go first. All right, cool. <laughs> okay. Fine. Maybe go with second is correct. I mean, no. No. I always try it. I mean, this is a this is a primary matchup of this format, so we can play a second set if you want you're good okay good luck man all right good luck yeah this doesn't feel great mm -hmm. go ahead interesting um Play Cypher Maniac. I have to show you. No, I don't. It's just no, two you cards, do not. Right? So this is a fun play. Oh, and you got the stop in hand, huh? Mm -hmm. That is fun. So I can get three three Pokemon out here just from the uh, the Cypher Maniac. Um, it is curious. I. It's not the best hand so we're hoping for um another good card off of the, f the final but it's it's workable it's workable especially given given your start so let's go poke stop and i'll use it one two and the third there i don't know if that screws me i didn't check how many fridge backs i have okay i don't that doesn't lose me the game. And we'll do the Bidoof. And then off of the Nest Ball that I got, I will just grab a Chen Pao. Since I don't have any energy, the Greninja... Uh, like, I, I need energy to enable the Greninja, so I figure, okay, if I have another turn, I can maybe find some some energy, retreat into the... Greninja and maybe take a snipe knockout, but we will see. So there's that, and I pass. Okay. Drop. Ooh, that is a good top deck. No, oh, why? Every time, dude. I never get lucky. 
Buddy Buddy Poffin. Come Great. on, man. And then you had a cool play. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> You had a cool play. Yeah, this is fine. You had a cool play, but I've also got a cool play. Are you going to Cypher Maniac as well? Into Pokestop, yeah. No, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. It's sick, actually. I'm going to Buddy Buddy for... And this is why we choose to go first. Buddy Buddy for these guys. And then Cypher Maniac's Decoding. And we'll get... I guess I need a rare candy and like another buddy buddy seems fine. Yeah, well, let's just do that. Okay. I'm going to stack rare candy and buddy buddy. <sighs> dude, Cypher don't Maniacs. Do cold this breaking. to me, bro. Seriously, dude. Oh, I'm doing it. Andrew. Brother. Uh, it's happening. Andrew, uh, dude. Dude, no whining. There's no whining on stream. Come on, bro. Nobody wants to hear that. <laughs> All right, those two go to the top of the deck. And then Pokestop. Dude, <laughs> come on. <laughs> buddy, Buddy Poffin. And I'm going to off the Buddy, Buddy Poffin gets mm -hmm. another Charmander and Manaphy. That's right, I didn't prize it. Bro, you're kidding me. No, I'm not. This is insane, And I'm dude. going back in. Oh, my. Oh, <laughs> Rare candy into Charizard. He has everything, dude. I don't think it's correct to bench. Might as well. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Might kind of well. thinking about it, right? I, well, I mean, I don't know. What are the chances that I, I own or you? And then I go here. Yeah, I think it's fine to put it in play. All right. Infernal yeah, if Rain. I'm, if I'm gusting a Radiant Charizard, that's... That's fine. Right. Infernal Rain. We're going to go one fire here. And I'm just thinking, like, sitting two fire on the Charizard's not bad. I mean, I could just kind of... Yeah, that's true. That's that's, that's, that's kind of what I'm thinking. I mean, that's... Yeah. that's Yeah, that's interesting. This seemed better than putting it on Charmanders. Yep. So... Yep. And it definitely seems better than not thinning the deck after I've seen that this deck can just kind of clump up. So. <laughs> that is very true. I put the Cypher back into the deck. Judge! Thank you, chat. Thank Keep you for keeping honest. him honest. Yep. Keeping him honest. That goes into the discard. Into the discard pile! Right. Straight to jail! Straight to jail! <laughs> jail. Thank you, chat. <clears throat> And with that, I'll burning darkness for the knockouts. Take my prize. Okay. Wow, you're really good, Andrew. I know. Wow, dude. Wow, bro. So good. All right. Um, rare candy. Now I drew into a retrieval, which I don't like, but I will shivery chill. I will uh, take these to hand. Let's go Ultra Ball. Get out the little Granoinga. I'll attach. I'll draw four. Now that's interesting. Um, you're you're gonna be mad. I think you're gonna be really mad. Um, we'll poke a stop. Super odd, please. Super odd. One time. Oh, he's so good. He's so good. All right. This is why I powered up the Radiant Charizard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, bro, I'm about to hit you with the Greninja. Oh, I think, cool. I think if I have it, let's go Super Odd. Yeah. Two back. Let's go Irida. So I haven't played it for turn. Um, 
we go. I don't know if I have. Okay, I do have the canceling cologne. So off the Irida, I'll take cologne and Bax. Oh no, nope, nope. The cologne play doesn't work because I need to get the prime catcher. Okay, never mind. Never mind. Forget it. But what I can do is grab Friggy and I can take a one shot, I think. I don't have the mental capacity to figure it out, but I'm going to take these two cards. Bench that. Oh, I have Radiant Greninja that I can use. Yes, yes, okay. Yeah, so I will... Right? I haven't... Countercatcher... Oh, I have the Countercatcher in hand. I do, I do. Yes, I do. Hold on, hold on. All right, rewind, rewind, rewind. So I took these off the Irida, and I'm putting the Irida to hand, of course. I do, I do have the Countercatcher. Yes, I do. Okay, now I need to see if that's even, like, the best play. So, let's see. I attach, I retreat. That's two in there. Have I used Greninja yet? Listen, I need you to keep track of your no, 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 own I'm game state. Chat. I'm asking chat. <laughs> I'm asking chat. I'm asking chat. Have I, I used, need you to keep track of your Greninja? own game state? No, I have not. Okay, right. okay. Then that then that uh, changes things. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna rewind to this state. This is my. Well, I'm this glad you're my... waffling now because I was waffling earlier, and now I'm smooth sailing. I know. I know. You're you're <laughs> chilling, dude. You're chilling. All right, all right, all right. Here we go. So I have not played the Irida. All right. What I am going to do is I'm going to discard one off of the Greninja to draw two cards. Okay. Very nice. <laughs> so then I will Irida, and I will take the canceling Cologne, and I will take. The Frigibax. Okay, I will go back into the deck, potentially. Frigibax comes down. I had to put out a fire in chat, so I'm trusting that you're getting this. Yeah, what happened? Well, there's an argument about two Bax Caliber versus three Bax Caliber going on. <laughs> And some people really don't like the idea of only playing two Bax Caliber, even though it's probably uh, min-max correct. You just, I'll you know, treat. you only prize both one in a hundred games. That is minimally affecting your games. You know, you play two rods. You don't need three. But some people really want to play three. But really, just do what you want. All right. That is the that is the MO of society. Oh, today. is it two pow versus three pow? Whatever. Uh, who cares? Same difference. All right. Countercatcher clone, superior energy retrieval. We'll edit this in post. I'll attach everything to the active and then one to um, one to the Frigibax. Potential pivot and just horrible uh, gust play. And then I'm going to knock out the double Charmander. Okay. All right. Thanks, chat. Cool. Anyways, yeah, it was two pow versus three pow. Whatever, same difference. Do what you want. All right, and just let people do what they want to do. It's if we're talking about a one card difference. Let people. Let people. You know, if they want to mess around and find out, let them mess around and find out. Okay, here we go. Draw. I did bib roll. I did. Okay. That was mean. Uh, yeah, that's pretty rough. Not great. Really wanted a rare candy Charizard here. Yep. But that is fine. Well, hey, at least you have two energy on a Radiant Charizard. I do, but I have no switch right now. And you brought this thing up. Oh. So, let's see. Uh, I think I'm just going to Iono. Seems fine. And I will get five. <laughs> Man, chill out. Charmander. You're cooked. Buddy, buddy, poffin. And we're going to fail it. Let's 
Let's see. Bro thinks he has a chance. I might not. This matchup's atrocious, and everybody knows it. <laughs> I know you're barely keeping it together over there. You hey. barely got both wheels on the track, man. <laughs> yeah, I got enough going on. Okay, yeah. I got enough. I don't need too much more than this. Everybody knows this matchup stinks. All right, kind of just wanted to see it in action. All Nestash. Industrious incisors for four. Good gravy. <laughs> <laughs> if my mana fee sticks here, I will scoop. I will scoop. Uh, I Yeah, I mean, I had to discard the Iron Hand, so I can't really punish. Good um, goodness. But I could just attack, like, with the Greninja. Like, that's goodness. a fine play. Goodness gracious. Take that right. knockout on the active. Like, I, I do not feel uh, feel bad about that. Ultra Ball. Goodness, 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 goodness. If I just played the Pokestop, I would have hit it. Oh, I would have hit the Prime Catcher if I just played the Pokestop. This is so bad. Can I cut your deck? Chad is saying needs a, needs a Thornton. That's what this deck needs. More Thornton. Have you considered? More Thornton. Have you considered more Thornton? All right, here we go. Please. Give it to me, sir. Oh, wait. I don't like that one. All right. That's fine. Okay. That's cheating. No, that's a shuffle. Uh-huh. I don't like that one. <laughs> Looks at the bend of the card. Pokestop. Oh! <laughs> oh! <laughs> uh -oh. Yeah, this is... This, actually, I, I lose. Probably. I probably did lose this. Yep. And oh yep, yep, yep I definitely yep, lose this burning one, darkness. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> that's yep. That's 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 gonna be it, potentially. All right, I'll draw. I mean, I guess so my thought here is that I can uh I knock out this with the Chen Pao, and then you bring up Radiant Zard, but I knock it out with Bax Caliber, and then we're both at this you know, but then it, the action's on you and I could potentially win from there. So I maybe I'm not in such a bad position. Let's go. Buddy Buddy Poffin, and I will, again, try to, to the extent that I can, Iono-proof myself and grab the Bidoof and the um, Fridgebax. I'll Shivery Chill and take a couple of energy, and then I will go back in with a vessel mm. yeah go back in with a vessel grab these okay Super cold. Attach return. Draw. Yeah. Retrieval. Nang, loading up, huh? Okay. I gotta. Yeah. Right. I mean, I don't. Sure. That's it. Is what it is. Um. And then I'll go. I, I guess all six from the active. Sure. Take two. Send up Radiant Charizard and draw. I don't want to spin the stop because I could discard my last, ba my last Bax Caliber. Evolve into Charmeleon. Bench Bidoof. 
attach fire energy to Charmeleon and Iono. Yep. Okay. Lost vacuum your poke stop. Yeah. Shucks. And Nestash. Mm -hmm. Incisors for four. And combustion blast for knockout, yep. Draw for turn. Play Buddy Buddy Poffin. Play Nest Ball. I will Bibberol for four. Oh, Lordy. Shee! Um, let's see. I mean, that. Irida. Let's go Bax Caliber and a card that I don't care about. Let's do Bax Caliber plus, I mean, it could be Bax Caliber plus this. And then let's go Rare Candy here. Um, one, two, three, four. I mean, that's fine, right? Superior. I don't know. Maybe, I don't know how this punishes me, but we'll take four back. Okay. Attach one to the active, attach two here. Um, one to bib roll. And knockout. Sure. Sure. Okay. Rod. It's got to be Charizard and one, two, three, four, five. Charizard and two. Charizard and one fire, and then Rod, the second fire. Back in. Ultra Ball away to Arvin for Charizard mm -hmm. and I'll Infernal Rain. Infernal Rain, just the one. Yeah. Okay. okay. Then. I ultra balled way to Arvin off that. I'm going to get Bieberel. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to ultra ball away boss and artisan. I guess off the infernal rain, we send. Second Bibberel was prized. <laughs> we send that there. That's fine. Uh... Okay. All right. <clears throat> yep, yep. All right, final answer. Fail the second Ultra Ball. Okay. And then I'm going to incisors, I'm going to nestash, I'm going to incisors, and I'm trying to find Iono Counter Catcher of the Beat. That's what we're trying to do. Okay. Could be good. And I could win. You could. All right. Um, incisors. Okay. Heavy ball. Mm -hmm. Fill it. I don't know. Sure. Mm. 
nestash collapse incisors for five prime catcher the beam retreat it put that there nest ball fail it okay burning darkness knockout drop turn Oh, I can't nest ball. All right, fine. The nest ball's back to my hand because it collapsed. All right, fine, fine, what fine. What the heck, dude? You're cheating. All bro. right, all right, all right. Yeah, I don't have win. I can't uh, I can't do it. This is my last card. All right, GG's. So I can retreat, but I don't think I actually have, like, uh, enough energy. Any, any energy in the in the deck. Yeah, so, oh, I have one. Okay. It's, but I guess, still. theoretically possible. So what I, I had the catcher, I should have catchered up the Charmeleon, which I didn't think about. And if I knock out the Charmeleon, then then I can knock out anything in the active with uh, with that. Oh, and he couldn't bench tempo anyway because sure it collapsed. You took a knockout. Because oh, I took a knockout. Why yeah, wouldn't yeah. I be able to bench? So tempo? true. <laughs> you took Update a the app. Update the app. Yeah, that was a throw. That was a throw. Update the app. I didn't. I didn't recognize the Charizard as being something that would be. I, di I didn't see the counter catcher play on the Bibberol, which was the issue. The counter catcher Iono play. I'm like, oh yeah, my hand's fine. And then if he Ionos me, I have Bibberol. But I had my other Bibberol prized. I would have liked to get that up. Um, yeah. I'm trying to think of other. Yeah, Iono to one just sucks. There's nothing really. I Saving the Ultra Ball wouldn't have mattered. Yes, for those of you that were here present for the new ruling updates do you have a poker stop of mine yesterday i might yes those of you that were present for the ruling update yesterday on um, and all of that discussion it looks like the uh the rules team from the pokemon company is they are ruling that the game knows the formats now and knows that your deck is singleton and monotype in gym leader challenge and therefore would not be able to use Brooklyn Hill if you're playing a Darkness deck or whatever. Interesting. They so this released is that. Their, yeah, it's, it's coming from Japan. It's like it's a new thing. Like they've, oh. they're changing all the precedent. That is that is different. It is different. Yes. So they're changing the precedent. And it, it came up because of like TM Evo and uh, they're not in charge of GLC. So then we have the... So, like, I could just, you know, I could say that, no, we're going to deviate from the Pokemon company when it comes to the game knowing the format or, or that, right? And I could. I certainly could. But it's like, do I want to make life easier or harder for judges, <clears throat> right, who have to judge GLC side events at right. TPCI run events? And I think it makes sense that, like, you probably just try to make life easier for the judges, right? Whether then being like, actually, no, everybody who wants to, yeah, yeah, you should probably, we should probably, we should do our part as the Gym Leader Challenge community to try and make life easier for the judges because it's not just about doing, it's not just about, you know, it's not just about doing things the way we want to, though. It's about doing the right thing. Sometimes it's about doing the right thing, JW. Yeah. Sometimes it's about swallowing your pride and yep. saying, you know, I don't like this change. And even though I don't have to abide by it because I, you know, we run Gym Leader Challenge. Not them. Right. For now. For now. <laughs> it's our format. For now. Our rules. Yes. <clears throat> For now. But, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> For now. Until they pry it from my cold, dead body. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. Did you get a trademark? I don't think it's possible. Sure it is. But. Sure it is. You don't think they're working on that right now? No. Okay. I looked up that stuff. You can't, like, you can't, like, okay. you can't, like, trademark an idea. Uh, I, you can trademark a collection of words. A collection of words and a logo. Yes. So, like, I could do that for sure. Yep. But. <laughs> <laughs> I 
fun, isn't it? <laughs> All right, let's go. Sorry, didn't mean to. Didn't mean to. There is precedent there. We can talk about that later. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Dang. That sucked. I really wanted to win that one. Again. No, I was sick. I right, won. I'll go first. Oh, you're not winning this one, though. I guarantee you that. Yep. Got three Arvins. Okay. Take my mulligan. Just kidding. <laughs> but for those of you that are curious um, about the, the gym leader challenge ruling and, and all of that, um, Basically, we'll probably just follow their precedent uh, with the format knowing, you know, the game knowing the format. Now, we'll probably just follow it to make life easier for judges who judge events. And that's really what it boils down to is I like the judges. I like them a lot. And they do a lot of work. So we want to make their lives easier, not harder. So I think that that's, that's really what it has boiled down to for me. Uh, and by making, by making the life easier easier for judges then really encourages them to encourages to, people to play yeah. the format more right? right so like that's just really what it boils down to yeah. so we should make the life easier for judges yeah. i mean people are already kind of upset that there's a change happening in the first place because it's annoying for everybody right so uh we'll probably just have to uh we'll just we'll just go along with that you know which means what's that mean it's very funny. It means that your your darkness deck cannot use Brooklyn Hill anymore. If ah. your opponent because the form the game now knows the format mm -hmm. and it knows that you're playing Gym Leader Challenge and that your deck is singleton and therefore you're playing a card with no legal target in your deck. However, if you are playing a fire, a darkness, a Yeah, so it's like very like No, no. If you're playing a fire, a darkness, like a lightning, yes, you can use Turfield. <laughs> Right. Yeah. So no. Yeah. The game knows about every card printed. Yep. Ever printed. Yep. Yes. But it also knows that you're playing a singleton deck because you're playing Gym Leader Challenge. So if you try to Evo oh, Soda, so that's really curious. and yeah. and there's no breaks. I mean, so breaks don't bro, count because they're the not game legal. Is getting smarter. Dude. The game is it's learning. It's learning. Yeah, I know. It's learning and growing. Yeah. It's like AI or something. Dark doesn't want to play Brooklyn Hill, but your opponent might be playing Brooklyn Hill, and you can't you use it. You want to shuffle. Yes. You want to shuffle the deck. Yes. I've, I've yeah, I've made that play so many times, or just like. You know, before you make a play, oh, I forgot if I prize something. Let me go yeah. take a look through the deck with the turf field or the brooklet. Right. You could take a look. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can know, or if you know you just got a bunch of good cards shuffled to the bottom or put to the bottom of your deck with Iono, right? Yep. Marnie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can no longer do that. Or Marnie. Yeah. It's tough. Turf field works because of the four dual types that exist. There's a dual type Volcarona. Shiftry. There's a dual type Shiftry. There's a dual type... Uh, Gal Galvantula. Is the Galvantula is good. Galvantula could be like Gal play. Galvantula yeah. is, is good. It's the best of the, and there's a Azamaril. But yes. No, and then there's uh well, that's not a grass type. It's not a grass type. Because it's no. the best sharp. Yes. So then yesterday we did the thought experiment. Well, okay. So say I'm playing a gym leader challenge deck, right? And I open Snorlax doll, and I have no other basics. Can I Brooklet? Right, because well, the game would know, right? No, the game doesn't know. No, no, the game would know, right? Because you're saying that the game knows that it's a singleton deck, so I know you're playing a singleton deck. And yes. you're saying the game knows that you're playing... No, but it doesn't know what type you're playing yet. The game is a bird's eye. Right. And can only tell what's until... public knowledge. So until you reveal a public knowledge type, you can Brooklet. And really? that's, what, that's the official, what, that's what the official rules team came up with. Yes. Really? Okay, so the yes. game only knows when you show it. Yes, when it becomes public knowledge. Interesting. Yes. Interesting. Mm -hmm. that's so even during a mulligan doesn't count. That's curious. Wow. It is that's, funny. Yeah. Yes. Look what you've done. I know. Isn't this isn't this awesome? Look what you've created. This is great. Why keep it simple? As long as it keeps me thinking, I need that. I you know. know, I need that in my life. How can you brook it without an active Pokemon? Snorlax doll can be an active Pokemon, but it doesn't. You can play it, does, it during setup. Yes, but it doesn't tell you what type you're playing, right? Yes, 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 yes. Very interesting. All of this over Brooklyn Hill? Yes, of course. It's important to have rules. It is important I to mean, have rules. Thank goodness we're not Yu-Gi-Oh, right? Where you have to, like, cross-reference... You have mountains of text. So now what we need to do is, all right, so at every 
TPCI run side event, what you need to do is it's called brooklet baiting. Okay, so what you're going to do is you play your water or your fighting deck, and you know you oh, try to gonna... bait. Oh, you're not gonna. You're not you want to check your deck? Up? Yeah, brooklet. And as soon as they do, two prize penalty, baby. Yep. In the side event. Were we, were we like five <laughs> minutes ago talking about doing the thing? <laughs> And then now he's over here <laughs> talking about baiting the opponent. Yes, okay. yeah, Brooklyn okay. baiting. We're yeah, Brooklyn, talk. Brooklyn We're baiting. Talk, yeah, yeah, yeah. We got things to talk about. Uh huh. Yeah, or stormy baiting. Yeah, uh huh. You could do stormy mountains baiting. Storm bait. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Best of luck. Good luck to you too. Water. D. I will play the Buddy Buddy Poffin. I will grab the Bibberel or the Bidoof. Excuse me. And I will grab the Frigibax from the deck. Play those to my bench. I will Nest Ball. Hmm. Take Chin Pao. Dude, what am I doing? Um, yeah, that's I'm I'm gonna make a I'm yeah, I'm gonna make a weird play, I think. I don't know. This is probably not good. This this is probably really bad actually. Um for for the sake of our testing, I'm gonna undo this nest ball play. Just All right, man. I'm just gonna undo it. Just yeah, gonna undo it. Yeah, get your stuff together. It's just an undo. It's just an undo. Am I very quiet? Yeah, there you're go. gonna need to. You're gonna need to fix that. What your audio? You're gonna need to make me louder. Okay, we'll stop mumbling. <laughs> Am I mumbling? Yeah, maybe if you weren't over there mumbling about your chem pal sequencing. Yeah, then then it would be then it would be easier to decipher what's going on. Pass. Okay. Draw. All right. Cards in hand. Six. Okay. All right. Big brother, little brother energy. Yeah, that's because Andrew's like 10 years older than I am. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, um, not 10. <laughs> not, not, it's, it's not 10. Um, okay. It's getting there. It, it never gets more. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. I've got a cool hand. I just got to, you know, the Cypher Maniacs code breaking really makes me want to think. But I think that this is just Iono. I think it's or, Iono. Yeah, yeah you gonna... Ultra Ball. Oh, you, yeah, 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 dude, you got, got the set. Yeah, yeah, bro. of course, of course, bro. But then I was the thinking about your audio setup. levels. And then I was right, thinking about you be, me being 10 years older than you. And then, <laughs> and now I'm and looking the at the Cypher Maniac. And, you know, and, and I'm just going to Ultra Ball it away. Well, and, it's actually kind of cool because you could squove it for one of the cards of the Cypher Maniac. No. <laughs> Go for one. It's the one. Yeah. Well. So like. So you could, like, if uh, let's say you didn't have Iono, because I do think Iono is the of best. Of course, clearly. we're gonna Iono. But you could like put a Bibberol on the top of the deck and then squove it into it. Or that something. it's you could do that. Isn't but that I'm cool? not gonna. It is cool. It's neat. Okay. It's neat. Sorry, I was just just trying to say something cool, man. It's neato. Just trying to just trying to you know. Hey, look what you could do. But Nest ball. Okay. Just you're right. Just ignore me. Just shut okay? me down. Big bro. Just like you do with everything else. <laughs> All right. I'm going to nest ball 
And off this nest ball, I'm going to get Manaphy. And then for my next trick, I'm going to Ultra Ball. And we're going to Ultra Ball away the Cypher Mani Maniac and this Fire Energy. And we're going to get Charmander number two. And then I am going to hope, for goodness sake, that I find more Pokemon Search off this Iono. Because it is possible for you to get the turn to Prime Catcher, Radiant, Greninja, Canceling, Cologne. I imagine. Well, Prime, yeah, I guess. I guess I could. Yeah. You fix your mic a little bit. That'll help with the audio level. Yeah, yeah, bring it, bring uh, it down. Uh, bring it. You got to bring it down. You got a big head. JW. I know. I know. But it, it hurts my little. It hurts my little uh, temple area. My under ear temple area. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, sometimes you got to suffer for the production. You okay. Know? Okay. <sighs> it's not always going to be comfortable. All right. <sighs> okay. Yeah. How's that? How's that? Yeah. That's great. I mean, now you're loud. Yeah. Now I'm peeking. Yeah. Well, I got you now. Ah! Like it. Oh God. Okay. Whoosh. Yeah. See. Sometimes you got to suffer for uh, for the production. No one said this was going to be comfy. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Very uncomfortable. And we're going to Iono. Six. Alrighty then. You know, this is a fine hand for next turn. Dude, you're... What are you... You're cooking, bro. But yeah, but oh, if you got me. the turn two knockout... I know. On both know. these, then I'm then I'm then you're not then you're then, then you're I'm not cooking. not cooking. All yeah. right. And with that, I don't even think I benched that. Okay. Um Go ahead. Draw for turn. Hmm. Attach. Ultra Ball. Hmm. This is interesting. This is very interesting. I'm thinking about if I can get a hands. Because I know that, you know, the play on the active is probably not going to work. Um, I could... Uh, Chen Pao seems like the most reasonable. I just take a knockout on the active and then hope you don't just have the have the stones to knock me back out. I could just pass with something in the active, one prize or in the active. I don't know. We'll have to see. Hands would be the best play, though. And we'll see if we can get that. So draw with the bib. One, two, three. Rare candy. Close. Um, two there. It's, it's, it's yeah, you can't hands. You attach that lightning for turn. Oh, that's true. I did. Can't hands. You're right. Facts. That's a no hand zone. Facts. It's true. Yes, sir. It's true. Many people are saying this. I will radiant Granoinga. Oh, that's sad. I had it. Oh, I had it, dude. I had it. What if? Um. Well, I don't have a rare candy. So actually, I don't have it. Um. Give up the... I mean, we are pl kind of playing this game of chicken, right? Because your only attacker is the Charizard. So, yeah, I'm not leaving myself in a very vulnerable position by just leaving this active. I just give myself another turn to That's find, right. you know, find what I need to find. So, with that in mind... Until I tail smash you. Bro, don't, dude. That would be disgusting. I will... I could bring up the Chin Pao and take another couple of energy, but I don't see the point in that, so I'm I'm gonna pass. Okay. I don't want to leave this active to I don't know, give you draw. Ooh, that's a nice top deck there. I like that. Bibarel. Energy to Charmander. TM Evolution. Charmeleon. Charizard. Eh, is that really what I want to do? What am I going to evolve, actually? 
I mean, you just play it, probably. Yeah. Right? Nothing, really. All right. Industrious Incisors <clears throat> for four. And then what's the the downside of of me waiting now? Um, I mean, I don't have an option to go. So, I mean, I could TM Evolution and get this Charizard, but that but doesn't really make any sense. Yeah, yeah it wouldn't proc the think, ability. Yeah. Uh, I have a 100 hit point guy, so you cannot knock them both out. It's not possible. Or just retreat into the squirrel. Yeah, so that's what I'm going to do. Okay. Retreat into Squovit, and I'll pass. Draw for turn. Hmm. I need rare candy. I need it. I need it. Okay, I can play this down. And get rid of an, a nest ball. That doesn't give me. That doesn't get me any closer. So, I have to radiant Greninja. That is not not good. Not good to chant. I could do thirty. Could tackle for thirty. You could. That is a play. Um you don't have a sixty HP Charmander. That would be kind of fun. Um Pass. Draw. Alrighty then. Infernal Rain. One to my Squovit and two to Charizard EX. Yes, sir. And then I have to ask myself, like, all right, I guess, like, I can't just sit here forever, right? Like, no, I cannot. I have to, I have to go. <laughs> The darkness is calling, and I must go. Fire energy to Charizard, Super Rod to fire back into my deck. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to retreat and then Super Rod because I might Prime Catcher. We'll see. All right. Nah, I might I might Prime Catcher, so I'm not going to retreat first. I want to like at least give the option for a Prime Catcher. Like if I find it, that could be. You're taking this out. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Gren actually, Greninja might be because I didn't Bibberell. Didn't Gren Bibberell. Greninja, Greninja yeah. might actually be the better play, right? Because you still haven't used Irida and you keep using yeah, this, right? Right. right so exactly. Like, yeah, yeah. 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 Give yourself that shot. Nest Dash. Yep. That's yeah, right. play it yeah, for sure. Heavy ball. Yep, draw five. Then just make sure that like there's. It's not, not real. I think it's just thinning your hand. It is. Yeah, I just made sure that there wasn't anything crazy on the bottom of my deck that I didn't. Yeah, but just thinning uh, it's better. Yeah. Um, because you have should... four Charmander. Nah, we should take the Charmander. Okay. okay. Yeah, that's fine. And then industrious incisors for four. Yep. Okay. And I'm okay with this. I mean, you still got no dude up yet. We knock out a Frigibax. Bax. That's okay. That's good. Uh, unfortunately, oh, I do have Ultra Ball too, so I'll play that. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna Ultra Ball away, Charmander, and yeah, Ultra Ball away, Charmander, and Bidoof mm -hmm. to go get that second Charmeleon. Uh huh. And then Burning Darkness for the knockouts. Uh -huh. Yep. Uh huh. Chin Pao active. Oh. Shivery Chill. Take two. Um, I have Irida now. And I mean, this is it because I also have the energy retrieval. So I'm wondering if I even want a Greninja, but then that means that I have to find another energy. So I think at this point 
I just have to go. I'm going to Irida for the Frigimax and the Rare Candy because I do need to make sure that I don't leave myself with solely just a single little Friggy. And the Greninja play is still live, which I really like because I could go Gus the Manaphy knock out Squovit too mm -hmm. if you don't you know find a collapsed or somehow remove that from play. So I'll take these. The Friggy goes to the bench. I will Rare Candy into the back's Caliber. I will then uh, Super Cold, two to the active. Let's go. Superior Energy Retrieval and grab four waters from the discard. Let's do Super Cold. And then I mean can I can I even make that play? She so take two and I take one. Um I'm trying to think if I want to bench the hands or not. So, is that even a play that I have? Maybe. Sure. We'll try it. And then, did I bibberol already? I'll bibberol. I haven't bibberoled, right? I don't think so. Because no, my hand just, was. Should be my a hand surprise was penalty if you, yeah. <laughs> I, think, I don't think it did. Uh, okay. And then I'll discard everything and take a knockout. Okay. All right, now this is actually interesting for me. I, in an ideal world, would like to attack with Charizard this turn. Mm -hmm. um, but I can't without putting a Charizard EX into play. Um, I also don't mind Iono Prime Catcher up Vax Caliber. That's pretty good. Uh, I think that that's also fine. So I'm thinking promote Squovit and kind of C. Sure. That's what I'm feeling. Draw. Okay. This is second rod. I've got two Charmander in the discard pile. Charmeleon here. Really, the last Charmander is in the deck. So, like, it doesn't matter. I can just put Charmander mm -hmm. or Charizard to fire back in with my rod, and I'm going to do that. Because I should not need more than two Zards to close out this game. Mm -hmm. But I do want to increase the odds that I find my Zard off this supporter. And I think we go for the Vax Caliber, given the... If we do get the... Um, Iona. Iona. Or no, if we get the Prime Catcher or the Counter Catcher or whatever. Uh, I think it's Vax Caliber we take over the Bibro. Sure. Uh, let's make you build it again. Sure. Yeah. But... Because this, this is still... You know, I still have have plays with the Vax Caliber and, or yeah. with the with the if you take the Bidu, or Bibber right. but I don't have plays if you take the Vax Caliber. And if you can't build it, yeah. Okay, yeah. we'll go Charizard. Mm -hmm. Um, attach fire energy. I don't know. Holy moly. All right. Ultra Ball, Away Loss Vacuum, and a Fire Energy for Charizard. And I'll use Infernal Rain. My goodness. Oh, my gosh. How did I, how did I get all of these energy into my hand? Um, That's fine. We're going one here. One here. This is disastrous. Oh no! They're they're oh, in my hand, no, bro. That's they're really bad. Three, just into three, right? Like in, that's why you said it. I was like, wow. You're, yeah, I mean, this is a great turn. Yeah, but of course, when you draw into three energy, yeah, it's fine. I just have to. I have to get out another Charmander here, wow, right? Wow, 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 wow. That's crazy. Yeah, you do. You do. 
Should have really no... I mean, like, yeah, I could have, but then what if I whiffed the Zard? Right. And I just be like, yeah. <laughs> doing nothing. Yeah. I know. I know. That's really tough. Yeah. Doing I mean, and you can you can always build up. I mean, you're you're going for this other Charizard or this yeah. other Charmander, so you can if you evolve into that last Charizard, you know, yeah. after you super rod and get those energy back. We'll be alright. All right. Big trust. Here we go. Nestash. Sure. I prized a couple fire too, I think. Sure. Industrious incisors for sure. four. Mm-hmm. Buddy, buddy. <gasps> for the final Charmander. Mm -hmm. Goodness. I didn't want to attach the Squovit. There's a chance I could have found the Switch or the Prime Catcher. Mm -hmm. So, like, you don't, mm -hmm. you know, like, you don't go there unless. Yeah. That's a desperate situation. Right, right. Okay. Retreat. Sure. Combustion Blast for the knockout. Aye, aye. So it just feels to me like I need to take multi prize knockouts every time. Uh, like I have no choice other than to just take multi prize knockouts from here on out. So I'll draw. That helps, I think. Have an Irida. Um. So what I'm thinking about is the, like, potentially Iron Hands knockout here, but I can't get both. I can't get, I can't get both Prime Catcher and the Retrieval. So I could get Chen Pao. And a retrieval, but that doesn't do a whole lot. I could get, I mean, the retrieval is okay. All right, let me buddy, buddy Poffin. I could also try for a Greninja play and go, I could knock out Bibberol with the Iron Hands. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of struggling here with what to do. Because I really, there's like a very small window that I'm trying to fit everything into. Um, so I'll attach twice with the Super Cold. I'll use the Bibberol to draw three. the nest ball. At this point, that doesn't feel like it matters. Mm. Poke stop, I'll use it. Go Irida. Yeah, I mean, that's not it. Needed to hit one of those pieces. Um, I can go here. And I can go, I mean, it really just depends on your, like, gust plays, I guess. So I'm I, I, I'm going to do kind of a similar play where I'm forcing you to have Rare Candy Charizard to do anything. Okay. Right. So I'll take the Superior and the Baxcalibur. And I'll go Rare Candy here. And then I'll play Superior. Take back one. 
two, three, four. I will concealed. Attach for turn, and then the two with super cold. Play a super odd. Mm -hmm. I don't know. And then Greninja, the active, and whatever. doesn't matter okay. much. All right. That's what we got for one prize. Now, I actually am in a weird spot where I just don't have the Another resources. Attacker. I don't yeah. have the resources left to finish. Like, if you really? knock out Charizard EX, those are my last two energy in the deck. Right. So. You have a super odd down. You have two super odd down. I know. So that's it. Well, not necessarily. Okay, we're tied on prizes. And you've got how many cards in hand? Three. Okay. Send up. Wovitz. Hmm, that's bad. Because you've put me in a position where if I like gust up Bibrel, I mean, you really only need three energy and you win, right? Um, oh, what do you mean? I mean, if I gust up Bibrel and knock it out with an oh, Iono, sure. then you need sure. three energy on a Tempo. Well, well, and then but you it knock doesn't... out my Charizard, but yeah. then I cannot win. Right. Wow. Yeah, just because I'm out of resources. That, that feels so bad, but yeah. Brutal. I don't have the energy to finish. Mm. So I think that kind of hope for that regardless. Oh, Charizard. Sure. Drop. Sui and Heavy Ball. I think I have, no, I've got no energy prized. Yeah. There's only two left. Yikes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Poke stop. Kind of wanted to see if I found Prime Catcher there. Sure. It would have informed my decision. Sure. Uh, slightly. Oh, it also could have lost me in the game if I discarded Prime. <laughs> That's cool. All right, here we go. Charizard. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just living on the edge, you know. Yeah, well. Rare candy Zard. And I think I'm just saying I'm going to hit the Prime Catcher or the Switch. So we're going to go here. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. Right. What, what do you Prime Catcher here? I don't know. Uh, well, okay. I'm, my think? thought is the Chen Tao. I also think the Chen Because I have two in the discard. So I have to yeah, find, find rod. Uh, yeah. one of my, la uh, my last rod to uh to yeah. go grab that and ideally i'd like to play a counter stadium also so. yeah totally totally yep okay and then what's your hand size three three sure bench mm -hmm. jirachi and i think it's cur it's three yeah it's three because I took then I think it's not correct Iono. All right, I took a prize. Yeah, I'll ne I'll nest dash. Yeah, I'm not gonna Iono. Nest dash. And then industrious incisors for four. Yep. And Arvin. Mm -hmm. For Prime Catcher. Unfortunately, I was one card away from the stadium. Mm 
Prime catcher, the Chen Pao. Short. And Burning Darkness for Knockout. Draw for turn. <clears throat> Spear. Um, I'll do Attach for turn. Uh, super Cold. Super Cold. Super Cold. Liberal for four. Uh oh. I mean, this doesn't. Not actually. I should keep. Uh, what did I do? Poke stop needs to be in play. Um, because I need to use it. Poke stop. That'll do it. That will do it. So, let's go. Irida. We'll take Super Rod. And then I'll go back in. Let's go Super Rod. One, two. Like just that. I don't think there's anything really else that needs to be done. So let's go. Well, you're at one prize. So yeah, really just the one Chen Pao. And then I'll Ultra Ball. And grab the chin. Retreat. Shivery chill. Super cold those are onto the active. And you can hail blade for knockout. And then I can hail yeah. blade. One, and the two, problem is three, four, five, six, maybe. Yeah, and you take two. Take two. I go to one to one, but I don't have the resources left to close it out because I'm just down both my rods. But you could. so that's just a resource crunch. No, I've got literally nothing. Mm -hmm. But um, but this hand is like insane. I actually have, you know, code breakers, deciphering, and a switch. If there was a rod in my deck, all I need to do is stack rod, mm -hmm. stop into it, ultra ball, right? Um, and like I could. Right. Theoretically, do it. Switch into Radiant Zard and win. Yep. Right. Like yep. so. I know. You can you just, see it was yeah. it was that turn that you drew into all those energy. Uh, Ultra Ball won away that turn. Yeah. But like it it but still you, felt you like I was. lost an energy attachment off that. I you did. Only had two I the did. Deck. Yeah. 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 So like that's. Yeah. yeah. That's so I difference. I think that there's like, um. Yeah, I, I think that there's there's certainly and and I I don't main Zard. I don't play Zard all the time. So like I think that there's like especially not Beaverell Zard. I yeah. mean, my God, I I yeah I can't say that I play this deck quite often. So trying to figure out you know uh, the resource game with like the Beaverell Zard deck is 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 something that I'll just have to kind of like smooth out with further testing. And I think that that's kind of the point of us all being here. But yeah, I think that totally. You know, pointing out there like there were win conditions with the Charizard deck. This is supposed sure. I mean, it's supposed to be a totally horrendous matchup, but like there are things and you can definitely see that like if you're playing the Charizard deck flawlessly and the Chen Pao deck like fumbles at all, there are definitely lots of ways that you can kind of like exploit any sort of faltering happening on the Chen Pao side. There is counterplay to be made. And uh, you know, if you're if you're playing super heads up, like you could definitely make some you know make some magic happen there. I mean, we took it to a game three; it was we close. Yep. So, I think that uh, there's certainly a lot to take away from that. And I would love to break down all of our testing. What do you think? We're going to record tag team. We can do yeah, that. Yeah, sure. We could do that now. Yeah, I think we could do that okay. now. Yeah, so, sure. uh, we are going to record our tag team podcast rather than just sit here kind of rambling we're going to do it a little bit more uh a little bit more formal uh in the in the uh in the structure of the tag team podcast so we didn't record last night because we we're going to be together today decided that we were just going to record it today and we'll record it just like this in this two shot here and we'll uh and we'll banter back and forth about our testing, about the decks, and all of that. But before we get started with our tag team podcast, which will be about an hour, it'll be about we'll we'll discuss 
all of our stuff for about an hour. We are going to take a quick break. And then when we get back, we are going to do our tag team podcast live for you all. So hang tight. We will be right back after this. Thank you all so much for being here. We'll be right back. Thank you. 
All right, what is up, everybody? We are back, and we are going to be getting ready with the Tag Team Podcast here momentarily. Just got to check a couple of audio things, make sure our audios are balanced and that everything sounds good. So why don't you give me a little check, audio? Check. One, two, one, two. You're hello, hello, hello. Am I, I, oh, I'm not even plugged in. See, this is why we check these things. This is why. Yes, this is why we check. Very good. That's why. That's why, that's why we didn't see any. Oh, there we go. No. All right, check one, two. Check one, two. Okay. Chickity check. Excellence. And now I'm going to see if I can't get our hello, hello. Check, oh. check. One, two. Check, check, one, two, one, two. I think I'm getting you, but not me. Ah, yes, on the audacity. Okay, so let's see. Maybe. It does seem like they're coming through on the stream. Yes, they are. Uh, we're definitely both coming through on the stream. If we just record on OBS, yeah, yeah, can you fine. rip the I, audio? From no, that? I just take the. I just take the video. You can take the video. Put that. Just put the whole, I just take the whole thing. You can upload a video to podcasting platforms, and then they'll. Uh, yep. Brilliant. I know. Okay. I know. It's all the greatest right. thing of all time. Great. So. And they'll just deal with it, huh? Yeah. I mean, that's that's how Spotify does it. Yeah. So. Okay. Let's see. JW, you're a little hot. Check. Check. I'll bring you down or back down to reality. All right. Give me a little. One, two, one, two. Uh, the podcast on Spotify is video. That is true. Okay. Excellent. Cool, cool. It sounds like we're good to go. Okay. Okay. Are you all set, sir? Yeah, let's do it. Oh, I haven't started recording yet. I'm asking if you're set. I was just doing this. Oh, <laughs> this is just your ready face. Yeah. Uh, before we get started, for those of you who are not already familiar J.W., Riley, and I do the Tag Team Podcast every Monday, usually now. Uh, the podcast has been going on for... Six years. That's a long-running <laughs> podcast. Yeah. yeah. The longest... Uh, cons I mean, over half a decade, that's pretty crazy, actually, like to think about. It is. It's, yeah, it's pretty wild. You guys have covered a lot of ground, and uh, really, I have to give you guys all the credit because it was J.W. and Riley for the longest time. Yeah. I really just you know joined recently and wait so when you upload the podcast to spotify you can see my face yeah there's video on there yeah dude <laughs> what <laughs> you didn't know that no why would you make an overlay huh <laughs> that's fascinating <laughs> Bro made an thought, overlay for this, and then like. Well, I thought you yeah, were uploading for, the video to YouTube. Well, yeah, I. That's I why I made the make. overlay. Yeah, but then what would they see on YouTube? Oh, you're just you're just fascinated that they see your face on Spotify. a podcasting platform on Spotify. Yeah, they yeah. do. They do. I just didn't know that that was a thing at all. Yeah. Yeah. Well. yeah, yeah. Anyways, all right. Welcome back to Tag Team, the Pokemon Trading Card Games premier podcasting trio. My name is JW Crewall. Here with me, Andrew Mahone, and we're here to test, uh, talk about some of the testing that we had done with the post rotation. We teased it last week about all the stuff that we were testing and trying out, and the new decks, and new archetypes, and actually a lot of old decks and old archetypes that we have been playing. But uh, before we get into that, Andrew, how are you today? I'm doing fantastic. This is a very special episode for those of you that can see us. We are broadcasting from Tricky Jim Studios, and this is the very first time that we've ever had a tag team podcast that we're streaming live on Tricky Jim from Tricky Jim Studios, and this is uh, the second time in a couple of weeks that you've been able to make the trip over from Columbus yeah. to join me on stream for some tabletop Well, testing. don't get too big of a head because I am double dipping a little bit. I'm seeing um, our tax guy. AJ. Tomorrow. Yeah. For, uh, for a little bit of, uh, you know, filing. Yes, 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 yes. So it's not just for you. I just want to make that 100% okay. clear. You're here on business. Yeah, I'm standing on business for sure. Uh, okay, okay. You're here for business. Yeah. I, I was texting AJ. Hopefully he gets back to me. I know. I was trying to get in with him for some taxes tomorrow as well. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. You want to just go? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We maybe could we'll, test. Maybe man. I'll show up. Yeah. <laughs> you should. You should. Yeah. Just come on over. I'm going to, his, going to his home. AJ is a tax wizard. He yes. is quite good. I know. It's fantastic. Especially when your taxes are as messy as JW and I's. Yeah, well, I mean, for the <laughs> longest time, it was like, uh, for me, it was all these different gigs and stuff. I was playing with four or five different orchestras and having to compile all that tax information. And then obviously, there's different Pokemon revenues that come in. And yeah, this year is 
going to be just as bad. Uh huh. And trying to take off things from like you know you can count certain trips as business expenses, oh, yeah. and that's really annoying to sort through. But for me, it's the internet money. Yes, <laughs> and all the different places that it comes from. It is very complicated and uh, needs a lot. But I can write everything off, which is fantastic. Every Pokemon card that I purchase is a tax write-off. And that's why he purchases so many. Every single one. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, in, in the beginning, AJ was like, you know, you're going to have to turn a profit one year, Andrew. And I'm like, well... <laughs> It's coming. Yeah, we'll get we'll get there. It's coming. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll get there, AJ. Don't you worry about it. Yeah, are you sure this is a personal business or is this a hobby? <laughs> well, don't they give you like three or five years or something? They do. Right? They do. That's yeah. why he was encouraging me. He's like, all right, like, eventually yeah. this is going to have to start looking profitable on paper, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> I can no. just imagine him saying that too. Yeah, That's yeah, really yeah. Funny. No, and it has, and it has. But for like, you know, has I it? mean, anytime you're, uh, anytime you're starting a business, I yeah. mean, you're gonna have, you're, you're spending gonna more than you're costs. making, right? Yeah, right. I mean, every, all these cameras, everything. I mean, things were really pricey in our first few years. And most started, businesses so. go out of, go out of business. That's true, right? Isn't that like what fifty percent of restaurants go out of business in the first year? Oh heck yeah! So yeah, I can't imagine what it is for Pokemon TCG streamers. Yeah, it's probably you know. Shaky ground we're standing on. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, we've got a very fun episode ahead for you all. Uh, with some information that's very fresh in our minds, we just got some uh, time to test the post-rotation temporal forces format. Uh, we're going to be doing more testing tonight. Our mm -hmm. testing partner, Jesse Parker, is going to be joining us for some more reps in the post-rotation format as, he's, as he is going to be going to the European International Championships along with me. Uh, Riley's going to be going too, but he's been a little under the weather lately, so wasn't able to join us this week. And Michael Zeely will be going. So we've got a good representation of the crew going to the European International Championships. And really the goal of this episode is to break down what are our thoughts, where does the format lay, and how similar are our experiences to what we've seen already from Japan. Yeah, absolutely. So I think um, right off the bat, I just want to give kind of a groundwork for what the next format is going to look like. A lot of the same, mm. right? There we have the Chen Pao's, we have the Giratina's, we have the, um, you know, the Lugia's, the Charizard's of the world. A lot of the decks that were good, thankfully for you, remain good mm -hmm. in the next format. They maybe lose some pieces, Path of the Peak, it's a big loss for certain decks. And uh, uh, But the new new cards don't make too much of an impact, and I think that's what we're seeing as we keep testing these new archetypes. Yeah, um, certainly. I mean, a lot of older decks get a lot stronger with A-Specs, and I think mm -hmm. A-Specs are going to be the big story out of... Uh, out of temporal forces and how they impact some of the decks that you are already familiar with, you know, prime catcher, the maximum belt, the hero's cape, and seeing how all of these cards interact together. And then, uh, the elephant in the room, or I guess the Snorlax in the room mm -hmm. is Snorlax, Snorlax control. Airy, uh, in our testing so far has proven to be a very uh, disruptive force in the upcoming metagame and kind of trying to predict at an international championship, at these first big tournaments, are top players going to be sending that that control deck anticipating to catch people slipping? Yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. I, I think you should 100% be prepared for stall if you go to uh to europe i think it's in the best position that it's ever been airy seems like such an unfair card just generally speaking now your uh you know your discard pile isn't safe your your deck isn't safe your hand isn't safe there's so many aspects of uh of what you're trying to do on your side of the board that can be disrupted by stall so yeah it's in as good a position as it's ever been this variant of stall is by and large easier than other variants of stall that we've seen in past years, uh, just over the course of the game, I think this is one of the you know most straightforward stall decks, Snorlax being the key piece of that, where you can basically just win if your opponent has the wrong card in the active, uh, just given the amount of switch cards that, that most decks are playing right now. So that to me is, is just a very like big indicator that a lot of players will pick it up, even players that maybe aren't as experienced with these sorts of alternate strategies, I think they'll gravitate towards it as well. Right. And I and like I'm not someone who usually plays control or stall decks, but there is certainly an appeal to being able to run your opponent out of resources and and kind of getting to 
play a different game. And I think that that's really the lure of a lot of control decks or for control players is that you're not just playing a prize race. And, you know, you can certainly gain an edge if you're just playing a different game than your opponent is. And, and certainly mentally, you can say like, okay, well, you know, I've got all six prizes to formulate the lock. And then once I get the lock, then we win. Mm -hmm. and, right. and, and it does a lot, uh, you know, it does a lot for your confidence. It can do a lot for your confidence. Just saying like, I don't even have to participate in the prize race that my opponent's trying to participate in. Totally. Um, I am, I am playing a different game entirely and one that they may not be prepared for. Yeah, yeah. that's so true. That's so true. So how much, uh, testing have you put into stall so far, Andrew? Into stall? Yeah. Let's see. Uh, an entire evening. So ten One games, evening. yeah, 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 Such. like yeah, like uh, probably about yeah eight to ten games. Yeah, okay, yeah. So for me, it's about twenty games, and yeah, it's just really, um, you know, combined with how Stahl is doing in this format, you're really not losing much. You're actually gaining. Again, I think one of the better card, like it's certainly in like the top half of cards ever printed. Airy, um, you get that as an option, and so. I, I'm yeah really stoked for its position and I'm excited to <laughs> say I'm excited to play it tonight. Um, but I am. Yeah, Are I'm, you? I'm, I'm, I'm kind of excited. Yeah, I want that deck in my hands for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Now, kind of looking at some of the top lists from the Fukuoka <laughs> Champions League, it looks like we've got you know a lot of your same players. You've got four Snorlax, mm -hmm. a Rotom, a Pidgeot. T U E X is interesting. We no longer have the Crabominable V. I think that card rotated, right? Mm -hmm. But T U E X can also attack in a pinch, uh, if I guess sure. if you wanted to, it could flame surge. And I see this top placing list from the Fukuoka Champions League. Three copies of Airy. It's gross, dude. Three really copies gross. of Airy. I mean that that's a lot. That is a lot of hand disruption. Yep. And this other list, um, I think an interesting card that we might see uh, pop into some list, but maybe not all, is this Mantine, right? Obviously, mm -hmm. we lose the Echoing Horn. Echoing Horn, which can bring threats up, from, or not threats, but bring, you know, kind of bum Pokemon up from mm -hmm. the discard pile into play. Without Echoing Horn, there aren't uh, as many, there's no item or trainer-based options to bring a Pokemon from the discard pile. So you have to resort to a Pokemon-based option, but right. Mantine can provide that disruptive effect with its Born Ashore attack. Place a basic Pokemon from either player's discard pile onto that player's bench. Obviously, yeah. in a stall deck, you're going to be choosing your your opponents there. Yeah, quite gross. I mean, th these are yeah some of the fringe cards uh, here. The the Mantine, the the Chiyu, not necessary. Certainly, Chiyu can accelerate how quickly you're going through the opponent's deck. But then you just look at the core pieces, the counter catcher, the um, you know maybe even a, a counter stadium that you play. Maybe a Temple Sinnoh could be really good um, to counter things like Giratina, counter things like Lugia, maybe even Arceus that would play a Jet Energy or four um yeah so i mean we look at stall as just having a lot of the pieces you have tm devo at your at your disposal you have the airy you have erica's invitation there's just a lot of pieces that uh work really well together and the rotom v i mean you have inbuilt draw like on the board uh without path to the peak so yeah a lot of things working in stall's favor so if if we want to take this conversation one step further we talk about what is good against stall and i think we look at decks that uh can repeatedly get back into the active spot uh decks that play jet energy i would i would you know think of as being <clears throat> particularly strong against also these are the giratinas the lugias and the arceus decks and we saw that in japan at least from those top 16 placements there there were three stall the top 16 of their big tournament a couple weeks ago but there were also you know lugia wins arceus was up there giratina was up there all these decks that have these answers to stall and they themselves also played airy so that they could discard <laughs> stalls counter catchers <laughs> to make it even a little bit better so it is kind of funny how that format all worked out and i, yeah. I would expect something similar uh heading into euic we are absolutely going to see echoes of of the results from fukuoka in euic i mean just 100 percent. it's one thing to like to read and a lot of people don't read i mean but it's one thing <laughs> I mean, a lot of people don't. Uh, it's one thing to read the results on a page, but to experience them is something different entirely. Yeah. And some things don't really set in stone. And I know that something that Jesse's been doing 
really well is and and he's really been dedicating a lot of time and thought to which is not something that necessarily every single player is doing but uh jesse's been going through like each of the top lists from Compiling. fukuoka and 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 saying why are they playing these well, cards? sure right and mm-hmm. saying why why are they playing these cards right why the because sometimes you'll look at a list and be like what's what is this doing like, in that's there? horrible that's why horrible is, yeah, why, why is that, that you know but actually kind of digging deeper and saying like okay well what was the function right let's, let's assume that the, these players and these lists are good and capable for getting to the top cut of a multiple thousand player event yep. right obviously yep. uh why are these select cards being there and you know it starts to make sense with control being so gnarly, once you actually get your hands on the decks and you realize that control is this kind of foul beast that can just uh, absolutely decimate unprepared decks, you start to see why the Arceus and the Lugia and the Garatina decks started to uh, make their way to the top. And being able to play cards like Aerie in your Arceus deck to have that counterplay against control decks is such a funny but also... You know, very smart thing. You very can reasonable. star birth. You totally. can star birth for the airy. Totally, right? totally. Like and, on a key turn, right? And then I imagine that that was a play that many players tried to make, right? Yeah. Um, and and probably did so successfully. So yeah, it is really, really interesting this counterplay uh, between some of these top decks that you're seeing in response to stall. I think that airy comment that you made was a really good point. Jet energy, I would expect to see maybe even in like Charizard builds. That's not yeah. anything foreign. We've certainly seen that before. So there's a lot of different things that you can do to try to give yourself an advantage. One other card that we've uh, kind of brought up is is Gang. Gengar, uh, brought that up in the past as being yep. a potential option, especially for a deck that already plays a rare candy. There's a Gengar from uh, Paldean Fates yep. that has an ability that you can switch up any Pokemon on your bench to the active once per turn. So, again, very good into the stall deck because you can get your attacker that they've presumably countercatchered up something else to the active, get that back uh, attacking ASAP. Uh, that seems very good. You think about stall's counterplay to that as being playing a TM Devo. TM Devo. I'm just really messing with that strategy. So, jeez, it's like But really that what rough. a what a fun game ahead though. I mean, it obviously the kind of lure and excitement of getting to play with new Pokémon EX or whatever, it, it, that's a little bit disappointing. There's not as many of like the hyper powerful cards that we've seen in sets past. There is yeah. no equivalent of Lugia V-Star in the set. Right. There is no equivalent of Charizard EX in this set. Um but I think that the Temporal Forces set does a lot for the development of the game. And I've been kind of making this, this point and this case that the game designers do need to dial back the power level of the cards that they're making. Yep. Uh, I've been making this case since the Sword and Shield block. I mean, just straight up. Since VMAX is and V-Stars, I was like, this is it's, it's way we've out of hand. We've reached right? a bloat. Yes, we've reached a bloat, and they're going to need to trim it down, trim it down, trim it down. And I think the Temporal Forces, you're, you're seeing some of that, right? In the last few sets, they've really only introduced cards of of like a certain power level, and they've been very key not to go over them. I think Charizard's one of the standouts. Uh, and then I even said this, like Gardevoir, they released Gardevoir, and this was kind of genius, right? They released Gardevoir in the first Scarlet and Violet set, right. and then let it fade with rotation right right and naturally. they were said naturally yeah. fade w- with losing some of the combo pieces that it relied so heavily on so like gardevoir was a very powerful card but was reliant on some of its partners and now it's like they got away with printing a new exciting card but not printing a just silly powerful right new powerful card right so they got to they got to like generate excitement and hype with gardevoir the new pokemon ex mechanic without just completely blowing things wide open like they did with Pokemon VMAX yeah. and Pokemon V-Star yeah. and things like that. So the power level of the cards is reigning in a little bit. But with that, you do have, uh, you know, less exciting. We're just, in a, we're just in a weird spot, right? Because yeah. you look at um, some of these EX cards, especially the basics, um, that they seem to be pushing now, mm-hmm. right? The future archetype and the ancient archetype i say pushing but i I mean in terms of they're pushing them through their set blocks of like these are Mm -hmm. you know decks you can build these are the archetypes that are within this block Um, but they don't really compare to the v stars in my opinion Um, they're largely weaker uh, largely are more energy hungry Um, I, i find them to be generally just worse but then you look again as you're saying like future facing 
they all work really nicely together. And, and as a format, as we rotate these V-Stars, probably make for a really fun format because they've likely all been tested together against, against each other. I mean, look at all these decks that we have built right here. Uh, just for a moment, we've got Palkia V-Star is hiding right here behind, <laughs> behind yeah, Gold yeah. to Go. Yeah, right? Right, right. Here, here's a V-Star. Here's a V-Star. We've got... Uh, Here's a V-Star. Yeah. It's hiding behind Chinchino. Right. That's a V-Star, right. right? So the V-Stars are still... And there's Arceus. We don't have Arceus built, but Arceus is a top contender in this format. So all of the all of the best V-Stars from the end of the Sword and Shield block, are Arceus, viable. Palkia, yeah. Giratina, and Lugia are all still major players in yeah. the metagame. Totally. Right? Totally. All of them. Totally. And they have not faded one bit from uh from, from the spotlight yeah, or the relevance, relevance or yeah. relevance right yeah. so it's going to take a lot for i mean it's going to take rotation i think for those cards to leave much like mu v max before it and and i think that that's fine it's going to take some time but the game will heal and get better because of it and, you know i'm not upset that the game designers kind of took those directions with their cards and and tried new you know powerful things it's just like i'm happy to see them dialing it back yeah. uh so while some players might be disappointed the whole point of this is to say that while some players might be disappointed that temporal forces the new poster pokemon from temporal forces aren't beating it up like some of the old big powerful pokemon v stars you don't actually want that and here's why right you right. know is kind of the case that i'm making you actually you want to see this dial back in power level because when we do get a dial back in power level, that means that in the next handful of years, more decks are going to be viable, not less. Yeah. So then, you yeah, know. Yeah, or, or, yeah, certainly, certainly. There, or there's more some... decks will be able to attain the kind of the power level of the format sure. than previously, which is like, okay, there's the <laughs> there's this level, which not a lot of their Pokemon can reach. Yeah, sure. Well, it is, it is interesting, though, because there are probably about 10 decks, and this is what I've been telling players uh, that have been, um, you know, testing in this format. It's like, to be honest, dude, there's about 10 decks that I could imagine at a UIC, you know, certainly making top eight, winning the whole tournament, yeah. And it's it's very reasonable, like with given the right metagame, uh, given the right preparation in terms of list, like there's a lot of viable archetypes. It's really hard on the one hand to counter and metagame for what you might expect to see because there are so many good archetypes. Um, but there's something also to be said for choosing one and then just like maining that. Yeah. And and really becoming knowledgeable about all the intricacies of how you play different matchups and then maybe even adapting your deck in unconventional ways. We brought up the airy in the Arceus decks. That that's only something you figure out after you play enough games against Stall or against, you know, Charizard, right? You could airy away the rare candies in, in those matchups or some you know, there you only get that knowledge by just like taking that deck and really um, identifying some of the weaknesses that uh, you know that are in other decks. And I feel like that's something that I've been kind of missing with myself lately. I mean, I know that I'm a player who benefits from repetition and really learning a deck and mm -hmm. and and having that. I, and I definitely in in the year past I had that with Mew, but then I moved on to Maridon and then I kind of fell out of favor with Maridon and now, and since then I've been uh, kind of just looking for the next thing to to grasp onto. But you certainly yeah. have these players who are very successful and have kind of just stayed true to their deck and have reaped the benefits of that. I mean, look at yeah. Jared Grimes has earned an entire invite with Chen Pao Look EX. at Tord. Tord. You know, right? that's another big one with Guardi, right? Yep. Just playing that forever. Or uh, or or James with Guardi, right? Yeah, or James with Guardi. Yeah, James or, Cox. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Vince Kelly with Mew. I mean, there's, yeah, there's a lot Vince of examples. Vince Kelly with Mew. Yep. Yep. There's a lot of examples of players who are kind of just like really dialing into the decks that they like to play. Like if you asked me, what's Makani Tron going to play post-rotation? It's Arceus time, baby. Yeah, you know, I mean, like he's the Arceus guy. Like you're telling me he's not gonna, he's not gonna show up and and play Guardi. Like of course, or show up and play Arceus. Of course, he's gonna show up and play Arceus, and he's gonna have probably the gnarliest Arceus brew with all the different cards that are there just for the right reasons, right? Yeah, right. And uh, and there's something to be said for that. It really does feel like it's a format where you can, and I've been saying this for a little while. You can play your favorite deck, play your favorite of the best ones. Pick your favorite and just, just learn it really well. Play it perfectly. Yeah, and play it perfectly. Yeah. That's going to set you up for the best amount of success. Yeah, certainly. And I certainly. think even in our games today, uh, we felt a little bit of that. It felt like even in a bad matchup like Charizard versus Chen Pao, 
there's room for counterplay. Yeah. And if you tweak like a card or two here or there, and if you make like the really correct decision on, you know, turn two, turn three about what you're promoting, what you're setting up your board to be like when you're using your rods and things like that, you can, you know, increase the percentages so that you're going to win. Yep. And, totally. and over the course of a tournament, you can, you can steal some wins that you maybe otherwise wouldn't have had. Yeah. So I think that's, that's a good point. I think that's a good pivot into, um, kind of a matchup by matchup, like what we've actually tested yeah. and what we see as being, uh, you know, the format moving forward. Now, I personally think, again, the big three for me seem to be uh, Giratina as just the overall kind of solid deck, right? If you're not looking to lose to anything, but you're not looking to like, um, you know, you're, you're looking to give yourself the most 50-50 matchups. It seems like Giratina is there, always has uh, has really good options with all the one prizes that you have while still maintaining that one-shot option with the Giratina. And then you have your best uh, deck that attacking two prize deck. I think of that as being Chen Pao. That deck to me has really stood out. I, I've played it for, you know, in the post-rotation format for now, about the last month just testing by myself, testing with Jesse, or playing um, against anyone that I coach. Um, and so Chen Pao feels like the best two-prize attacking deck. And then you have Stall, which kind of rounds it out, which is going to beat your Chen Pao, but lose to your Giratina, and you know has, again, r roughly uh, uh, solid matchups in, in the metagame as a whole. So that, to me, feels like the core three for this metagame moving into EUIC, I would expect those to be like three of the top five. I sprinkle in some Charizard, uh, maybe some, you know, Future Box or something. I don't know what random deck people will pick up for EUIC, but I'm curious your thoughts, Andrew. Like, what is standing out to you from this format as you've been testing? Yeah. Uh, I like, I, I immediately, my first thoughts of the format are that I, 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 without Path to the Peak Gone, I wanted to play a one hit KO deck. You know, I wanted to play your, your Golden Goes or your, or your Chen Pao's. And after getting my hands on with Golden Go and Chen Pao, each deck has its own strengths and weaknesses. I think it's worth noting that neither deck finished in the top 16 of the Fukuoka Champions League. So part of our testing has been figuring out why. Uh, like, why were these decks not represented? I mean, it's not because they weren't popular. These decks were popular in Japan. But why did they not convert into the top 16 of the Fukuoka Champions League? And uh, so I, wa I, I was curious. And I think that of the two, Golden Go and Chen Pao, I like Golden Go more. And that's kind of just my personal biases. But I think Chen Pao's better. So, like, I agree. Chen Pao's better. And the, and the difference maker is that Chen Pao can play the single prize game where Golden Go cannot. Totally. And Chen Pao can play the Iron Hands game where Golden Go cannot. Yep. And Golden Go does have other strengths that Chen Pao does not. I mean, you could build a solid board state with a bunch of 260 hit point Pokemon, which are just kind of annoying to deal with. You have each of your dudes has built in draw power, and you can just end up with a very large hand, which is something that Chen Pao can never do, really. I mean, it never really has a hand that's this big. Radiant Greninja, maybe, but usually it's much smaller. Uh, you know, a Golden Go hand can end up with a much larger hand size. So, I and Golden Go plays into the new uh, what, Cypher Maniacs code breaking. Mm -hmm. Kind of plays sure. into that card perfectly in that sure. your main attacker draws two cards. But uh, I, I, th I do think that, you know, after playing both decks, I think that I have to concede that I think Chen Pao backs Calibur is a little bit better. And that there are a few things that I feel like really help the deck, namely Avery being gone is just such a huge boost. I mean, it's like a little thing, but it makes a huge difference. Now yeah. that you can safely set up, I can point. get two Bieberel, I can get two uh, backs Calibur yeah, going. Yeah, not really think about it. And I don't have yeah. to worry about Avery Prime Catcher. Or yeah, sure. Avery Countercatcher, yep. which are the kinds of things that are going to be happening all the time. It used to be much easier to pick apart a Bax Calibers board than it is nowadays yep. without that uh, without that Avery. So I do agree. I think Chen Pao is very strong, but I I like the decks that I I really think highly of. I think Control is kind of like enemy number one. Uh, I would mm -hmm. say that that's like. I, I consider it to be the best deck in the format um, sure. and the deck that needs to be respected the most, something that we haven't really 
touched on is the fact that like yeah your tina decks um can can counter control control decks with jet energy but control yeah. decks are playing four uh temple of Sinnoh. some yeah uh, yeah three, three to four, to four right. three yeah. to four temple of Sinnoh. Sure. like that's not even the jet's not like an auto in they're already the control decks are adapting and really the fukuoka results now are are months or weeks old so the control the control players now that was in like a, almost a blind meta game. Right now, the control players have a def more defined. They're like, okay, here are the results. We need to beat that, and now they can take sure. that information sure. and make sure that their decks are constructed specifically. So that's scary to me. That's really scary. Is that they have they have those top lists? So if you're playing one of those top lists as is, the yeah. control players are already there well, and, and, and aiming to beat it. And the counterplay there is that without path in the format, generally decks don't need to play a lot of stadiums, except yeah. for. Control, right? Because like right. Control has the space to play those four stadiums that they so choose for Temple of Sinnoh. Um, but a lot of decks just generally wouldn't want to play stadiums in a format without path. Like those clunk up in your hand, those clunk up in your deck. It's not really something that you necessarily need um, in any given game. And so, you know, we saw four copies of stadium in the prior format because we had path and there were certain decks like a Chen Pao that would really like to not be path every single turn. Uh, you had decks like, of course, Lugia that doesn't want to be path every single turn. Uh, but now looking into this new format, what's the big, what's the big, uh, what's the big stadium that you want to counter? I mean, for generally speaking, nothing unless you're playing against all and they have the Temple of Sinnoh. Yeah. And I think, I do, I, I still think very highly of Charizard. I think that Charizard will occupy um, a similar space, if not a, a, a more prevalent space than what it did in the previous format. And if you take a look at the uh, the city leagues from around Japan, Charizard is the winningest deck. Uh, when you combine all the different variants, I mean, you've yeah, got Charizard yeah. Bibrail, you got Charizard Pidgeot. Uh, Charizard is still the winningest deck uh, from Japan. And I think that it can be outfitted to defeat whatever the top threats are. And uh, as a Charizard deck, you have a lot of room to play with. You really do. I mean, your attacker is is, is just Charizard. It accelerates to itself. Sure. Um, you can outfit the Charizard deck with whatever support you want mm -hmm. and whatever techs you want. And there is enough space to accommodate for that, especially, you know, getting cards like Prime Catcher, just so good, giving you, like, a Switch and a Gust in one. I mean, really, Charizard wants to play, like, one Switch. Now right. you don't even really have to. You just right. can play the Prime Catcher, which is also a Gust. So, like, that's a nice space saver uh, in, your, in your deck construction. And I think that Charizard will continue to be a dominant force in the metagame. I actually put Charizard well over Giratina in my own personal. Man, which that's, is something uh, where that's we so differ. interesting because, yeah, I really am not that excited about Charizard. I think it's I think it's a fine deck. I think it, yeah, should probably occupy a top five spot in terms of how played it is, but I don't view it as being... I got it in a top three spot. I don't view it as being a deck that can win a tournament. I, I mean, I don't think it'll, like, the bold prediction that I have would be it won't make top eight at EUIC. Really? Yeah. That is bold. That is bold. That so is bold. I'm, I'm going to be willing to eat my words later, mm -hmm. but I just don't view it as, um, you know, you look at, again, attacking decks. Chen Pao, I think, is way better. Stall is going to beat Charizard uh, most of the time, unless you're, like, heavily teching for it. And then in that case, you're a stage two deck that's, like, trying to tech for a matchup that's maybe only 5% of the field, and you may not even beat it then because they might play a counter to what you're trying to do. You know, we talk about the Gengar uh, and they play, you know, a TM Devo or something. You know, there are ways that they can get around it too, right? Um, and so I I don't know, man. I, I think there is um, a reason that Charizard would be played. I think it's a comfort pick for a lot of players and looking into maybe a blind format where players haven't really tested a lot. Sure, they might gravitate towards a Charizard deck, but I don't see it as being you know, better than Chen Pao in terms of attacking. I don't see it as having more advantages, uh, certainly like as a one prize attacking deck as like a deck like Giratina. Um, it doesn't have that obscene power level from the early game as a deck like Lugia even. I I just don't think that Charizard has a ton of advantages. And I think it's going to get eaten up by this, uh, by this you know, kind of metagame that I would predict in, uh, in EUIC. Well, you know what my favorite counter is, JW? Let's hear it. The counter to all that unruly body hair. Yes. That you can get from Manscaped products. Absolutely. Manscaped is the premier men's uh, grooming 
products uh, company. They have all the things that you need to keep everything uh, nice and trim down there. So, man, the lawnmower 5.0 is one that comes to mind that both Andrew, I, and Riley use on a weekly basis to make sure that our um, our our beard hair. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. No beard hair for us. But our uh, really, our... I, I use that trimmer specifically for my uh, for my underparts. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Uh-huh. I don't. Is... I don't. I don't go down. To <laughs> don't need. And, uh, don't need it. Uh... Got a separate. I got a separate routine <laughs> for my face. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Exactly. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Why don't you tell them, Andrew, where they can find their Manscaped products? You can go to manscaped.com and find all of Manscaped. Men's grooming products there. They've got some fantastic stuff to check out. I am personally privy to the nose trimmer, nose hair trimmer, and the lawn po- lawnmower 5.0. Those are ones that I use in my daily grooming routine. And uh, manscaped.com is where you're going to want to go to check those out. You can use code tag team at checkout to receive 20% off your order and free shipping. Yeah, pretty cool. Head on over to manscaped.com, 20% off, plus free shipping with code tag team at checkout. Thank you so much to Manscaped for sponsoring the cast. That's right. So, yeah, I mean, so where does that leave us then? Where does that leave us? I think that uh, I've named two of my top three decks. I think Charizard and um, Charizard and Stall, And then number three... I guess I'm going to have to agree that Chen Pao, I think, is there. Uh, I think that it has that one hit KO potential that I really like. It has the Iron Hands. I think it's the best Iron Hands deck in the, the best format. Iron Hands abuser. After playing, uh, after playing some with the Turbo Hands deck, which is kind of where like Maridon has ended up. It's funny because Maridon EX isn't in the Turbo Hands deck, but it feels like since it's playing Electric Generator, the Turbo, turbo Hands deck, and since it has hands in it, like that is kind of what the Maridon deck is. The spiritual successor. <laughs> to Maridon has kind of evolved into future Turbo Hands, right? Yeah. Um, which, you know, may not feel great for Maridon fans out there because it does kind of feel like that that good old trusty deck is gone. Uh, I'm not sure that Roaring Moon really survives without them you know in its in its old kind of uh status as like a big basic turbo yeah. big basic deck right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i don't i don't think roaring moon really kind of survives without its galarian moltres v i mean that that card just brought so much to it right yeah it sure did it sure did yeah i think uh you look at roaring moon sadly as a deck that i i don't really consider a top contender again could be wrong. Very open to being wrong. It's a new metagame. Uh, certainly, results from Japan uh, can tell you something, but they can't tell you everything. Right. And, uh, you know, we'll have to just have to see how things evolve from there. But I would agree, Roaring Moon seems like it, it loses a step uh, now that you can't really uh, focus it all on the research uh, type build. And you have to really play those Sadas to try to get energy in play. And uh, without the Moltres, it just makes things really tough for that deck. I think other decks that are really the one deck that surprised me today from our testing was Lugia. We played mm-hmm. Lugia against Giratina and that's just so difficult for Giratina to win because you have the missed energy, which prevents the Sableye and the, the V star attack, man. And the V guard attack, you can't even do two eighty to knock out a, a Lugia. When V-star. you have a board filled with like missed energies and a V guard on the right thing. And there's Snorlax. It can't be it's damaged, gross. but it's, it's <laughs> just disgusting. There was a, there was a time where you had four Pokemon in play and none of them could be either V starred or Sableye because they all had the energy, the right energy on them. And it was just disgusting. Absolutely yeah. horrific matchup in my opinion for Giratina. So that's something that I look at. How big do you think Lugia will be because for coming into today and we only played three games yeah. of Lugia, but I, I had played some more in my testing, but coming into today, I had just said Lugia is pretty weak. Um, I give it a lot of credit for being that deck that can handily beat Giratina. Um, at least again, from the three games that we played, you won two with your and Lugia I was deck playing and I sloppy. Won. You were playing sloppy. That first game was uh, pretty, oh yeah. Pretty funny, Imagine but. you put that in a capable Lugia player's <laughs> hands; they're chilling. Yeah. yeah, they are chilling. Yeah, uh-huh. for sure. But I mean, where do you where do you feel Lugia is right now? It's interesting because Lugia obviously won the Fukuoka Champions League. So yeah, I mean, like, why aren't we talking about it more? Why isn't Lugia a top three deck for either of us? And I do consider Lugia a top five deck. In fact, I think it's like fourth. Uh, I, I think it's like right there. 
And I know I kind of think a little more highly of Lugia than you do. And I had that testing session with Michael Zeely last week. And, I mean, he started off the night by playing Lugia and was just giving me the hands with it. I mean, I was playing Chen Pao. I was playing Golden Go. I was playing some of my favorite decks. And Lugia just kept setting up consistently. And I couldn't believe it. I was like, this is the third game in a row. You've got to turn two double Archeops. Right. Like, this is ridiculous. Right. <laughs> Act, like, actually, I'm like, okay, all right. Like, this, something's going on. You can on stop here. now. Yes, yeah, yeah. Please, a turn two double Archeops, three yeah. games in a row. But then, like, as the night went on, it was like, you know, maybe he only bricked, like, one out of six games or something. And I was like, okay, well, Luki is a scary deck. Like, if, yeah. if it gets set up, and I think that we were seeing that, if Lugia sets up quickly, it is one of the scariest decks in the format. Well, so, okay, I just, my, my question is, you know, and, and again, we, we talked early in the cast about how a lot of decks carry over mm -hmm. into the new format. So why is Lugia good now when it wasn't last format? Chinchino. Path. Yeah. Oh, okay. Chinchino okay. and the, Path. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so like, before... I mean, Lugia did fade, right? So if it fade, if it faded, why is it now getting a spark, right? Like, why is it coming back? In fact, it took a hit. It doesn't even have Professor Burnett anymore, uh, right? And uh, and and why is it making a comeback now? I mean, it gains a certain number of things. It, it gains mist energy, which is huge for that it. That is pretty right. Big. So mist energy is crazy. Mist energy prevents all effects of attacks done to the Pokemon it's attached to. So, I mean, that's no Star Requiem with Giratina V-Star. That's no Lost Mine with Sableye. And that's pretty huge. And then the fact that you've also got this, like, absolutely ridiculous one-hit KO potential with Chinchino means that Chinchino can threaten even Charizard EX. I mean, in one turn, you can power four energy onto it with two Archeops attached attach from hand, and that is five energy. Uh, 350. Take a big knockout. Yeah. We've also got a comment in chat here saying that, you know, Maridon's not 10 to 15% sure. of the metagame sure. anymore, sure. which is true. And yeah, if we think true. that if this Turbo Hands deck is really as bad as we kind of think it is. That's not good, dude. And I don't think it's very good. It's <laughs> not good. Then then are there any real lightning threats yeah. that, uh, that Lugia is even worrying about? Yeah. I think it's kind of this... It's just this kind of consistent deck that's not terribly difficult to play and can set up some really gnarly board states that just kind of play off the board. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's. I mean, that is a good point. I, I didn't really consider the Cinchino uh, all that much. And that kind of comes back to the testing that I had personally where I got these turn one hands where I'd have to prioritize, of course, getting out the Lugia and getting the Archaps into this card pile. And all of a sudden it felt like a couple turns went by and I wasn't really putting on any pressure with my one prizers because I couldn't find them because I couldn't get them down. I wasn't drawing into the nest balls. I wasn't drawing into the ultra balls and it just felt like a very lackluster deck when you're attacking with a Lugia. That's just not where you want to be because you're not one shotting things, especially if you attach a double turbo, you're not even one shotting the unevolved V's and it just got really hairy and really bad for me. And that's what I think that, I mean, I kind of had similar, and I had to check myself because I kind of had similar feelings about Lugia last format. I mean, b back when it was like a good, respected deck. I mean, like uh, the single strike version, right? I mean, and I say good, respected deck, and it always kind of had a stigma yeah. of being inconsistent sure. and kind of a pile. But there were some really good players who still, who good players who I respect, you know, and thought very highly of, who still continued to jam Lugia even through all of that and continue to do well with it. So you kind of have yeah. to look like, okay, well, what, what are they seeing that I'm not seeing? Like, and, and once you really kind of watch some good players play out of tough situations, just with some real heads up play, knowing the deck inside and out saying like, I know how to play a game without the optimal turn one hand. So long as I can get into the mix, I know all of the routes and I know how to mount a comeback. Like, there's something to be said for that. I think, like, uh, Lugia V-Star arguably has the strongest V-Star power in the game mm -hmm. combined with Archeops. Sure. Sure. Uh, the board state of double Archeops is one of the strongest. It's crazy. One of the strongest turn two board states that you Ever. can produce. Ever. Ever. Of all time. Of all time. Yeah. Right? Of all time. So, like, that might not be a board state that you're able to concoct turn two every game. But if you can get it by turn three... 
That's fine. That's, that's fine. fine. Especially, yeah, especially now with the one prizers. That's that's really interesting. I would like to run Lugia a little bit more, but again, like from what we've played today, I'm more open to it than I would have been, um, yeah. you know, a couple weeks ago. Where it's just like I was really struggling. Uh, I don't feel that the the POW matchup is particularly good. And again, I I'm really like high on Chen POW. So that might be just personal bias where. Lugia into the field is very good, maybe doesn't have the best Chen Pao matchup. And so, you know, I'm looking at it through this lens of like, you know, Giratina, Chen Pao, Stahl as being the big archetype. So you got to have answers to that. And I just felt Lugia was really nowhere close to having answers to what Chen Pao could do, considering you can iron hands relatively easy. You're trading a lot better than them uh, for the most part. So that's, yeah, that's kind of where I was at. So let's talk archetype. about, and I feel like we've, I've, so my top three decks, and I, and I think like kind of my top, Let's, let's break it down to top five. I mean, I think, like, my top deck is Stahl. I think mm -hmm. then I have Charizard and Charizard. And you know what? I'll put Lugia there. Well, I'll say, I'll say, I think I got Snorlax. I got Charizard. I got Lugia. It won Fukuoka. There's something going on there. It's got a good Stahl matchup, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and then Chen Pao um, and five, I would put, I mean, like Arceus, you know, yeah. something like that would round out my top five. And maybe a couple of those get juggled around. But I think that those five are the five decks that I would want to have in my top five. Um, and I think like right below you got like your your Lost Box variants, I think, are all kind of hovering, you know, hovering around like right outside of there. But I don't necessarily like Lost Box isn't isn't a deck that is is it, it seemed fine to me, but it hasn't like made me be like, wow, that's the I deck. think Lost Box is pretty good. Yeah, I think Lost Box. It is seems top, fine. To I me. think it's a top five deck. Yeah, I mean Paradox Lost Box. I think is the you know most accepted Lost Box variant at this point, point. Um, and so that that feels very real. You know, being able to get a uh, a hands play, being able to get a Roaring Moon play, and just one shot anything on the opponent's side of the field. I mean, these are very strong combos that you can piece together with that Lost Box deck, and I think that that is very real. So that's certainly in in my top five, probably mm -hmm. at the fifth spot. Um, I would go probably five. Lost Box general um, favoring Paradox based uh, Lost Box, and then Arceus at four. Then you have your Giratina stall at two, and again Chen Pao I think just has so many good answers to a lot of the best decks aside from stall. So then I think the next thing to talk about, and it's like both of our top fives have a lot of a lot of old decks mm -hmm. revamped with That's new true. ideas. So let's talk about, and I think there are. I mean, we were saying I think there are like ten decks that yeah. could reasonably win yeah. and i think that the metagame isn't a point where you know there are some outlier decks that could spike and really show up so let's let's take some time to talk about those uh first and foremost we haven't spent any time talking about the ancient dino box yeah. kind of archetype you've gotten your hands on a little bit you've played a little bit i've played it a little bit what are your thoughts on the dino box what's good about it what's bad yeah, about it it occupy i think it's actually the best one prize deck so it just seems very metagame specific if you're facing a lot of lost box decks if you're facing a lot of um one prize focused archetypes then that's where the deck can really succeed or um actually chen pao it actually does have a pretty solid chen pao matchup considering how much HP these one prize attackers have. But you look beyond that, there's not a lot to love. There's a lot of other decks that can go with one prizers and kind of match there, or they just have too much HP. They are not able to one-shot yourself because you're trying to build up for that big um, Roaring Moon towards the end of the game to knock out the V-Stars. But you look at a lot of those V-Stars having 280. You have to sequence everything just right and be a little bit lucky to get, uh, what, 22 cards in a loss or in the discard pile to take the one shot. So that to me is where it occupies. It's the best one prize deck, but considering a lot of the other decks on the table are all two prize or V star focused, mm -hmm. doesn't really do so well into those, those style of decks with those, you know, more HP. For me, it, it, it it's, I kind of conceptually like where it's headed and what it's trying to do. Like, I like the idea of it. Mm -hmm. I really like a single prize deck. I like a single prize deck that can take big one hit KOs. I've compared it to Reggie's in that it kind of yeah. feels like Reggie's in some ways, um, in that it's got these beefy single prizers that do a medium amount of damage and hit a select couple things for weakness, right? So, like, that's 
that it, and has it's like not... the ability to take one hit KO sometimes. Yeah. Right. Uh, right. right. So that's like a, almost exactly what you're dealing with, right? Yeah. Uh, but that it also is like Reggie's in that it feels kind of you know uh, temperamental at times and can just get into some really awkward positions where it feels like you can't do anything. I think for me, my biggest beef with the Dino Box deck, and this extends to a lot of the the ancient cards, is that I don't like Sada's Vitality as Horrible an engine. Draw. I don't yeah, like it. It's terrible. I do not like it. Because you need it to attack, and then you also need it for the draw effect. Right? Like It's like a two-piecer, where if you miss it early... You're not only not drawing cards, you're not attacking. Like it just it's compounds on itself to the point that if you're not finding it on those turns that you need it, especially in that early game, you're not really putting on any pressure, which is what you need to be doing with that style of deck because you need to take that advantage of, okay, I'm going to smack you early and often. I may have weaker attacks. I may have less HP overall, but I'm at least going to put on consistent pressure. And if you don't find Sada early, you're dead in the water. Yeah. And I think that... Think about the formats past where we had the the closest point of comparison are like the welder formats, mm -hmm. right? I mean, where like you had these decks that just played for welder. Those formats had Jirachi from Team Up. Those formats had Dedenne GX. I mean, you had this explosive draw to go find, like forcibly find your welders. Yes. Almost, it felt like. Whereas, well, and from the hand is much different because you also had uh, the what stadium, uh, not He Factory, but um, yeah, the Giant Hearth, Giant Hearth, right? Yeah. And you just pull it to hand. So there's another piece involved mm -hmm. where you got to get those energy to the discard pile, and that can be difficult in and of itself, right? Because if you just opened, you know, welder to fire, like there we go, yeah. yeah. But it, uh, it, it just it feels different, and it feels complex. I mean, Melanie Dex did see success. Obviously, it accelerates one energy from the discard pile to a Pokemon V and draws three cards. Sada should just be better. Yeah, and 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 no. I think that Melanie saw a lot of success, not as like a four of nothing else kind of, you know, supporter. No. It saw success as like, oh, here's a couple. Use it in your Arceus deck to help get an extra attachment. Use it with Drizzile and Intellion to go search it on the turn you need it for your Palkia deck or, right. or whatever. Um, but these Sada decks are incredibly different. I mean, they are just kind of like, ah, well, I just, you know, I have the Sada. That's my draw card and my acceleration, and I better have it when I need it. And then the Dino Box deck is, pl is playing Sada and the Explorer's Guidance, which also does not impress me at all. It's, As a yeah. supporter card, you know, look at the top six, keep I two. Like, I know Hapu, Hapu was not good. Hapu I mean, saw was, zero play. No, that's not true. That's not true. It was like sometimes a one so of. So marginal. So it was like sometimes a one of in like Malamar decks, right? Very specific. They wanted energy in the discard pile. Sure. There's arguments to play, um, you know, Hapu or, or Explorer's Discovery. But having that, relying on an effect like that, a supporter like that, that's really tough. That is really, is. really tough. It is. I mean, so then you've got this like, double-edged sword of like your two supporters that you are encouraged to play i don't say you have to play them you don't mm -hmm. have to play them you could play research but then you're gonna have less cards in the discard pile for your roaring moon who you want to be doing you know close to 300 damage if you if you want to play into the roaring moon strategy you have to play which is get as many ancient cards in the discard pile as you can to boost its uh vengeance feathers attack or whatever it got translated to if you want to play into that, you got to play as many ancient cards as possible, which means that you have to play the two ancient supporters that exist. Explorer's Guidance <laughs> and uh, Sada. And I happen to be a fan of neither. So I'm in this weird spot with Dino Box where I kind of like and respect what the deck is trying to do, but I don't love the way it's trying to do it. Yeah, it's, it's, not, it's the best one prize deck, which is ironic because it's just not playable right now, in my opinion. And again, I wouldn't go that far. Open to being wrong on that. Yeah. Um, but but the the space that it occupies and what I've seen from the deck is that it's very exploitable. You need to have the Sadas on the turn that you need them. And if you miss them, you're not putting on pressure. And the deck just needs to be attacking every single turn. If you can't do that, you lose pretty much. From what I've seen, um, maybe there are other people that have other experiences with that, but it's also the same for the future deck, which is kind of interesting. You mm -hmm. need to put on that early pressure. We're talking about the hands deck. Hands has now risen to about $15 a card, which is crazy to me. But the future deck with the Iron Leaves, uh, or excuse me, the uh, 
the what iron leaves? Is it you iron just leaves? said iron hands. No, the, the iron hands. What's the what's the booster? Oh, the, guy on the, bench. the iron uh, crown. Iron crown. Sorry, yeah, the the iron crown. The cabalion. Yes, the cabalion. Yes, uh, and so you can you know really put on a ag- aggressive pressure in the early game and take those uh, two prizes off of maybe your opponent. They're trying to set up um, as they try to set up there. I think that deck also suffers from a lot of what Dino Box suffers with, which is mm. if you can't put on that early pressure, then your opponent's just going to pick apart your board. And you may be trying to accelerate to an Iron Hands, but the Chen Pao deck is going to find their boss or they're going to find the Prime Catcher and just gust and knock it out. And it just makes it really hard. I find that deck, those both of those decks, Future and Ancient Box, to really suffer from a lot of that. You know, they just can't put on enough early game regression. Yeah, my... I, and I was really excited for the Future Box deck. I... Uh, very excited for the Future Box deck. I actually, I think that the Future Box deck does an, a very good job of getting the turn one attack. That's the one thing it does really well. Well, but on a Maridon. Yes. <laughs> it does a really good job. Okay. Well, it does a really good job of doing 100 damage turn okay. one. It does. I mean, which is something that like Lost Box decks can all do. But that's kind of, that. that is, exactly. I mean, that's something that Lost Box decks can do. And Lost Box decks can do 110 damage with Spit Innocently turn one without a bunch of, you know, low HP yeah. two prizers on sure. the bench. And in a format with Counter Catcher and Prime Catcher and lots of big mean guys that can take big one hit KOs on two prizers, the Future Box deck feels like it very quickly gets outpaced and outpowered by a lot of the format. When you go in with Maraida on turn one, even if you do take a knockout on a Pidgey mm. or a Charmander or something like that, your opponent mm. can just evolve up into Charizard, gust up the two prizer. Uh, it could gust up whichever guy you powered up and knock it out, and then you could be in a really tough spot. It does feel like playing the Future Box deck that you're constantly projecting exactly where you're going and hoping that your opponent doesn't gust it up and ruin your day. Sure. That's just what it feels like or to play that deck. Lost vacuum. Or your lost baton. vacuum, your your heavy baton, and I kind of am saying that outside of just the turbo hands variant, but like kind of the all of the all of the future toolbox decks, they feel like they're just in like a weird spot with their energy. I think the Maridon is my favorite part of the deck. Getting a quick attack with the Maridon, accelerating energy into play, that's my favorite part. Yeah, but then like. Where does it go in the mid in the mid game? I feel like the future box kind of loses the plot of like what it's trying to do, yeah, sure. and sure. like what does it do better than every other deck in the format? Sure. Does it get the best turn one attack in the format? No, not really. That's probably still Cramorant, right? Uh, does it get the best end game comeback potential in the format? Definitely not. No, it's not doing that either. Is it the best mid game in the format? No, no, it doesn't have the best mid game. So like, what is it doing better than every other deck? And I think that what's kind of baked into the future deck DNA is that it it is kind of served up as a counter box style deck, right? That you you've got all these different types of Pokemon that you can play. You've got the fighting guy, you've got the metal guy, you've got the the lightning guy, you know, you've got the fire guy and you're encouraged to play all these different types of energy. You got the grass guy. You've got all you're encouraged to play all these different types of energy that Maridon can accelerate into play and then capitalize by hitting your opponent for weakness. Yep. Yep. It just feels like that that is maybe not the best strategy right it now. It really isn't. And but that is what the deck does. Cuz the oh, cuz the meta game is so wide. Yeah. I mean it comes back to that, right? It's like you're not going to be able to account for every deck that you want to account for because in a 9 round tournament you might hit 9 different decks. And that's very reasonable to expect. And so I think that's where, you know, you're saying hitting for weakness, sure, can be good in a very narrow metagame. If you're trying to account for everything in the format and you need to account for everything in the format because that's how the deck is made, you're going to struggle a lot with just a tournament setting where you're playing a wide variety of decks. I I, I completely agree with you there. Yeah, and it feels like as far as your big basic decks go. Yeah. I mean, because that's kind of what the Future Box deck is. Right. Or do any of those dudes evolve? I, wait. Future and Ancients are all basics. They're all basics. They're all basics, yeah. So they're both going to be classified as big basic decks, right? And as far as being a big basic deck goes, the Ancients do it better uh, because they're bigger. They can wear the Ancient Booster Energy Capsule and just make themselves actually big basics, right? Right. <laughs> 
Whereas like when you're playing the future box deck, it's Huge like, dang, dudes. I got all these 220 <laughs> hit point guys that are just we you know, yeah. waiting to get eaten alive. <laughs> yeah. But when you're playing the ancient deck, at least you can put ancient booster energy capsule on these things and make your Coridon have 200 hit, hit points, you know, mm -hmm. make your uh, sure. Roaring Moon, single prize Roaring Moon, have 200 hit points. Sure. If you were playing Roaring Moon EX, you put an Ancient Booster Energy Capsule on that, you can make it have 290 hit points. I mean, just like an obscene amount of HP, which can make it, you know, actually just tough to, to mm -hmm. deal with yep. because it's a basic with dang near 300 hit points. Right. But the future deck can't do that, and I think that that's like a big... Uh, uh, that's a big kind of L for the future deck to hold. Yeah, so, I mean, we don't really see those as being big contenders. Is there anything else from the next set that you really see as being viable? I mean, I, we haven't really talked about Arceus. I know that's not from the new set, but that's a, that's a deck that I see as being, you know, it's certainly a top 10 deck. Wouldn't be surprised to see it make top eight or win. Um, a couple different variants there that I think you could classify in different ways. But um, in terms of, yeah, other archetypes that we haven't talked about, is there anything that really piques your interest even if it's just things that you want to test that you haven't gotten a chance to yeah so the uh yeah obviously we haven't spent a lot of time on arceus we probably you know and we and we should and i think we're going to do more testing with it tonight there's the alolan vulpix v star and the garatina v star variants and uh you know arceus just isn't a deck that kind of revs my engines and gets me going yeah, man. but you don't need to be i mean it's yeah. consistent right you don't need to have no, you don't. Fancy plays. You definitely don't. Uh, see Arceus Duralodon from Formats Past. I mean, but that's, it feels <laughs> yeah, like it, sucks. feels like it, <laughs> it feels like it occupies a very similar space uh, that it always has, yeah. and it just will continue to be I. So, you know, if you're interested in the top Arceus list, go on to limitless.com and check out the latest Arceus list. They aren't terribly exciting, but they are there. And they are pretty good, and they've got a pretty good stall matchup. Yep. Other cards that I am interested in from temporal forces i mean i like matang and i think that i think that dialga v star is like a relatively powerful card i i wouldn't be totally blown away surprised if somebody was able to cook with that i, it I seemed, think what what stopped you from playing it because you were playing it on the stream you know when we when we were here last, there was one time you were playing it on stream, and I was like, wow, I was really impressed with it. It is. It's kind of cool. I think cool. we played it. Yeah, sure. I think it's kind of cool. Well, at this point, it's like I I guess I'm trying to figure out, you know, what what the top decks are and make sure that I'm familiar enough with those. And then, like, once I kind of get my mind wrapped around what I expect the format to be, yeah. then I can start constructing decks that I think that are going to beat those decks, right? Okay. So right now, I don't consider Matang Dialga to be a part of, like the format right now i feel like this is more or less the format with like you know no gouging fire but put in like arceus yeah. and like yeah. control right but i feel like what we have here on the table is pretty much uh pretty much the format so i'm trying to wrap my head around this and then once we kind of have our minds wrapped around this then we kind of can do branch some out a branch bit. out a little bit and figure out okay well this is the format how do we capitalize on that how do we come out on top um the the Dialga V Star deck is, I, I think it's kind of cool. Dialga V Star has seen success before. It has been proven that if you can get a turn two V Star, you could beat a lot of decks. Yeah, that seems like a, a good rogue option, mm -hmm. right? Um, in terms of, I, I haven't seen anything that really piques my interest in terms of rogue options as much as Dialga does. Because, like you said, it does have track record a couple formats ago. Um, you are getting this just really incredible accelerator in the form of Matang and putting those cards to the bottom means you don't draw into them. That can be really strong as well. And if you're able to chain a couple of those uh, abilities on the Matang, you know, you're really digging eight, 12, maybe even 16 cards into your deck to find these energies. It's, it's quite strong uh, from a, you know, card design perspective. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that one, that one's an interesting one to me. I think Dialga has a lot of, uh, a lot of potential. I think so too. Anything else you want to touch on before we uh, head out for the day, JW? Oh, man. I think the, we've had a great content yeah, day so. today. What a have. great yes, content and, and day. Maybe, maybe we'll have a great uh, testing evening. Maybe even a dinner. Maybe even a dinner. I mean, I'm getting a little hungry. Uh, me too. My belly is rumbling. All right. I think that's going to do it for us today. Thank you so much for watching the stream and the cast. We're going to get this uploaded. We're all, you know, I don't know, podcast live. Where is that, JW? That's going to be on uh, on Spotify. That's where we upload, but then it goes, you know, Spotify, Google, um, Anchor, um, the other 
platforms that it all just does it manually. So I just upload it one place and it goes everywhere. So. Wow, really? Yeah, dude. That's cool, man. Yeah, so I don't even know Stitcher. I'm just here, bro. Apple. I don't know how any of this works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyway, you, if you want to get more plugged into the Tag Team ecosystem, you can find us on the X platform at Tag Team Pokemon. You can find Andrew at Enjoy Friend and myself at Real John Walter and, of course, Riley Holbert, who's not with us here today, at Smiles with Riles. That will do it for today's cast. We thank you all so much for listening, and we'll catch you next week. See ya. All right. That's a wrap, folks. Thank you so much for joining us for the stream today. We'll cut that. I can chop that up. Yeah, post. Very good. Yeah. Yep, that'll do it for us today. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, huge thanks again to JW for joining me for the stream. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, you can stay up to date with what I got going on as far as stream schedules, cancellations, if there are any, and, and all that in the Discord. So make sure if you haven't already, join the Tricky Gym Discord, discord.gg slash Tricky Gym. A lot of the decks that we were testing today are just deck lists from the top 16 of the Fukuoka Champions League. So if you are interested in deck lists from today's stream, check out LimitlessTCG.com. Look at the top 16 list from the Fukuoka Champions League. Uh, those are the ones that we've been testing with. And again, because I want to get my... We want to get our minds wrapped around what we kind of think the meta is going to be, and then kind of branch out from there. So that's that's what we are. Uh, that's what we're doing. Yeah, cool. Yeah, it was right. fun. Fun hanging out. Yeah, man. Y'all take it easy and have a good one. I'll be back tomorrow with some more Pokemon TCG related content. I'll see you then. Goodbye. <laughs>